All right, I do believe we are live. Welcome everybody to the left stream. I am Lev Polyakov, Lev Po on Twitter, as you can see in the handle over here with my finger pointing in there. There we go. Follow me on Twitter, everybody. Anyway, we are starting off today the art stream, uh, left stream, art stream. We are going to have Sonia supposedly and Bimbo Ubermensch coming in. We've got Catherine Brodsky in the house along with the great Giovanni Panacchetti and the very powerful mass bastard Charles Kahn. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. That's Thank you, everybody, bastard. for watching this. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, and keep on subscribing. And also, as far as the Super Chats today go, uh, here is how, before we grow big enough, you can send me Super Chats. You have to go to streamlabs.com slash levpoliakov. That is where you go, streamlabs.com slash levpoliakov. This is how you are able to send money so that we can grow this thing. And I appreciate everybody for watching this. Now, what I'm going to do right now is, even though I'm going to be drawing this guy over here, the NFT, T, the uh, uh, muscles, as I call them. Everything is going pretty good here. I'm cleaning up some details. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to eat. Look at this. Look at this nice thing that I have over here. Oh. I, made this, I made this during uh, the break. I don't think I it looks this. that attractive. I prefer to look at your artwork, love. But, you know. it's No, I mean, look, it's fine for the time that it took because our stream with the Prudentialist ended at around uh uh what was it like 40 so i had 20 minutes to prepare this thing and then i had like an additional five minutes to make food so honestly for that amount of time this is this is pretty good this is eggs farm fresh eggs and salsa also shout out to yiz the eunuch joining us here from the prudentialist stream welcome i hope you're gonna enjoy this little bit of mukbang that's gonna happen right now but while i am eating it because i have to eat uh geo i would love for you to commence the art stream by talking about your work of art and i'm gonna put it on the screen for everybody to see yeah wow sorry after talking for a few hours my brain is kind of fried um but yeah i'm doing a pen and ink portrait in different colors uh i have like basically your base uh, uh i use always i always use noodlers ink fountain pen ink so I have, uh, I'll maybe do a little bit of earth red, um, but here I have a very earthy cerulean and of course my standard um, heart of darkness black. And the only thing that different is my Liquitex white because that is truly the best like ink flow white. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to draw this uh, lovely uh, picture of Athena, our good friend. And I always, I was always, I always meant to like draw something of her, but uh, she has this, Excellent photo with this uh, blue, um, I don't even know what that material is, a uh, dress and a flower and uh, it's great. So let's uh, let the, uh, let's, let's start. I just, I'm consciously trying to like work around the features too, especially in her face. Um, if my, if the light gets a bit intense, it's because I'm using my um, jeweler's light. So I'll just have to, uh, adjust as we go but yeah you know, so uh can i ask so, you a question yeah go ahead well i'm wondering how do you decide which paints you use i mean they look like really beautiful bottles <laughs> but um as an artist like what how do you decide like okay you're gonna use this paint or that paint like what's your process for that um typically uh it just depends on what your particular skill is at this at the time me i uh when it comes to actual paint i tend to uh i don't really use oil based i always use like water based acrylic um but with these uh noodlers ink they are like in my opinion the best fountain pen ink so they're specifically formulated to work with fountain pens because you can't just like put anything through a fountain or a technical pen you have to like really have um stuff that's high, higher quality because of the pigment load. But yeah, um, plus the guy who makes it, it's all handmade by one guy. His name is Nathan Tardif. And he's a based, uh, a based in red pilled Fox News boomer. So <laughs> I might as well support him. Uh, yes. No, they're really high quality, high pigment. I love his name, Tardif. Yeah, Tardif. Yeah. That's fun to say. <laughs> you get banned um, from certain platforms saying that name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well, Gio, we... 
Uh, what do you say? So, uh, what I'm curious about is, would you be able, Gio, like, uh, Catherine, I don't know if you've been following the thing we had with, uh, Mark Terrell from, uh, associated with, uh, Davos, the World Economic Forum, uh, tech pioneer in 2008. So we had a recent stream with him, uh, on, uh, good governance. And we recently had a stream with the Prudentialist that was, um, just playing right before this on, uh, around the same subject. But, uh, I am kind of curious where you personally stand, Catherine, when it comes to thinking more from a managerial perspective, which is, I think, where he was coming from, right, Gio? Like, he was oh, very yeah. much by the numbers. Like, I don't remember the exact things that he, like, I can't really just say him verbatim, but Gio, like, what would some examples be of propositions that he had that people who were tuning in to the program were uh, pretty, pretty much opposed to? Just, like, like base... in terms of different worldviews. Yeah, like, basic, like, rule and governance by like a technocratic managerial elite that's probably like the thing that people have uh, the most trouble with um i can't really go into specifics but basically like um having a very like um how shall i put it a very streamlined and like reified view of government being like an exercise of like quote unquote expertism rather than something that is intu intuitive to a particular civilization's needs. It's very much like the uh, hyper rationalistic view of government. Like you have to go in there and like uh, do all of this stuff, you know, like By he the was way, even saying doing like, some, uh, somebody's doing some heavy breathing. I'm not sure what's going on there. FYI. But anyway, go on, Gio. Charles is masculine power. <laughs> yes, yes, so right through the nose. Yes. Mm, um, no, it's very... Uh, I think, like, a lot of people, they just... Um, it's very shocking to, like, view the way that uh, a lot of these people think um, in terms of, like, just getting rid of anything that we used to know as being, like, inherent to, like, our particular civilization of like uh traditions and faith and so we're forth. trying to reinvent the wheel yeah exactly if there's yeah. one thing i learned in high school from the football coach we'll go well i'll be that guy for a second it was mm -hmm. uh he said the the thing was son don't reinvent the wheel it's already been done we, we've done this a thousand times it's like okay mm -hmm. don't reinvent the wheel let the wheel reinvent you Oh God! I don't know if he um, quite said it like uh, that, but he would say he would say a lot of euphemisms like that, like uh, "Don't in reinvent Soviet the wheel." Soviet Russia will reinvent you. Let a cooler mm. head prevail. Like don't don't go in storming off, pissed off. Uh, and I, I posted. Oh, by the way, once again, like always, like people are logging into Zoom with names that I don't ne accidentally want to dox. So I'm going to write to her. Uh, Please make sure you don't dox yourself with the name. And by the way, I posted a uh, link to that uh, stream that we were just talking about right now with Mark Terrell of uh, Davos, associated with Davos. It's called uh, uh, The Future of Governance. So you see that on the sidebar chat, and that is where you have to go. So there we go. And... Uh, Catherine, what are your thoughts on the, what uh, Gio was talking about in relation to this managerial style? Like, just like Gio, you probably see a lot of that stuff happening in Canada. Oh, but yeah. uh, what are your what are your particular thoughts on that when it's applied to things like we were talking about Libya and we were talking about uh, Syria and how he was doing special operations there, uh, you know, and uh, it had to do with toppling the regimes, uh, you know, toppling the. Uh, uh, Assad regime, which was un unsuccessful, and also toppling the uh, Gaddafi regime, if I understand it correctly. So, I don't know, like, where where do you personally lie in a lot of this stuff? Do you think mm -hmm. it's a matter of maybe, like, us not being privy to certain information where our minds could possibly be changed? Maybe it's important that this stuff happens? Or do you have, like, a real hardliner stance on we don't want regime change, we don't want people to go in all these places and do all this weird stuff? Like, uh, where, where would you personally uh, lie? You know what? I, I feel like I don't have enough of a context to give a good answer. Um, so I would rather not. But I do think that our system of government where or rather 
you know, what's been happening, especially in, well, in the U.S. and, and in Canada is, is the this whole two party situation, I think, is is not a true democracy in many ways. And I would like to see something that represents um something that's more closer to a true democracy is in terms of representing more individuals, more people, different views, and also want to have more flexibility in people's views changing or, you know, so the parties actually have to work to maintain these individuals or to lure them in a little bit harder. Because I think what happens is like, okay, well, people who are Republican, they vote Republican, people who are and uh, Democrats work Democrat. And, and it's basically like, uh, just a matter of motivating people to go vote. And I think that's not a great way of government. I, I would like to see that change, but I think these changes are incredibly difficult to push forward because these parties, uh, they have so much power and they're self-interested in, in not allowing any kind of change. And so, um, yeah, it becomes incredibly, like, I don't know what the solution to that would be. I don't know. Uh, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd, like to, I'd like to piggyback on something Catherine had just said and uh, excuse me for, for popping or for coming in through the kitchen window. Uh, and running late, ladies and jerks. Um, Lev Polyakov, the Russian concussion, thank you for having me on. Um, Catherine, too, electric internet, Lou, reminding everyone that there are elections mm. other than the presidential election to vote on. Because <laughs> getting people out to vote, listen, insurrection in the street is a lot sexier to sell than insurrection in the voting booth, all right? And one, a, a reoccurring theme that I hope we don't continue to see down in 2024 is in 2016 and 2020, there was a lot of disdain for third party voters as if like they were personally responsible for destroying the ozone, hiding Lev's remote control, hiding Catherine's keys, accidentally yeah. putting like a red shirt in the white laundry when, when, when Mrs. Khan does the laundry, accidentally hiding accidentally replacing all the sugar for salt in, in Gio's kitchen, which is some bullshit, all right? Uh. But, third, but third party voters were like, um, anyone who voted for Gary Johnson or, um, what was the Green Party lady? Jill, Jill Stein? Stein? Right, Jill Stein. anyone? Uh, Jill... Jill Stein's money. The, uh, <laughs> the, Rus the Russian, <laughs> Jill Stein, AKA the Russian asset. Oh geez, listen, listen, even, even Tulsi Gabbard had like, you know, moderate views, anyone with two brain cells together could get behind and guess yeah. what suddenly she's a pro putin handmaiden for all I that am. is wrong in the no world. well to be fair we jill stein was a pro putin handmaiden i'm not talking about uh, uh Tulsi here but uh, yeah. well yeah, Tulsi I, I, could be I, my handmaiden no, yeah. yeah i see what you're <laughs> saying I'm give you a handy yeah well I we were talking about it Mm -hmm. Because I think the, um, you know, something that kind of taught me a little bit of a lesson is in Canada, there was a, you know, people were voting for the Green Party. And ah, good luck. Seemed, I know, I know. But it seemed like they were throwing away their votes. And then suddenly Green Party ended up in a situation where they could, um, because they actually got enough votes that um, they were able to join forces with another party and therefore suddenly had power, which they did not have before, whether you like the Green Party yeah, or not. This kind of was something that I heard uh, one of our big libertarian guys in America, uh, Mr. Glenn Jacobs, also known as Kane, the professional wrestler. Yeah. He was speaking at length about that, about if the, a libertarian candidate got a certain percentage of the vote one year, uh, yeah. they would be able to be at the, the debates the next uh, oh uh, uh, they need five percent of was the it just vote five? i think wow, it's five just but, five but here's the thing like what it's was hard. perot at perot was close right i think so but perot was close enough and where um bush's loss was more or less blamed on him uh for for clinton's victory perot yeah, like, that was just percent of the popular vote but but what was scary is like in 20 in 2016 um in 2016 and 2020, like you had people like Rachel Maddow, who, like, let's be honest, Mad like it, it, it's kind, it's kind of scary how Rachel, <laughs> Rachel Maddow, slowly turned into like a left of center Glenn Beck with a greater audience, oh. and like constantly playing six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but there's only one degree, and Kevin Bacon is like Russia. You yeah, know? Rachel seems very angry. Yeah, she, 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 she seems like she will not know happiness in this life or the next. Um, so Thank God, she, she doesn't so she, deserve it. She she was making great. <laughs> Does like, anyone? 
she kind of, she kind of, she kind of more or less equated like if you voted for not Clinton, you practically voted for Trump. And it's like, no, like there are 19 other people you could have voted for, and evidently all that meant Trump. Uh, so, so I think, I think, uh, you know, I, I think there are a lot of hurdles, uh, like Catherine was saying earlier, that the two powers in place uh, really only serve like the interests of like 12 people or less at any given moment. By right? the way, Bimbo and it's so Uberman's sad. Oh, real quick, I just want to say Bimbo Ubermensch is finally here. Welcome, Bimbo Ubermensch. Oh. What I ended up doing was because I don't like doxing people. It's a great I just name. put like a big. I put a big image of Bulma punching people uh, on the uh, on the top to hide everything. So everything is fine. No worries. This is how I take care of business here on the left stream. So Lev welcome, just happened Bimbo to have Ubermensch. that picture of Bulma laying around ready to go. Bienvenido. Oh, I wonder Bimbo why. Really suspicious. <laughs> so, so anyway, Bimbo Ubermensch, I want to get your take on this as well. Like uh, we were going back and forth in the chat uh, about this, uh, you know, about this managerial style of uh, workmanship of the American Empire. And what are your personal thoughts? on that like uh how many people uh, or not even because we don't know how many people are like that some people say a lot some people say a little but uh you personally where do you stand on uh this whole managerial style um well it, you mean in terms of governance or in terms of like in the workplace in terms of governance definitely in terms of governance not in terms of the workplace well, I mean, obviously it's serving a, a specific cohort and class of people, but, you know, it's at the detriment to everyone else. And it's just like this demigorgon, of like a bureaucratic juggernaut. And I feel like you just, you get more and more and more rules and then shit doesn't really get done. And it's just kind of like completely disregards like local problems so this is just a general take i mean i i'm sure if he dredged up like a specific problem for example i'd be like oh yeah i know i know what you're talking about or i'm, I'm like i could point to that as like a specific example but that's well just a, a specific a specific problem would be let's say with uh wars for example we were talking about how uh uh, Mark was helping the strategy of the war in Syria and uh, toppling the uh, regime of uh, um, Oh, that Mark Terrell, the, the Mark Terrell guy? Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I wanted to sit down and watch all that, uh, but I got caught up in stuff, including, you know, chores. But I, I just, like, when you told me, I... When you said, like, it would be interesting to have, you know, normal people talk to people who are on the fence about this stuff. I just, I think that the biggest problem is, like, it's, it's just, like, such a big systemic thing. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say other than I feel like the, the people up at, at the very top have kind of already made their minds. And, like, somebody like Mark is you know, an NPC at this point, because based on the comments I saw in the chat, he just didn't seem to have any remorse. And he just seemed to be really upset with Indian Bronson. And even one guy in the chat was like, whoa, like, you know, it's kind of scary. It's like, what's going to be, a, what are you going to be allowed to do in the future? Because <laughs> people like that run shit. It's just very utilitarian and soulless. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I know what to say. I want to talk about the demo gorgon now being in the collective unconscious. <laughs> oh, God. What is the weirdest, goofiest Dungeons and Dragonsist monster is somehow now now entered into everybody's vocabulary. We all know what a demo gorgon is now. I think oh, that's yeah. it's probably a psyop. <laughs> right. you know well, the mind flayer is coming. Like I think that show had his mind flayers like teased. Mm. That and then Catherine, Catherine, what were you saying? Oh, I was saying I have beef with Indian Bronson. Like ah. some serious, I owe him. Um, well, a very I, I, I doubt that because he's Hindu. 
So how can oh. we have <laughs> 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 oh, Based in red build live. Oh. Subscribe. Subscribe for good good things of that nature. Okay. Oh, that's I a owe sneak. him a, a revenge uh, plot. Very oh. much so. I want to warn him again. I've warned him before. Because this is coming. Um, he knows what he did. I can tell you what he did. If you want. Tell us. Tell us. Okay. Also, some, somebody's got their sound in the background, by the way, whoever that is. So on Clubhouse, I got pinged into a room by him. And the room was like a welcome room for some guy's name that I don't recognize. I come into this room. Indian mods me, leaves, and turns out it was a welcome room for a neo-Nazi. <laughs> And it looks like I started the room. (laughs) So now, (laughs) revenge. And I have a huge plot. I have uh, partners in crime. It's just taking a little while to get to. So, Indian, if you're listening, I'm coming after you. That's all. I'm uh, coming for you. Lev, if this keeps up, uh, your art streams will just be where people accept and call out others for cage matches later in the week. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to call out Vosh. I'm going to call Sunday. I'm going to call Vosh. (laughs) Sunday is where everyone cuts promos and does shoot interviews before they. Well, let me tell you something, brother. I've heard just about (laughs) enough of his commie talk. He thinks (laughs) he's a pinko, he thinks he's all tough. Well, listen here, brother. He ain't going to get away with molesting kids any longer. <laughs> ah, allegedly, allegedly. Oh, allegedly. Uh, Bimbo Ubermensch, uh, do you have any bones to pick with anybody? Because this would be the stream to uh, to do that. Well, Bimbo got into some heat lately, actually. Wait, That's... I mean, I don't... There's the thing Bimbo is, like, I don't know if it's... <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's weird. Oh, wait, do I have any beef with anyone? I mean, I don't, not in part, I don't know, not in particular, like, I, I don't know if any beef online counts as real. Probably not. No, you no, have it, ham. No, it, it, you it have depends. ham with anybody. It, it depends how big the beef is because the membrane between online and offline has been disintegrating in real time these days. Yes, yeah. I know, the biosphere dis, 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 dissolving into the technosphere. Yeah. Well, there are um, actual membranes in the meat of, uh, you know, in cow, in cow meat and yeah, beef. There was, go on. Uh, but, so but, I but, but, well but, I mean, there was an article that kind of came out. I mean, I don't Lucy know. Brown and and the, the, the question scum. he asked was, uh, well, are we going to play in person or do you mean, or are we going to play online? And I was like, oh, I hadn't considered we could just play in person. It was an entertaining article, but I don't really, I feel like I'm my own free agent. Although, uh, in, in, in all fair, in, in all due respect, uh, Bimbo Uberman, you don't seem like the kind of person who would, like, pistol whip their nemesis to death on the steps of a church. Like, just my opinion, I could be wrong. Like, for all I know, you've got a vendetta with, like, 11 I Colombian ne- You Like, for all I know, Bimbo Uberman might have had someone Colombian necktie someone else on her behalf. But she doesn't seem like the person who would, like, put on gloves, warm up with, like, 20 push-ups... Do a lap around the block and then pistol up her nemesis to death on the steps of the church. I'd only do anything if somebody like legitimately, you know, came after my family. Fair know. enough. Ah, well, all right. jo- Joey Joey Diaz is very good when it comes to that. There was a podcast episode for those who don't know Joey Coco Diaz. He's this great comedian, friend of Joe Rogan's, and, and from uh, the he, Church of What's Happening. What's now. happening now? Yes, with Lee Syatt, aka the hey, the, fl- yeah. the flying Jew. Uh, Joey but anyway, is doing something else now. Yeah, he's doing uh, his own podcast okay, uh, without it's Lee. Else. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's called something else. But anyway, uh, Joey, he had this whole tirade that he went on when he was talking about like imagining what he would do with a person who just like completely fucked like him or his family or you know just somebody who did the worst thing that you could you know like molest a child or something like that. Like he broke it all down, and I just found it to be very fascinating to listen to it. Because he had a whole plan in his mind, like he would scope them out for did days. Did it involve lit cigarettes? No lit cigarettes, but it did involve Cheese him grater? at a certain point. At a certain <laughs> point, going going ice. This isn't a mode. new jack match. No, no, no. <laughs> but he didn't, but he didn't <laughs> go medieval on somebody's. No, no, he he Once went you... ice man mode. So yeah. by ice man mode, it meant Not that he took a razor blade. He took a razor blade and he started making little paper cuts 
all over the body of this uh, uh, supposed uh, person uh, that he wants to punish, and then he would rub them all with like uh, rub them with the kosher salt. <laughs> like ter- like I remember the first time I saw it was Terminator to Death One, where Nick Mondo gets drenched in uh, in in uh, salt, and then oh never mind never mind. But anyways, yeah. Bimbo, <laughs> Bimbo, I wanted to talk to you about um about this... uh, WCW and ECW, the history of wrestler yeah. New Jack. I'm sure Bimbo has a lot of thoughts about yeah. our. Well, you or, forgot or one w- thing. You forgot you have no choice but to stay in a king. You or WC for... Field. Okay. Yeah. Well, you are... <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. I just don't know how these people find me. I don't know. I didn't. I that it's just that account followed me, and I was like, "What is this? Is this like Valerie Salona's?" Like I thought it was that scum. Like I thought it was in reference to that. Who's no, Valerie scum? Salona? She's the one who She's wrote the, the scum. Manifesto. The scum manifesto. Yes. But then I look and I see this article and I'm like, it has my handle, but for whatever reason, none of my tweets were screenshotted in the article. I mean, and that's fine. Like, it's your article and shit. I just, like, Mm -hmm. didn't... I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, Perhaps part of the uh, confusion came from, like, maybe they saw your screen name and thought they figured everything out about you without, like, looking at your timeline. So, like, mm. in whatever yeah. angle they already had ready, like, they were just hoping, like, oh, look at this name, Bimbo Ubermensch. This basically punches up our entire article tenfold. Cause well, now we no, could, but we... in all fairness... Yeah, there's a lot of fuckers that think that I'm some kind of bastard just because of my name. <laughs> yeah. And that's time, it's time to change that, okay? <laughs> we're no, gonna, I, we're gonna I know... We're going to become the I... mask-based. I know of Scum and and Lucy Brown who uh, runs it, and uh, they're good. Like, there's been a lot of great articles they have, and she's published some good stuff. And uh, she, I think, like the point being, like, whether rightly or wrongly, I don't know if Bimbo, she's been taken as like the head of this, which I think like is kind of, I mean, a misnomer or whatnot. And you would I think it so. was because there's clearly there's like the Wignat types, and they. I don't know. Some of them follow. I don't know why, because I don't well, know. And they like my stuff. It's weird. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, a basically, there's a online. contingent of of like uh, like these women who were formerly like anti-feminists on the alt right that they've sort of embraced a more um, like old school like '80s second wave rap feminism. What the fuck? Feminism, so, Sorry, so. my door is fucking annoying because anyways go on i'm sorry gia <laughs> oh, no, no. no i cut off charles I mean, it, it, it looked like a like this is the intro of a horror movie you keep looking over your shoulder and like two more times something 20 feet tall with tentacles is gonna burst out that fucking door and that's the last we'll ever see of bimbo just no. like, <laughs> it's just the, it's just the mechanism that closes the door is really i don't know Oh, I have that for my cat. I have that for my cat. So are you are you streaming uh... from Silent Hill? What's going on there? No, it's not nearly as as scary as Silent Hill or Resident Evil. No, there's like nothing nothing in my house that's weird. It's just that door is fucking annoying. It's just haunted. Well, we understand. We understand. It's just. But we changed doorknobs. (laughs) Got got a ghost in there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so that made me happy anyways Gio what were you saying I'm sorry yeah, so you- there, like there is um, a contingent of they used to be alt-right they used to be part of the anti-feminist sort of train of thinking but now there's a lot of accounts who are um, either because they got totally cancelled and, and like the uh, woke left doesn't want them anymore so there's a lot of like there's this weird um intermingling between like rad femmes and like hardcore uh traditionalists and uh frog twitter and it's really like this strange brew and i had this very controversial tweet uh this last week whatever about the Um, matriarchy or some shit yes that it seems it seems that there's this weird force going on and the e-right is almost powerless to uh Stop uh, the simpocalypse. They if can't, you, will. <laughs> you can't stop a good set of mommy milkers with good publicity. Exactly. By the way, shout out to our good friend, Mommy Milkers. Hopefully she comes on soon. So, yeah. 
Um, I can simp even harder. Uh, but no, it's it's true. There There is this force. But then people were like, you know, I mean, apart from the idiots that were like, hey, you're just a simp. Uh, there were people that, you know, had a valid criticism about, like, maybe it's just the people that you follow. Because for some reason, a lot of these rad femmes, they follow me. And I'm, uh, you know... Uh, Less yeah. than ideal. Uh, what uh, are in, you? Incel. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I think it's. What, what I think are that, any of us anymore? What yeah. What are we anymore? As? What, are we defined by our own words, or are we defined by what other people say mm. about us? Because exactly. Article, but that's my point. Because like, somebody, like, Catherine, Catherine, uh, what do you the think we are? I was banned. Somebody said, uh, "Oh, you know, I like Charles, but I don't like his politics." I'm like, "What politics? Like my politics are everybody sucks. Everything sucks." Yeah, I think Charles is a mass bastard. That's that's how I would uh, define him and categorize him. Yes. Um, I, I would say Haynes is also kind of heinous mask. Um, <laughs> and, ah, um, heinous. <laughs> heinous. And Gio. Hey, hey, I am not to be confused with heinous anus and the Antichrist All-Stars, okay? They don't even wear masks, all right? Uh, you say potato, I say patata, you know? Uh... <laughs> But uh, no, I, I think there's a realignment going on, and I think that tomato. like as more like women who actually are uh, like my point was that like women are starting to change the discourse rather than just aping the discourse on the like quote unquote dissident right or whatnot, and well, pe a lot of people like got very offended at that I'm idea. I'm noticing a lot of gals that are like makeup YouTube gals or mommy bloggers. A lot of them are coming out as being particularly based as yeah. the kids would say yeah. and having no shits to give about giving their uh, true opinions on things as the kids I mean it helps say. if you have yeah. like stagnant employment yeah but, like, they're not no, I mean uh, they're yeah, not you don't really have much with... of anything to lose really yeah mm. if they have built their own pirate it. ship they're ready to set <laughs> sail yeah like Adam Carolla <laughs> exactly well, like, Catherine do you yeah, agree with that too like in Canada actually Bimba Urumensh are you also in Canada I keep forgetting yeah, I am. Um, I've, I'm an American citizen, but I'm, you know, with a Canadian, so... Fucking leaps! Mm. Wait, without without doxing yourself, what part of Canada, more or less? The French part? I mean, part? at the... No, I'm not in the French part. Oh, I'm okay, in Ontario. Good. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Thank God. We hate that part. Why, 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 <laughs> why does everyone... Uh, bimbo, the calls are coming from inside the house! Bunch of cheese-eating surrender monkeys. Wait, you're in Ontario France. right now, Bimbo? Yeah, like my in-laws are based in Winnipeg, but I am, but we are based in based Toronto. In -laws. <laughs> based in laws. <laughs> based in laws. Well, maybe <laughs> some people. Um, no, that's wow, that's crazy. I don't um, like the hate for Quebec. Can we please refrain from that? I feel uh, I, very triggered. I, 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 if you I, live I, in Canada, it's very difficult. Well, I mean, I, I know, but they've got bagels, <laughs> like the best bagels oh, ever. Okay. In, 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 all, in all fairness, cheese. though, in, in all fairness, genuine cheese. I don't, I don't understand the disdain for Montreal because, mind you, like I'm an uncultured, uh, ignorant slob who comes from Queens. All right, I'm Queens trash. So. I had nothing well, you're Puerto but, Rican, so there uh, you go. That's... Hey, you take that back. I'm Ecuadorian <laughs> and Greek, all right, you jerk. Yeah. Um, wait, wait. So, so, uh, so you're so, so you're just like uh, what's his name uh, from the Legion of Skanks, but Louis J. Gomez. <laughs> Almost. I, we're, Puerto we're, Rican we're, rattlesnake. We're, we're yes. all we're all we're all palette swaps of the same trash. Yeah, I, wanted, I, I tried to play Fortnite with him one day. I couldn't get in. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, uh, but 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 I'm curious what the disdain for um, Montreal is because uh, I. I went up there for two weeks for a wedding some time ago, and it's not I, if there were any other place outside of New York City that I'd have to like, hey, like I got to spend the rest of my life in a city, pick one. Like I wouldn't mind Montreal. I was almost offended by how clean that city was compared to New York. Oh God, <laughs> serious? I mean, that's a pretty that's a pretty good argument. And by the way, scum sucking Slimer says she's married, unsubscribed. No. Broke guys, the you illusion. To, you guys have to do the opposite of that. You guys have to subscribe. How long have you been married, by the way, Bimbo? Uh, since de December 2019. But you know, we'll have like um, we'll have our nice like big Jewish wedding soon. We 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 did it because there were a lot of parameters we had to navigate in regards to spousal PR. But yeah, you know. It's just like at the, we're at a point now. It's like 
I never really got wedding crazy. I'm more, I, I just, I'm like, can I live, can I see myself living with this person day to day? To day? Yeah. But it's weird because I don't know. Am I supposed to be like fantasizing about like the ins and outs of a wedding? Or... Don't all women do that though, or is that a myth? Mm, no, my mom didn't do that. She and my dad just got married, or like, uh, just got a piece it of paper on the woman. their sweater. Yeah, it yeah, really oh, just. But yeah, but Russian women don't count. That's they, they're <laughs> okay. a different species. Hey, hey, oh hey, no, no, no! Some Russian women they no, like uh, <laughs> they 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 like uh, dressing. I mean, look. There are so it's many like very in... expensive weddings are very expensive. Yeah. That's think... the thing. Yeah, I'm just like we could put this to the mortgage. We could put this yeah. to travel. Like, I love how this has become renovations. The, the lifestyle blog now. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though. I mean, I it, like I think in general that's probably why the marriage rates have also tanked. Is just like people's expectations like just the capitalist hedonic treadmill of like you have to do this like this is uh going to be the most meaningful thing ever mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like um well it can be very meaningful but it can oh be yeah it is no but it's like the but you do to buy like, that you, meaning do you like, really need like you know hundreds of people at your wedding probably not you just want maybe i think thousands. you'd enjoy it far more if you had like just the people that mean the most to you, like the closest family members, friends, and yeah. then you'd be in a cool place. But, you know, I, cool. although I, I, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, Bimbo brought up a good point in terms of like, yeah, you could just put that for the mortgage or like, hell, we could put it towards an account and start up when, when our kid is born. And then like, by the time they hit 18, they could live off the interest off that account for a couple of years, God forbid. Like what I don't understand is like, um, like, well, in my opinion, like, uh, not to come off as a bitter, cynic, caustic jerk face, but your graduation from college, your wedding, and when you get, uh, and when you have a kid, are three of the instances where you could kind of, sort of milk it for all the attention you could get, and no one can criticize you for it because it's your moment, you know. Like, you're getting married, so like, you know, if you want to have all the attention in the world for that wedding, go for it because it's your wedding. Like, but outside of like, outside of those three instances, then it's like, ah, it's gaudy and it's garish. You know what yeah. I mean? I think there's something special perhaps about um, the ceremony of it, like in the sense of just having that kind of celebration. It's kind of like, okay, you can celebrate a birthday or you can ignore your birthday. But like, this is like, you know, a celebration for two people coming together. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's nice. But, you know, if it's going to send you into the red and you're not, you know, and then you're going to have to worry about your mortgage and then you're going to have fights and struggles, like that's not a good gift to yourself to start with, right? So I think being reasonable, I mean, if you have tons of money, go for it, right? Like, why not? But, but I think... But, but, there, you... but there's also like this waspish quality I find to having these, like pretty extravagant marriages with the photos and i'm not just saying it's wasp you ever go a to uh like, yeah, in this, like, with the halloween way oh, yeah. i don't know i think well, it's well, cross-cultural because correct. Persians, persians have big weddings arabs yeah. have big weddings orthodox yeah. jews have big weddings like i mean i do think it's cross-cultural and i do the problem with weddings now is when you go to a venue and they know you're having a wedding and they will know you're having a wedding they're going to jack up the rate specifically Gougers. because you're having a wedding. And and what, that's what, what if you trick them? What if you give them like, we're going to do a different kind of event and then last minute. They're not, like, they're not retarded. What if you had, they're know if you're had a, a, wedding. A, a, a funeral <laughs> and a wedding? A <laughs> but you know just, what? Like, it's a community event funeral? for some cultures, right? Like in an Indian culture or a Persian culture or whatever, it's, it's, there is a community element. They do invite a tremendous number of people yeah right? yeah, yeah. You and there's something like... funny. Oh, but, by the way ch yeah. check it out google google adsense we're gonna we're getting our super chats back there was an issue uh technical yeah. stuff hey go, mazel tov so. give us the yeah that's that, that's for that's for break the rules by the way but i guess the difference for me is that when it comes to a lot of these indian weddings versus uh more of the um more of the waspish ones and, and again like i'm not saying that this is something that happened in the past it just seems like right now a lot of the waspish relationships, they look cold. They look cold for me being an outsider looking in. I wish they were warmer. I wish there was more of uh, you more love involved. And you want to see them kissing on the cheeks. You want to see love. 
You want no, but that's not even love though. That's like come. you want to see it that's all. That's selfies. That's selfies. That's like putting th- on an okay, act so for the for the audience. So wait, wait. So, 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 Lev. So, so, do you mean you want to see like the wedding when Henry and Karen get married in Goodfellas? Like, you want to see that kind of wedding? Like. Um, ah, there you go. Where, where, where it's all like you know, yeah, me, I, 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 this is, is Peter, this is Marie. Yeah, this is Peter, this is Marie. Um, Everybody uh, comes by and hands you, slips you five bucks. Hey, Mazel Tov, huh? Uh, uh, something nice, kid. Although, hey, hey here, here's something to get you started, man. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would. Uh, but, two uh, quick things, fellas. I, I'm gonna have to bounce. The uh, the Fed Post boys are waiting on me. Ah, Ooh, oh, 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 are, by the way, by the way, we're gonna have the Fed Post on very soon. I am going to tell you the date when the Fed Post yep. is coming on BTR. I'll tell boys, you said hi, Charlie. Excellent. I hope you have an excellent time. Adios, tell the fellas to send regards. Buenas tardes, caballero. And that is June eighth. That is Tuesday, June eighth. We are having a uh, uh, black, uh, black, co- black com pilled over, and that's going to be a very exciting thing. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, Charles Khan, Mass Bastard, thank you for coming in as always, brother. I'm going to show your Twitter here a little bit for everybody, and I hope Sonia supposedly is supposedly going to be coming in soon. I mean, she did retweet this, so things should be good. And I am going to be checking with her on what exactly is going on that end. But again, everybody who is watching this, don't. Don't forget to subscribe. Keep subscribing as always. And invest in uh, love, you lousy jerks. Hash- yeah, actually, let me uh, show that off as well. So twitter.com slash bastard. But I am selling NFTs. And yes, the price is going down, but I am not going to sell them for a low price. The Ether is going to come back up again. I know it. I feel it. Okay. Oh, you may be yeah. at a down low right now. But, oh, uh, yes. You have little hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I'm... I I do feel like it's gonna come back, but uh, Bimbo Ubermensch and uh, Catherine, do you guys invest in crypto? Do you see any potential in there, or are you just kind of avoiding the whole thing and just seeing seeing how it's going to uh, uh, be uh, drawn out now? No, we're, we're a blue chip stock sort of couple. <laughs> I I mean, I mean like I think like at some point. I, I don't know. I have I have like these childlike retard doodles. Uh, somebody uh, affectionately <laughs> said they they reminded them of like Charles Bronson's prison art. Um, and they're kind of a joke, but I don't no, know. No, they're really I guess... cute. I mean, look, I added it into the cover here. Do you see the little cow? Uh oh yeah, that's my cow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my... your cow. That was and the it's... first doodle because i it was it was basically a skinwalker abducting a cow from roswell and there's a drone you know hanging out there but (laughs) i yes i am a big fan of drones and animals i mean for all those who know about the uh, legendary left stream episode that we did when i was talking about uh, well can you say it then because i already spoke about it too much uh so you have uh all legitimacy to talk about it well uh, listen I, I i have no legitimacy other than bearing witness to this okay so but they, listen i'm not trying to say that lev is going to become the leading darpa researcher of uh mixing feline and drone technology as some sort of cutting edge technocrat warlord all i'm saying is that lev has things in the works that you know what like in a perfect world they'd be paying him the big bucks for the good ideas However, cats and drones in the future, Lev, if I were you, I'd patent that ASAP, homie. All right? Oh, God, not the so, cat drone. Yeah, yeah. So what I want to do. <laughs> no! What I want to do. No! Oh, no this is, this is yes! for Catherine. This is for Catherine and for Bimbo Ubermensch to find out. So what I want to do is I want to create a drone system that can uh, milk the cat while the cat, like, while yeah, your cat no, is outside. Cat, no, cat. Camel yes. will be the health trend of the future, pretty yes. much. Yes, and then the drone, and then the drone will send it to you, so you can drink the cat milk while watching the drone uh, watch your cat. But, so but that, it that should, way, yeah, it should, but it should be noted. Cat and let alone cats. No, 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 no. It, it should be noted that as soon as this nonsense kicked off, cat girls milk ended up becoming a reoccurring guest in chat who throws yes. super chats at Lev. Shows up on my stream. I, I'm not trying to say we willed it into existence, but be careful what you shit post, ladies and jerks, because if it breaks, if it punches through into meat space, it's your fault and your fault alone. And a shout shout out, by the way, to the Cat Girl Milk and Yogurt Company. 
I know. I think this is uh, uh, Ben Boober, man. You got you, you to link up with uh, Cat Girl Milk and Yogurt Company and oh, see what God. happens. <laughs> By the way, over here, over here, this is one of your beautiful drawings. Uh, l look at this. Memory TV. So w what are they saying over here? Oh, was oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of the YOLO swag one. Yeah. Uh, pretty yellow swag. Those are IDF bimbos. That's far four the mouse. I love far four. That's far four. I think that's supposed to be Linda Sarsour. Uh she's like mad Ooh. that far four is <laughs> giving <laughs> money to these broads. And I don't uh. know, there's a floating there's a floating Hamas guy saying Hamas Day. <laughs> um, Hamas Day. And then <laughs> There's a blur because, like, you know how, like, a lot of the Indian, a lot of Indians were like, I love Israel. Bob's. I love IDF Bob's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, Bob's in the show. Uh, That's my contribution to the discourse. I don't that know. That is beautiful. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. By the way, Bimbo, if you, uh, if I have a confession to make. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if you ever got, like, a weird <laughs> notification from me, I'm very sorry. But one time I had this tweet. I thought it meant one thing, but it probably would just mean another thing where I said that um, if I looked half as gorgeous as Bimbo, my NFTs would probably be like selling like in no time. But then I deleted it because I'm like, damn, that sounds like some cold, hard fucking resentment right there. But I didn't mean it that way. No, <laughs> no you're, you're one of the sweetest people on oh. mine. No, I, I sincerely, I sincerely mean that. Like, Thank you're, you. you're very measured. Oh. A lot of people go on and they're very angry. I don't know. I'm I'm you, hoping you that... attract some ire in some people. I don't know why. It's maybe other women too. I notice like they just oh man. It, it's well, they like they, a... uh, they hate you because they ain't you. Oh. I, I mean, nah, I don't oh. know. I, I won't be. <laughs> yes, I, I hate her so much right now. I'm sorry, but I do, Bimbo. I'm I'm, I'm really hating on you because I'm not. I ain't you. And your hair is just like I don't know how you do this, and so it pisses me off. Don't do that. Like... No, women they will compliment just to like do a dig at you. I yeah. <laughs> This is like that Family Guy bit, the whole like uh, like two women passive aggressively commenting on one another. Like it's so brave yeah. of you to put on whatever you want and leave the house like that. Look <laughs> at you eating whatever you want, all going to those thick, strong Did eyes of you yours. Did you see the importance of being earnest? Like there is that thing between Sicily and and I forgot the uh, Gwendolyn, and they are just it's the most polite digging at each other ever. Damn. Um, oh, and, 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 the and the best part is after like 30 seconds straight of all these backhanded compliments, these two, like the camera pans to the right, it's two guys eating lunch and it's like, hey, I like your tie. Thanks. And you hear, man, dun, da, da, we know how to be friends. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, a lot like, of women are vicious. Why so. compliment each other. Do you think they do it out of like wanting oh, a dick or wanting to uh, okay. uh, or just wanting uh, to be like, "Don't hate me. I'm going to tell you nice things so that I, you don't." Hate me. I would, I would like to hear from the ladies on the stream. How come if you see the following thing on the train, depending on the the sex of the people, one of two things happen? Okay, G and I like are on the train, and him and I catch eyes. We're both wearing the same outfit, and we'd be like, ah, he's wearing the same shirt, and then we'd go about our day. If, like, two women get on the train, there's a good chance they're going to, like, they're going to start shooting daggers at one another out their eyes. And you could tell mm -hmm. that they're picking apart, like, oh, my God, she left the hair wearing, <laughs> she's accessorizing with that. Wow, that bitch better be bisexual to increase her chances. Look at this true. fucking, look at this gross, shundering, good-for-nothing in those shoes. My fucking <laughs> God. <laughs> And they love I don't know. I just like, feel like you know, I just feel like I need to stop shopping at like a fast fashion place because the like because like if you're saying if you're describing that scenario that probably means that we probably both got the same shirt from like Zara or something mm. and then I'd feel like oh yeah. this shit's gonna go bad in the wash in like three washes. I what is with what is with women and going to Sephora? What is that? I don't know. <laughs> Please tell. Please tell. <laughs> this is a mystery. I, yeah. And I'm also happy about how the you word know, Zara reminded you of Sephora. Skin care, in case you were wondering. That's what That's Sephora probably is. what does it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
But then what I don't understand is, let's say with something like makeup, like some women put on more makeup than others, but makeup in general, it's supposed to not be the best for the skin. So my whole thing is like, especially let's say younger girls, like girls who are going to college, when they cake their face up, it's like, what are you doing? Like you have like this natural skin that can well, heal itself. Well, okay. And... But I think, I mean, people cake their skin often because either they don't know how to apply it or they are very insecure about their skin or, you know, and also like people wear varying amounts. And I hate when men are like, uh, especially men and women kind of go, well, that, see that girl is so great because she she doesn't wear much makeup and she's so pretty or whatever right because not everyone is naturally uh, <laughs> able to get away with but, that okay right? this is this is a controversial take but also as i feel far like as... people don't know how much a lot of makeup is mm. like especially yeah, the, yeah especially true. like straight men unless they're like korean and like <laughs> very messy and, and know like the intricacies of BB cream or whatever. But I, I think a lot of people just don't know what a lot of makeup looks like. Like they are thinking of a garish like green eyeshadow with like a red lip or whatever. But you know. No, I'm 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 smarter than that. I can uh, I I can see through certain uh, things of that nature. No, you're my only point Korean is... spiritually. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I do like Korean food, but uh, okay, this is gonna yeah, sound kind of I controversial. Mean, it's okay. Aesthetic um, love, like you know, like people can wear yeah. it a lot because they they like it's a self-expression. It's kind of artistic. Other people don't like. I I like things that just kind of enhance a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, bring out uh, qualities that are already there that don't transform the face. But I would never judge someone for for for. A well, different... there was there was that story. Speaking of Korea, there was that story of a Korean man who sued his ex-wife uh, for faking her looks, for having, like, all this plastic surgery. And this is beyond makeup, obviously. Uh, plastic surgery. But he sued, her, he sued his wife for uh, having the plastic surgery before they got married because their kids ended up having some weird-looking faces uh, that did not look like uh, how she looked after the plastic oh, surgery. Oh, uh, weren't there instances in, like, South Korea where, like, uh, husbands would take their wives to court because, like, hey, why are our kids so busted? And it turns out, like, oh, like, you don't, like, that's why. It's because you went under the scalpel, like, four times before you turned 21. Um, like, it, it, this is... And if memory serves me correctly, in places like South Korea, like for a sweet 16, getting like jaw or chin reduction surgery, like that's a common everyday thing over there. I think South Korea, is, I, South Korea and Brazil have the highest rates of, of uh, plastic cosmetic, surgery yeah. yes, than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> See, yeah, Brazil especially. Like there's poor people that get plastic surgery there. Holy well, man. and part of that is insecurity. Part of that is social acceptance and standards and... Mm. I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's a kind of a dangerous thing. So, hmm. what, I can what imagine like some Brazilian girls just like bouncing their way back home from work, you know, like on their bubble bus, like bounce, bounce, bounce. You, you know what I mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't know what you mean, but love, uh, what was your like controversial take? Having the legs like spread eagle and then just like bouncing uh, I, I, down I'm, the street. I'm, 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 what the <laughs> No, 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 no. Hey, hey, in Lev's defense, uh, hey, 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 in Lev's defense, I'm picturing that one episode of South Park where, where oh, uh, Randy, yes, yes, Randy yes. gets ball cancer and he's using his ball bag as like a bean bag to go from point A to point B. So like before you start casting judgment and stones and how dare you, Lev, <laughs> the fine women of Brazil have had enough of your shit, young man. Before you all get indignant, all right, he was on to something. You may now resume your indignation. I have already. I never stopped, to be honest. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. My, my whole point is that there's all kinds of attachments and things that people will probably do in the future, for lack of a better judgment. Uh, I mean, body modification, it's already increased. I mean, even things like tattoos. And in Judaism, it is forbidden to have tattoos on one's body. Catherine, you would, uh, y you're with me on this, right? Like, uh, what is the reason for the tattoos to be considered the Jewish version of haram? Um, uh, and, um... <laughs> I believe that it's because you're supposed to, your, your body is borrowed and then it's returned in a similar condition that it was, uh, it was given to you. So, okay. Um, so no plastic surgery either then, right? 
I, I controversial take. Mm. I think that pla most plastic surgery, apart from when you have a condition, should I don't know. I, I think like we should it should be severely restricted. I think that it's been a terroristic force on the psyches of women that it's, that you know it's it's sort of like not to go all rad femme or anything, but like to me, there's something about it that just doesn't seem right. I have I mixed feelings because uh, okay, there are people who who definitely have some is um, you know mental issues and therefore like they just will never you know a body dysphoria or something and overdo it. And there's a lot of uh, plastic surgeons who are just unscrupulous. However, notice how a lot of these it, plastic surgeons they look creepy too. I don't know. Why. Yeah, but okay, but <laughs> they look like they they belong on. Well, I made a, I made a whole collection. animation wait, wait, wait. about it. Hold on, okay, let, let on. me finish. The thing is if. if if you're, you know, say you have a, a, a particular feature that's causing you so much sadness and so much grief and and it's and it's like, you know, if you took care of this one thing, you would feel OK. But it's never that know, one thing. One. Well, Captain, well, do you have that? Do you, I mean, do I have that one thing? No. But I, but if I have, oh, I, see, see, uh, uh, <laughs> you're not like those uggos. <laughs> no, but I'm not, you know, like I'm okay. Like, you know, I, 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 yeah, probably, I don't mean that. I'm kidding. Well, you're, you're a very beautiful woman, Catherine. Thank you. But I wouldn't, but I mean, but if, for example, I had like, I don't know, a huge mole that was just bothering me. It didn't feel like myself or maybe yeah. Like something was like off about my face. Like I, I do think because I've seen people do this. Like somebody had a nose thing. She, she, she already had an issue with like um, she was getting the plastic surgery because of a of, of a medical issue. But she's like, well, while well, I'm under, why why not fix this thing a little bit? And you know what? I mean, if that makes her feel so much better and she's she feels fine. Like we're not born. Her, you know, like, you know, some of us are born with better looks than others. I mean, that's the that's mm. the truth. And but, but I guess oh, you're, 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 you're just perpetuating looks privilege. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> but no, but, but it's I... true. It's like it's just it's just honestly, I think the people who kind of hate it, it's like I understand where they're coming from. But some of it is definitely like intrasexual competition. competition. And it it's just like. You know, I really feel like the biggest determinants to being to having like a decent life and navigating social things is like either um, wealth, looks, or just IQ. Well, not IQ, but like a certain sort of smartness that translates to getting wealth. But it's just like you know. Especially if you're a chick, like it's hard, you know, like I was an ugly duckling. There's, there's a completely, there's a difference mm. in treatment. Why do I have some of like a micro following on, in, on Twitter? It's not because I say anything insightful. I don't. I think everyone here probably says the same shit or similar shit. Mm. It's just oh, easier. Oh, you had some pretty original takes. Well, well for, first off, uh, Bimba Ubermensch, you are very talented. I mean, when I saw the drawings that you did, this is not me simping. I legitimately think that you have a great creative spark within you. I mean, you come up stuff pretty much uh, close to the level, I'd say, of uh, Cream of Dog, who we are also going to have on the uh, art stream. I will tell you when we are going to have Cream of Dog on... Hold on, I'm trying to... Got to scroll this thing. Uh, we are having cream of dog on. Uh, boy. But if you on. have like a yeah. huge, like deviated septum, which I think that's what Catherine was referencing or yeah. something, and and if it's just like really making you feel terrible about yourself, you know, it, it's on a continuum because there's a difference between pulling a Joan Rivers versus a Susan Sarandon, like. True. And, and and I think when we look at all these so-called natural people, especially if they have inordinate wealth, you know, most of them do some, they do something. It might be minuscule, it might be a microdose, but a lot of them do a little bit of, of something and they may not do it now, but they'll do it when they're older and you may not be able to tell, but they, they get shit done. We just lie to ourselves every day and say who knows like maybe in a few years i might do something for my skin 
Uh, I mean, I initially was thinking maybe a small ethnic rhinoplasty, but I don't want to look like Cindy Lou, you know. So I'll keep yeah, she's got a who, weird look to her. I don't know. I know who Cindy Lou is. No, I don't know. I think um, uh, I don't true. think there's, there's any problem at all. But we we got Sonia. We got Sonia supposedly. Well, supposedly we have Sonia supposedly on the stream. Thank you so much for coming in. I thought. Sorry for gonna... being late. No, hey, don't worry at all. No I thought you were going to look like Sonia. a rabbit. I thought you were going to look like your rabbit avatar with like these red eyes and wearing the green you, hat. And uh... are you saying I don't look like my rabbit avatar? I'm offended. I mean, you, do, uh, you do have red hair. I mean, it's not the red eyes, but I guess there is. Oh man, color. Th th this stream is nothing but Lev's uh, uh, Lev's perceptions of everyone getting shattered one by one. All right. Yes, but by the way, that image it looks so much to me like a, like a Pokemon, like one of the later mm. generation Pokemon, uh, Shyman. Right? Doesn't it look like Shyman? You know that hedgehog thing. Shyman sounds like a racial slur, not a Pokemon. Here, I'll show you Shyman, and you tell me if you see a similarity between the two. Thank so God, love is... happens to be of that race, or else we would have been in serious trouble a long time ago. <laughs> So I often can't... get mistaken for wait. Also, it's a Pokemon. It's not a real racial slur. Wait, what? What race? Hey, you made the assumptions there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. And another one that reminds me of Terriermon. If you guys know Digimon, there was this uh, this thing called Terriermon. Here's a picture of it. And you tell me, Sonia, supposedly, if you see a resemblance between these. Oh these, yeah. Right. <laughs> I love the big ears. I love the big ears too, and then they're just like your avatar. There we go. And there's also yeah. a third one that reminds me of oh, what's the name? It's that Pokemon that a lot of nerds, you know, draw Rule Thirty Four of this psychic Pokemon. I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, I was gonna say that could be any Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah wait, say, say that again. Gardevoir. Uh, I, I, yes. I'm, I know I'm messing it up. Um, it begins Gardevoir. with a G. There you Gardevoir. go. I love um, that you guys are outing yourselves with your knowledge of which Pokemon are the horny Pokemon. Why do you know that, you degenerates? Oh hey, I, here, only, I, here, only look, know, is... I only know that because that Pokemon won a tournament in Salty Bet uh, a few weeks ago, and everyone has been making exhibition matches on this one fucking Pokemon. Uh, so, so I'll let you know. Uh, I've only played the Pokemon on the Brick Game Boys, so my operating knowledge is only the cursed things I see on my timeline, but that godforsaken French. To I, which there's a lot of it. Yes. Ay, ay, but, ay. but anyway, see... Sonia, this is the first time oh. you've been on. Yes. Uh, not BTR, but uh, we'll have you on yeah. BTR. Uh, but, but real quick, hold on, Gio, before so that. Introduction. So introduction. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I also don't really understand. You know, I don't understand the different streams are like, Lev also did not explain anything to me. He was just like, hey, come on. So, oh, I, I didn't want to, I As wanted usual. to say, I wanted to say why I was late, but I don't know why I want to say so much. I do, because it's a terrible reason. It's just that I literally just put the wrong time on my calendar. And so I ne never looked at us. it again. I was like, it's on my calendar. Obviously, if it's on my calendar, it's correct. And I was so proud of my, I, like, I got up early <laughs> to like get uh... stuff ready, to take a shower. Then I see Lev's DM, like, uh, where are you? <laughs> well, no, the, Sunday, the, the Sunday Lev stream is more chill and relaxed and uh, free-flowing yeah. than BTR, where it's, like, very... Well, I mean, what am I... Who am I kidding? We're not structured <laughs> at all. I mean, well, we try to be, but, yeah. uh, no, the Lev art stream is just... We chill, we hang out. Um, yeah. I fucked well, up and, Athena's and... lips, so I'm going to have to wait till it dries and redo do them, but... Uh, oh, uh, and by I wanted way, be, to... Before your introduction, uh, by the way, Sonia, I just want you to take a look at this image of Gardevoir and the image of your avatar. Oh, they have both. They both have red eyes. They both have like a similar kind of green. You see? You see what I mean? Like, there's a connection. Yeah. There's a connection here. Yeah, and definitely. The, the, it's for sure, the color palette and also the kind of like kawaii chibi aesthetic. Yeah, and, the chibi, yeah, yeah, I see it. And this was all, this was done, by the way. It's too by bad. A I could have done a woodcut for Sonia, but I just didn't have. I usually do woodcuts on the art stream, but it's I just didn't have time to do a design. That uh, just, uh, oh, just, well, someday just, perhaps. Oh, I uh, wanted to say I saw, I saw I was shocked. I saw one of your woodcuts. I think it was of Amy Therese, who by the oh. way, I still don't under Go Anyway, ahead. I don't I don't even want to talk about Amy Therese. I just wanted to mention <laughs> that I saw I saw your woodcut 
uh, I saw it on the timeline and then immediately saw it in the lolcow.farm left cows thread. And I was like, fucking <laughs> no, kidding fuck, me. no way, really? <laughs> yeah, it got, po- it got capped and posted. Um, and oh, I, and uh, the reason I, the other reason I thought of this is that I saw the, like someone was contextualizing or something. And this was called a quote, far right stream. So I hope you're all aware. Oh boy. Wait, oh, well, boy. you have to, do you have a link to this? Cause, I mean, I'm oh, curious, they're like, probably insulting the shit out of me, but like, it's... I, it's definitely not flattering to you at all, the context in which it's posted. Uh, no, and... Oh they're not I mean, flattering to tell... anyone. They're they're like this with... They're, well, they hate you, they, Bimbo. Well, Wait, are we talking they, about they hate everyone. farms? Yeah, no, it is. It's a very misanthropic place. No, and they, it's they like, hate everyone. It's like... I feel everyone. the same way about locale.farm that I do about Kiwi Farms, which is most of the people there are deranged obsessives who are like morally worse than the deranged obsessives they chronicle. But yeah, if you're probably. interested in deranged obsessives, like the content cannot be beat. You know, uh, uh, there's uh, no those two websites have I no just, competition. I saw uh, that I saw that thread once and I was just like, I'm never looking at it again because for some reason they just decided to harangue on me because because like i you know red scare people follow me and then you know i follow them back and jack follows me and i follow him back and everything yeah they they hate anyone associated with like perfume nationalist or red scare because they think you're part of the uh mythic uh, red brown alliance so then it's like just, just one, one yeah. quick thing they, before they, they uh, don't, they don't hate him for the right reasons, which is allegedly working for, uh, you know who? Who teal? Oh, no, no, uh, oh, allegedly. God, oh, oh. Uh, j- just uh, r- the r- Russians. R- the Russians, yes, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. I don't want to get sued. Just allegedly. Uh, one, one, uh, one, uh, two quick things before oh I forget. Uh, uh, Sonia, what I really like about web streams is that. Break the Rules is sort of like the modern day McLaughlin group, but you know, it ranges from having Wait, people, what is that? Uh, the McLaughlin group was uh, it was a news program that was the cloth that all ta- everyone talk over one another regardless of whatever the assigned topic is, and there's a moderator, but the moderator is just like, No, shut up, I'm gonna interrupt Susan right now. Susan, you're wrong. We need Salinas more than Salinas needs America, and basically. The, the premise that every over-the-top uh, hot air newscasting debate show uh, yeah. since in the history of ever, it was the McLaughlin Group. But now it's like the McLaughlin Group, but for the internet age. And where Lev and Geo are moderating discussion that ranges from people on the World Economic Forum discussing what is within their wheelhouse to a bunch of like jerks on the internet screaming over one another about berserk and calling because, each other feds be, because because the, because the 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 creator passed away so now we're angrily mourning and yelling at one another um, while Lev's art stream are more like um, yeah, for for lack of a better term it's like it, it's it's classier than public access but it's 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 like the kind of discussion that would warrant oh come over for coffee in a danish and let's talk and catch up it's not as high impact there's not as many chairs being thrown at one another no one's getting called the fed it's low key i'm rather partial to these streams and i'm glad you're on well i'm i'm happy to be here and experience the vibe and once again i apologize for being late that was purely my fuck up although in my defense i did ask lev for a calendar invite and apparently, we're not professional enough of an operation yeah, around here for that kind calendar. of amenity. I got to do the calendar invites. You're absolutely right. I do have to do those calendar invites. But uh, I mean, it it is a pain in the ass, so I probably wouldn't either if I were you. No, no, no. I could see how those would definitely uh, how would, those would definitely help the situation out. And uh, when it comes to your Twitter, by the way, uh, first off, such a one who was also on our show, and I look forward to having him back. Such a one. He was the guy who did your avatar. Yeah. And a picture of the bunny girl. And why specifically this bunny girl? How did that uh, come into fruition? Oh, why is that my persona? Um, mm-hmm. fir- it's kind of a long Persona long-standing... or fursona? Fursona. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, I am I officially diagnosed as a furry. 
Really, it was kind of imposed on oh, me. God. The rabbit you're, you're, thing. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Um, I've always been one of the good ones. You know, I'm, I'm one of the good libertarians. Oh, you're one of the good girls. Blah 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 blah. Um, I want. Why? When do I get to be one of the bad ones? It's not fair. Guys, guys, I'll I take have you as one of the bad ones. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm <laughs> reading this cow thread where it says a screen cap of the bimbo Uberman stream from a few weeks ago. Bella gave up the left facade after being outed as a rich fail daughter. Now she's booking herself as an e-girl for what seems to be from this frame. I grabbed a flatter, a, a flailing far right YouTube show. <laughs> Bimbo Ubermatch isn't the half black chick who hates black men because her dad abandoned her. <laughs> what? Jesus Christ. Um, at this point, Bimbo is like the Britney Venti of the post left. <laughs> no, it's really funny too because I'm actually I'm not even half yeah, black it's... at all. No, I, I think it's really funny because whenever anyone inquires about my background, I'm just going to be like, I'm mystery me because why does it fucking matter? Like, yeah. why does it yeah. matter? Um, I don't know. That, that, that's what I'm saying. It's just like, they these girls, I are some are most of them presumably girls. Maybe some are men. Oh, I don't. I would know. assume so. Yeah. I it's think just, there are um, a few guys. Girls but not many. slash men. I mean, it's they take men. the most dysgenic traits of the most dysgenic people on other image board forums, like 4chan, like the men they they claim to dislike, yeah. and then they parrot the same insipid uh, crabs like in barrels in the bucket mm -hmm. sort of behavior and then um it's just like i don't know these people would never have the balls to say anything to your face the stuff they're saying about you is quite like ridiculous but like i'm just there's some Somebody stuff like quiet. i literally can't say on air and, and also incredible. with the with kiwi farms by the way the, how Kiwi Farms looks to break the rules, they wrote, from what I can tell, these people are trying to do some sort of a big brain internet blood sports, but without the personal drama. Smart move, but it kind of sucks for our purposes. That's right. Suck. Yeah, because you're a fucking, you're a degenerate. That's what. Well, yeah, you're, you're that's like one of these Ethan Roth on, though. Well, although here's, here, here's the thing about, all right. Um, uh, th there was a, there was a lol cow board on 8chan and what really irked me about the board is like, all right, Sonia made a good point and we're like, they're worse than the allegedly awful people they're chronicling. Okay. However, there came a point where like people were digging up info on others, personal lives where like it, the, the, the lol cow board, like at times, depending on the time of day you got on. It would be like a decentralized intelligence agency. Like, yeah. how the fuck can these people get so much info <laughs> on such a short amount of time? Like, and but isn't and it crazy how like the people internet have has access enabled... to those like paid databases? You know, the yeah. where you, uh, like Lexus Nexus kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, and not just that, but like, I, I like sometimes you'll see screenshots of like, oh, that's a program private investigators use, or like, oh. This is a program you use if, if, like, you work in commercial insurance and you're digging up someone's, like, financial records. Like, the degree of the resources that are used for, like, fucking roll cow threads of all things. Like, it's, it's, it's such a sad exercise in group effort and, and, like, completing these objectives. But, like, for such shitty purposes, it's awful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I they're mean, going after Jonna well, now. He's calling her a red scare pick me. Oh, amazing. They're going <laughs> after what? Who? Yana. You know, we're totally yeah. going to get posted in the... Th I, re I kind of regret bringing this up now because we're absolutely going to get posted. The thing is, they're going to they're gonna do it anyway. So... And, but they don't... They don't They don't go after That's cows hilarious. that they laugh at. That's their whole thing. Oh That's my true. God. You're not supposed to cow now. tip. You're not supposed to cow I love tip, all so... the terminology. There's so, so much they can lingo. Say, what is they can cow say tipping? whatever they oh, want. Yeah, cow tipping, I get it. Yeah. Cow tipping is actively trolling. People do it anyway, occasionally, but yeah. it is heavily discouraged. Well, the only cow tipping... tribute to Amy Therese. Uh, gay the only, with... Uh... <laughs> The only um, cow tipping. The he only captured cow tipping her gnarly I... clod perfectly. Yeah, that's the whole point. I mean, these people don't know that. Yeah. I'm a big. I'm inspired by Kathy Kowitz, and I figured that. Not like I love Amy, and she's a good friend, but that one particular photo, it really fit well 
uh, if you look up the woodcuts of Kathy Colwitz. So I, Wait, I, real quick. The only cow tipping that I prefer is tipping uh, streamlabs.com slash So tip, ah. tip me there. Uh, there go. But anyways, we didn't do the out. intro, so let's stop. Lev, why don't you have an OnlyFans? Get your shit together. Yeah, I know. I'm slow on the oh, draw, you, you but know, I am Lev, TikTok. Lev has not yet found the most flattering angles for his centerfold spreads. For his Lev after dark photos, hell, he's still trying to figure out all the proper. Women do that at age those. eleven. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, hey, they, hey. He he came from the Soviet Union. Okay, he has an excuse. You take that back. Yeah, they I don't mean, have really puberty over there. <laughs> they don't. Have, yeah, they're born into it. <laughs> they're just born into it. They're, That's they're, it. They're, they're, they're just spawned in bats rushing towards the enemy, and it's been like that since Leningrad. All right. Yes, exactly. It's like that one so, quote from Zizek about uh, over in this side of the border, like the women get beaten and raped and they enjoy it. Over there, they get beaten and raped, they don't enjoy it. I don't know what he meant by that. That was kind of I not don't know. good. But, uh, it gets but anyway, the people so, going. Can't deny that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Sonia supposedly, why? Tell us your story. Why are you called Sonia supposedly? What is the supposedly part? Supposedly a fed. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I mean, I keep saying, anyone is free to offer me money, I will take it. Oh. Just, you know, the, just putting that out there. I probably won't, I won't necessarily do anything in particular. We'd have to negotiate that part, but I will definitely take the money. That I can, you know, that I'm on board for. Um, what's my story? Uh, I guess I kind of have floated around the fringes of the tech industry for a little while. Um, I work in cryptocurrency uh, <laughs> uh, which, is, a, time, which huh? I have mixed feelings about um, and I also I guess do like independent publishing I mean zines um, mm. for like you know artsy little pamphlets that's very uh, early 90s of you yeah yeah well the 90s are very in right now I mean even the yes. what are we going to call them Y2K the naughties I kind of, the, I hate the naughties. That sounds so British. Ugh. Um, Naughty. 2000s, that's what I say. That's my uh, I don't know. So does that kind of set anti your, do you have any particular questions? Well, I think that you are a great uh, Twitter personality, whatever it is that you can, uh, whatever it is you want to call it. Like all of your little, uh, like, shout out to cows, having a friendly little cow there. And over here, another one. Uh, each of us is a swing through the possibility space. You can't not have always existed, nor avoid persisting in perpetuity. This irreducible specificity, an extropic panean, the soul is open. Like, you are, you are like, here's how I would describe it. You are like the gentler, kinder version of Logo Daedalus. Oh! Is that, I don't know if that's a compliment, though. Well, that's no, not no, a compliment. That is a, Right. No, uh, no, no, that uh, is a compliment. Excellent callback to backhanded compliments earlier. Shit. <laughs> you know, you I don't do, see. I like... love a good. I love a good backhanded compliment, though. Like, there's an art to it. <laughs> you know, you don't seem like that much of a pro Chinese boot licking. I'll eat all the dumpling shell like logo, and you're nicer. And you're nicer. Oh God. <laughs> No, but look, Logo has a way with words, and he has a way with drawing people uh, into his uh, into his circle through being a great wordsmith. He's got a silver tongue, and I think that, I don't know what the color of your tongue is, but uh, I think there is definitely a silvery texture to it, because you are really good at composing these tweets. And, well, uh, thank you. Hey, I appreciate that. Cat girl milk, gracias por la donación por cinco dólares. Yeah, Wait, hey, when did this happen? How come it, I didn't see it that? It just came up on the screen. How come I missed that? I was du looking at something else. You should else. double okay. check your stream labs, my friend. Yes, yes. Let me double check. Thank you so much, Cat Girl Milk. I will take a look at that post haste. And is uh, that milk yeah. that cat girls drink, or is it like no, a cat no, girl yeah. with it's, like? It, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. debating on kind of... that one. Yeah, we're yeah. debating on it. I mean, yeah, no, it's uh, definitely the second one. I know, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, do you prefer the first one or the second? <laughs> I, I shouldn't ask you these questions. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, finally you realize that, Lev. Finally. <laughs> Holy crap. We have yeah. two of the most enlightened women on the most enlightened part of the internet. Yes. No, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. By the way, for those who don't know Catherine, you are you are a wonderful journalist. Uh, your Twitter uh, says over here, Femme Fatale, 
trapped in random and mischievous mind of a writer, and you are a writer for Variety, Guardian, Washington Post, Playboy, Esquire, Vulture, CNN. So I just want to highlight the quality of people that we have here on Break the Rules. I've known Catherine since 2008, I think right after Obama got elected. Uh, our mutual friend, Ellis Hennigan, introduced us uh, together at an event. I think it was a comedy event. I'm not sure if Ellis was doing stand-up. Ellis Do was Catherine? doing stand-up, yeah. He was, was doing stand-up, yeah. yeah. Excellent, yes. But uh, So, Sonia, what, what attracts you to uh, the, the weirdo schizo potentially damaging oh. for any career that you have side of the internet uh, on Twitter. What is your thing? You have a pretty, uh, compared to like most, uh, you know, trad LARPers and pick me's and uh, <laughs> get um, compared to a lot of people, you seem to be very um, moderate and uh, easygoing. And uh, um, I don't know, what's the word for it? No, uh, more neurotypical than atypical for what you find in a lot of these online spheres. So is that, I don't know whether that's a detriment or a strength, but uh, what motivates you? Why do you hang out with us schizos? What, what is the deal? Or are you a federal informant trying to uh, infiltrate? Uh, <laughs> never mind, never mind. Mm. And, and I also then want to ask the same to Bimbo Ubermensch, because I think, uh, uh, Bimbo, you may not be able to be here for that long. I think you have to go soon. So after... What? Um, How after about... So Let's have um, her. Uh, I, why don't you take that question first? Let's yeah, so have, what the, was, have the self incrimination start elsewhere. Okay. So, <laughs> what was the question again? I'm so sorry. So, why do you hang out in this space of people uh, who are, let's say, very online, extremely online, where it may rub <sighs> off, I guess, depending on the circles that you are in, uh, in, a, uh, in a negative way? I don't know. Um, I don't see it that way personally, but that's kind of like what... Uh... That's a really good question. I mean, the reason primarily why is everything up here... I moved to a country where, let's be frank, I don't really know a lot of people right after I graduated undergrad. And then I moved up here and I was still waiting for like a work permit and everything. And, you know, everything got shut down. And people here are kind of psyop to hell and they don't necessarily yep. want to hang out. So I came on out of sheer boredom. And then there's a part of me that wants to just completely excise or get rid of my account when shit fully opens. But I, I mean, I oscillate between wanting to do that because I've met a lot of interesting people online too. And I also feel less trepidation coming online because I feel like you know, job prospects for Zillennials are pretty shit anyway, for mm. in a lot of ways. Well, yeah, I, like I mean, I'm on the cusp. Zillennials is a first for me, too. So, <laughs> you know, ideally, it would be nice if I found, like, a normie job via, via Twitter. And, I mean, the modeling stuff is coming back up again, but the Canadian market's been decimated, and... It's hard to go back and forth between the states and Canada because they have these really draconian, like, rules now where you're like you have yeah. to stay in a hotel. And yep. So it's just like everything. My time online is basically a time in purgatory before I live an analog existence again, and it makes me sad because I do like a lot of the people I meet online. And I wish I, I wish they lived nearby. I wish I could have them over, mm. you know. But, but do you to... also, but do you also think that when you come back, when the door opens up and like the steam comes out and you come, come out like a zombie into the real world and you look at people around you, they will be the zombies in comparison. You know what I mean? I mean? There, like... No, no, that's a good question too, because there's, there's somebody I was meeting up with initially in person, right? And I think the biggest thing that makes in-person interaction so difficult now or a little bit daunting, and this is coming from an extroverted person, is the reason why it's daunting is bef when you meet somebody online and you want to meet up with them IRL, you kind of have some idea of what they're going to be like in person. You kind of know mm -hmm. what they think about the world. You kind of understand their schemata of things. You don't know about their intonation and speech and 
their genuflections and stuff like that. But you kind of have some idea what that person is going to be like. Now, if it's the other way around, you're meeting somebody in person for the very first time. You don't know what they think about the world. You might say something that's offensive in the first five minutes, even though you didn't mean to. And it's just a completely different you're taking a little bit of a more of a risk there. And I think that it's just like so fucked up that my mind has just kind of been rewired in that way in a year. I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. I mean, here in New York city, especially you can imagine some of the conversations that people end up having. But at the same time, like I said before, there was something I'm not going to get into it now. I think we are going to be talking about it uh, a couple of streams for now, certain things that are going on behind the scenes. But let's just say that there is a person who I'm closely aligned with, who, you know, he's a great guy. He goes to Burning Man. He's like part of the, I guess you could say he's part of the intelligentsia or whatever. He's a great lawyer. And he is somebody who uh, agrees with me on what's going on right now with the state of avert, like this overt woke leftism. And he is not a fan of Donald Trump by any stretch of the imagination. So it's like, there's already signs of people within that sphere who don't like the way things are going. But like he said, there's a lot of people out there who are just cowards and they're not going to speak out and they're all going to pretend to be of a certain mindset, even though secretly they're of a completely different one. And I guess it's a question of how do you know who is who? How do you know who's just pretending to be something as opposed to being a true believer? Oh, well, well, um, if I could just jump in real quickly, love, uh, I, I had said this at an earlier stream, so I apologize putting my gloves on and beating this dead horse again. However, it should be noted that we now live in a point where, like, like your friend that you had just described, okay, he is in an ecosystem where, like, there are people who are at risk of losing their job, not because they're not saying Black Lives Matter or something like that, but because they're not saying it loud enough. Like, there's this, like, performative, nervously looking left and right, anxiously hoping that whoever is overseeing like this rally or, you know, uh oh, like, did I put it enough time on Twitter or Instagram tweeting about certain things? And, and, and then you could only imagine the weird, sniveling, nebbish, chinless, soft hand people who are like, well, you know, love, we noticed you weren't tweeting enough about the uh, trans Native American club footed indigenous uh, refugees lately. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's not a good look. If I were you, I'd, uh, you know, and, and stop, stop bringing up the black crime rates in America. If you quote the FBI statistics one more time, it's curtains for you. You better have someone start your car for you, love. So anyways, uh, we're going to a rally on Saturday, and if you want to come through, bring your own sign. I'm fucking watching you, love, okay? <laughs> people, people live in that, and that is their day to day, and no one wants to admit it. I love it; it's crazy. Can I, can yeah. I come in uh, before I, before I leave? But, um, gosh, I'm sorry if somebody downstairs is really loud. Uh, no. I, anyways, I can't hear it. Oh, some Roland Bart said this, like a long time ago but he said you know you're living in a really totalitarian spot if you can't be silent like if you know you know shit's really bad when you don't even have the option to be silent like i've had yeah. people that i know who have been lambasted by basically activist like functionaries of the state for not posting the infographics at the time or for the new issue you know and that that can run the gamut between like, I don't know what happened in Sudan to black lives matter to whatever. And it's like, you're, yeah, you're like not even allowed to shut up about shit or you're like deemed suspect. If you don't talk about something, you know, it's like, that's, that's, what's really fucked up. Um, that's obviously not the case for everyone, but it's just like, I have heard instances where people have gotten scrutinized because they didn't go along with the newest top-down elite-driven social justice movement thingy of the week. And it, this is the thing. It's, like, really stochastic. It's, like, they, they just pull this shit out of their ass every week. It's, yeah. like, oh, you know, this, this week is uh, with Derek Chauvin. Now it's about Israel versus Palestine. Next is going to be about climate change. And you never know, like, what it's specifically going to be, but people, like, expect you to 
have a full-fledged opinion about something very complex or completely top-down ah. and elite-driven. And it's like, why? Why can't I just n act normally and do my own thing? Why do I have to partake in some tepid discourse that does not change the status quo in any way? You You're know, just the, like, the, yeah. Bimbo, that, yeah, that's but... a, that, that is an excellent point. And the creepy part about these tepid exchanges is that when you hear them long enough, you could sort of like decision tree, oh, you're bringing up this, so now you're going to talk about this. And then when I respond with this, you're going to tell me to educate yeah. myself. And it's this like really weird, like shitty decision tree that never gets anywhere. Like, oh, NPCs. like, like, oh, right. It's like, yeah. uh oh, like the person is quite like, and they all espouse. It is, uh, it is worth noting that this isn't. This isn't a left-right thing. It's just that the left happens to be ascendant, so the people who have their ideology like copy-pasted into their head by whatever the mainstream is at any given time, you know, if it if something different were on top, they would just flow along to that. In fact, they will. You know, anytime any like any that's how you get the like uh, the crazy mindset updating where people it was uh, during the pandemic. You know when yeah, the when the yeah. like official guidance is changing, um, you would have you would see this kind of like it was like a wave of 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 like software update or almost like firmware update when where people get <laughs> yeah. the new you know the new propaganda settles in uh, or the you know the, also the discourse of the week thing. It's kind of the same phenomenon where there's this like hive. Um, or it's like it's it's a correlated equilibria, you know. There's like some point that everyone is correlating off of. Um, where am I going with this? I, I think don't know. Like I got the, excited. Yeah, I I think like that point. Oh, it's, I was saying it's not a left-right thing. You know, it's it's mm. a authoritarian thing. Like this is just yeah, how it's definitely most a top-down, elite-driven thing, and it I, doesn't matter who. Well, is I, I also want to. I think the problem is that like right-wing ideology is inherently antithetical to the way that the certain power structures are set up currently at the moment that doesn't maximize for particular utilities and certain mm. things. Well, at the moment, but uh, Catherine, what do you think? Uh, do you think this is, this could be both for the right and the left and what do you generally make of yeah. the mood? Well, I, I think the idea that there is like a trendy cause that keeps changing and, and what was brought up, like people are not educated on the facts of, of most of it. And so most of it to me seems like virtue signaling rather than actually want caring and affecting change because people seem to only care about these very specific things that get a lot of media or influencer attention. I mean, there's so many things going on around the world right now, like so many things that are not being remotely talked about so that to me says that it is about a cause de jour as opposed to something that people truly truly care about or invested in and there is a pressure to be like well you've got to be like us you gotta you know this is the this is the cause these are the suffering people and and if you don't align with that if you go anywhere counter you get attacked and that's that's a huge problem or even if you stay silent i was just watching a youtube video uh, where these two men, um, these two black men that are, are really quite funny, um, they they posted how they refused to do a thing about Palestine and Israel, and they and they said that because they're like, well, you know what, we don't really care that much. <laughs> we don't like. There's a lot of things going on in the world. Uh, we're not really informed. And we don't feel like our opinion is going to really bring anything into it because we don't have a like an opinion that's really a value, right? And and this is how I feel too. Like I don't like to uh, to put my opinion on things if if I don't actually have the facts that I'm and not informed. And but people are very quick to do that when they are actually completely devoid of facts. They just oh, they really don't know. But but uh, you know, Catherine, this ties into what Sonia was saying really well in terms of like uh, the, the 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 firmware update. All right, like the most recent patch was uh, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. Like that was the mm -hmm. most recent update. So now like you see that being spammed everywhere. You're going to see it on your timeline, no matter what you're going to see, like, you know, substanceless jerk offs wearing it on their clothing. Uh, they're going to be saying it in person, but then like, 
but well, but, this is why social media is a horrible thing because uh, not not like I, I'm not down like on social and media entirely, but I have become much more because these things are are virtue signaling signaling on mass a mass does not require much effort. Like to even go to a rally, which I'm not like a huge rally fan but like if you gotta go to a rally there's some level of effort that has to be put into that right you gotta make right. your sign you gotta dress up but this is nothing and so it's easy to have an opinion oh, at the but, same but, time but, like it's the, easy the, to tout an infographic and put it on your gram and then expect everybody else to post the same fucking infographic or send money to the same fucking NGO like but, it's but, but the creepy yeah. thing about this is that like um, in regards to you can't afford to to even be silent. Like, all right, like when 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 people yeah, that's start, what I wanted to say. That's when, like some what, what, weird reverse of discourse well, in terms right. of like. But it's but it's but it's eerie because like you know you end up getting pigeonholed into having to say something about it, and then you say something like, oh, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. Okay, uh, you could buy a Libyan slave. You could buy an African slave in Libya for give or take two hundred American dollars, like give or take market fluctuation. All right, like let's talk about that. And they're like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. You're a bigot. And it's like, all right, like now, like, like if you start to offer things that fit into their worldview, they're like, whoa, there, buddy. Like I, I I've got to deal with the grievances I'm talking about first. And even within the confines, even within the parameters of discourse, they're trying to set up before you even join in. Even when engaging within that, like they blow a gasket, they foam at the mouth, they cry, they shit their pants, they accuse you of being an ist who harbors an ism, possibly a phobia. And, and if this happens in, in real life, if this happens in meat space, there's pe people tend to be not as quick to jump to these conclusions but the ones who do jump to that conclusion like it's it's from like zero to a hundred in like less than two seconds it's bewildering and well, then they, they they like literally they are the ones who talk about protected classes and shit and then they they'll try to make your life fucking miserable i think most people are decent people who realize they don't know everything about the fucking world but it's always like this, it's, it's like this one vocal minority type of person. And they, they're just like the way they interact with the world and the way they expect you to interact with the world just metastasizes. Um, anyways, after Catherine says what she's going to say, I'm going to have to go, but yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ben Bovermesh, thank you so much for being here. So thank Catherine, uh, go for it. Yeah. No, I was just going to talk about those black squares. And, oh, hold um, on. Catherine, your audio is weird. Your audio is weird. It sounds like it's from far away. How about now? Is it fine? A, a, little bit, a little bit better, but very strange. I'm not sure why it sounds that way. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah you, you, you sound like a, 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 a radio set from the late 70s. Oh, wow. That's so weird. I'm just on my coast phone. Coast to coast. Okay, well... <laughs> no, I, th I, think, I think it's better now. I think it's better now. Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, that's weird. Okay, well, um, I was just going to say, like, uh, use the example of those black squares, right? Which is, to me, you know, and then people were, like, pressured, like, why aren't you posting a black square? Or, or, you know, there is, like, everyone was, like, copying each other. And I consider, it's not because I don't support black people, but, like, to me, that was such a definition of virtue signaling. Like, what is a black square really doing? And then um, with um, the attacks, like the anti-Semitic attacks uh, recently, some people have started. There we go. It's better now. Okay, some people have started posting like blue squares and and then they were like, well, see who who does not post one. Well, I'm like, well, a nobody I know posted a blue square, but and I don't think blue squares are really the answer to anything. But also I'm like, well, but look at all this, these people who posted black squares, right? Or whatever the trend happens to be, like it's, it's about popularity clarity as opposed to truly supporting anything you know and anyways that was my very at the same point. time like that that point about from from Roland Barthes about um the lack of silence I think like there's there's a certain indignity that comes with um the sort of the spread of discourse around like 
you have to either tacitly support it now you have to like uh emphatically go out of your way to shill it's like that to me is um a sort of stepping up of the societies of control in terms of like people participatory um the sort of participatory like panopticism of like you know this person doesn't post whatever it's like a really weird way of consenting to power itself and it's like uh mm. it's monstrous in some ways well if there's one thing i wanted to meme like one thing i want to meme into reality if this is possible i think that one advantage that Bye, people who are more woke have had over time have uh, been I... to pr oh you're... all right thank you so much for coming in all right buenas Bimbo noches overmatch, everybody yeah. so so one one thing i wanted to say there is i think it may be able to meme a different. Uh, it may be possible to meme a different reality when it comes to how people perceive a lot of this stuff. Because one thing that let's say the people who are more woke have as their advantage is the ability to feel sorry for them by people who are on the fence to say like these are you know how dare you make fun of yada yada yada. Oh, but but I think well oh, oh, hold on. I think the antithesis to that would be to look at a lot of the stuff that's going on, not to say, like, oh, these people are sinful or whatever, you know, or they're degenerate. I think it's better to look at, at least from my perspective, I could be wrong, I think it may be better to look at it from a high culture, low culture thing, where it could be memed that a lot of the things that are going on right now in the art world, in entertainment, that cater to this stuff, that they are catering to lo the lowest common denominator, that they are the bread and circuses of their time, so it would be understood by at least uh, the establishment that this is low culture stuff. When they're engaging in that they're engaging in low culture, low brow culture, however you want to say well, it. I don't know if it could be memed that way, but at least mm -hmm. that's the feeling um, that I get from it. There's one. There's one quick thing. Uh, I'm I'm sorry to to interrupt, uh, but love the that's an excellent point in regards to high culture, low culture, which is a way to look at these things, which I don't believe is a perspective that has been touted or provided in a large scale at any earlier point. So I really dig what you had to say about that. I just want to point out really quickly. What's to stop? Like, okay, let's say. Um, uh, let's say Sonia is applying for a job a couple of years down the road, and it's like, mm, well, Sonia, it seems you never posted a black square on your Instagram a few years ago. Is there something you want to tell us? And then, like, and then uh, let's say, uh, let's say Lev is applying to a job, all right? And then they're like, mm, Lev, we tried, uh, Mr. Polyakov, we've been looking, and I, I want to accuse you of uh, not posting a black square, but. I don't have an Instagram. And then she triggers the silent alarm. <laughs> All right? Like, there are going to be repercussions to these things that, like, we're only going to see unfold when body counts start to rise. It's only going to be known until people start posting things like, hey, I got this rejection letter from, like, Morgan Stanley because I didn't post a black square during the, the riots. Yeah, they're not going to tell you. That's the thing. They're never going to tell you. That's why you got rejected. But, in, but you know, um, right now we all have these massive digital footprints, right? So there's a lot of information out there. And so if somebody does not align, although I have heard, which is interesting, I have heard from someone recently that on the recruiting side that uh, some t these days they are actually kind of actively avoiding hiring people who are extremely woke was that you love no oh um there there are people who are like refusing to hire people who are ex excessively woke because they don't want to have the the, the, the problems right of the yeah. pills and stuff so i mean there are definitely is, some people who take it into account yeah go ahead yeah, oh sorry i was just saying it, it's definitely i don't know how common it is i would I think it's certainly less common than the sort of like default corporate wokeness where it's like you kind of pay lip service, but you, you don't do anything that actually costs money or, you know, costs more money than like, you know, making everyone go through a training. Um, but I do think there there's the, the sort of anti-woke uh, sphere has definitely been growing and more and more like centrist moderate types are part of it as opposed to... Uh, the the uh, the earlier movers the early adopters let's say um without going <laughs> i wonder who they could be um no i think that yeah it's it's really funny um 
the way things change, I feel like these there is a slow um, erosion of natural defense mechanisms that people have to to these things. I don't know. Like, um, what, what were we going to talk about? Lev? No, but on the other hand, though, like with my lawyer friend's example, uh, his defense mechanism, at least when I was mentioning it to him, they went on the rise. He is aware of it, and he wants to solve it uh, through uh, certain ways as well that he wants to work with me on. So it's not a matter of completely just, like, ignoring the problems. It's a matter of when. Because, look, like, organizations like, um, you know who I'm going to mention, Geo? Here it comes. Here it comes. You know who's coming? Barry Weiss. Oh. Uh, with <laughs> with uh, FAIR, that organization that she is a part of. I don't think an organization like that would have been able to exist back in 2015, 2016. So I think that there are things that are sprouting up right now that, uh, you know, it's not going to be overnight. I mean, look, to the defense, even if a lot of these things that we don't like today... It was not, and I said this on the on the show with Prudentialist, a uh, great stream, by the way. I highly recommend everybody check it out. I'm going to link it in the chat. Uh, but anyway, what I said was, it was like, what, Catherine? Like, was it 30 years or 40 years ago? Uh, there were certain, let's say, maybe not like physical like rights that were barring people, but there was still this feeling that uh, not everything as far as like men, women, equality was being uh, addressed out in the open where maybe like women did not feel as comfortable in the workplace the question for me is when it comes to workplace equality stuff like that like at a certain point like how many years how long should this stretch of time be when let's say we would accommodate for people who may have been discriminated uh, based on sexual characteristics, racial characteristics, whatever, may have been discriminated well, against for, you know, all the time I'm before that. I'm an equality of opportunity kind of person. So I think for me, you know, it's really about creating a system that's just inherently more fair in terms of the opportunities that it gives people. And I think the idea of woke, I mean, was not like a badly intentioned thing. I think it's just been misappropriated because I think like fundamentally, you know, having equal rights, having having freedoms and opportunities, those are things that are very much aligned with me and how I view the world. Um, you know, I'm very much a live and let live and let's respect each other. And, and I'm, I'm very tolerant and I, and I advocate for that and always have. But what has happened is actually it's become used as a tool of intolerance. It's, it's counter what it was really meant for originally. So, you know, to to feel empathy for someone to to um, allow freedoms and rights. Those are all great, great things. Um, unfortunately, again, it's it's being used actually in a very tutorial authoritarian kind of manner that is actually causing silencing fears and it's also causing i think the really big thing is it's keeping us from solving a lot of these issues that are really important mm -hmm. issues to talk about and solve because we we're sort of filtered as to how we talk about things what we talk about and as a result we can't because if we can't discuss things honestly and transparently without accusation then we can't talk about these ideas and we can't begin to tackle the solutions, right? And it also keeps people away from each other. If you're afraid of offending someone, the relationship that you have with that person is, is a very different relationship. You can't, you don't get to know each other on the same level. And again, that creates more separation. And this is what we're seeing, which is why we have, we have in part, why we have so much fragmentation, especially in, in the U.S. Um, so yeah, like I, I, I think it's been a appropriated in all the wrong ways and that's what i disagree with unfortunately not necessarily the value i mean a lot of the values that were left leaning values that i very much supported and kind of grew up with are things that have kind of been turned upside down and and that is really scary and dangerous and and it's being weaponized and yeah but the I feel like the that, trajectory oh, of the ACLU kind of exemplifies uh, yeah, how civil mm. libertarianism, which was, you know, a, a bedrock of the left because it is what, what we now call classical liberalism um, was, you know, just sort of uh, at least at least the impression I got because I am I mean, I'm almost 27. So this does there is some generational stuff in here also. Yeah. But the ACLU has gone from, you know, 
I, I, I don't think they would do the Skokie campaign well, what, today. What, what are you doing with that bottle, by the way? What is that? Oh, I'm, I'm putting glue on paper. Oh, nice. Hey, this is oh, an art stream after all, ladies and gentlemen. I'm yeah. 28. That's a crazy. Oh, wow. I mean, and take maybe... a look at Geo's work. Look at that. Uh, I fucked up the mouth. Oh, and, just, uh, no. Oh, is that uh, color on there? Is that some kind of ink or something? What are um, you using? It's, it's color, like it's noodlers. I have like basically uh, a few noodlers like basic inks delight. from... Like is it black. bad of me to say that I thought that Gia was the oldest person on the stream, and now I realize it's me? <laughs> well, no, I'm uh, I'm 32 years old. I'm going to be yes. turning 33 in, uh, in September. That's when. But Jesus I, I'm was the oldest person on the stream. I feel very. Um, hmm. well, you are, you, no, you're you are young at heart. But what I want to say. That means you're the grown up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. Using, uh, <laughs> I'm it's using noodler zinc. All right, all right. Everyone give your and, permission uh, slips to Catherine, all right? <laughs> yes. Can I yes. parent everyone? I, I yes. just look a good parent. Oh, my God. I, I well, just, Geo, you kids. are always looking for a mommy GF. and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a year older than her. Oh, oh you mean Catherine? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, but, isn't it... <laughs> I mean, our what peoples have happening? always uh, mixed together in New York, apparently, so I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 Geo-stroking Geo, Geo yeah, his yeah. goatee and looking appraisingly intensifies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, uh, you, know, you know, I don't know if you're aware, do you remember a character named um, Eva that had blue hair that came on the show one time? I think I do. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um so speaking of maturity levels, that may or may not have been the most mature parent in the room. Oh. Dude, I, I, uh, two quick things. Two quick things. Uh, I'm very sorry to interrupt, but uh, one, uh, I'm going to be away from keyboard for a few minutes, so please excuse me. Number two, um, in regards to, to, to the, the, the discourse that comes with the people of certain ideologies, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but one thing I see that has been a reoccurring problem that it was very evident in the 2010s, and we're going to see a lot more of this uh, in this decade, young people on the left are prone to knocking on doors for candidates they support, mobilizing people to vote for monsters, and screaming at strangers in public. Young people on the right are prone to talking to people on the internet and in group chats and shit posting. This can't end well. And having like, anime avatars. Yes, like this can't, like this can't end well. Like it, 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 it's, it's, and this is why. Okay, the reason I'm bringing this up is because even when that uh, rally, you know, you're started, really, you're, you're evoking the touch grass meme so hard right now. Young people on the left and right don't give a shit about any of this. Like this is a very niche. Like, the, being interested in, like, quote-unquote discourse is a very niche thing in the first place. You're, like, <laughs> no, way <true>. overexposed <laughs> to weirdos. No, but, but at, but at the... Aren't we all? you really you're like not that. wrong. Yes. You're not wrong, but the, but, but the thing is, uh, uh, Democrats in, in here in the U.S. are much more engaging with the how-do-you-do, fellow kids, than the right. And even though it's a haphazard, shitty, fourth-rate attempt by people who are out of touch with those whose votes they need. Like, at the very least, you're more likely to see perpetually offended um, psychopath pigs with, like, you know, who, who, who can only... But like, if they don't say the words white supremacy out loud, they implode on themselves, you know? But those are the same people who are more willing to um, go... Like, like, you don't see... Uh, protests and demonstrations of right-wing leading people that don't like fucking that aren't like fed stock. The, the point I'm well, trying to that, well, that might have been become illegal though. I mean, if well, any right-wid person were to actually do a rally anywhere in America, they'd get yeeted so hard. The, 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 the point funny. the point I'm trying to make though is that there's um, oh. uh, like like the New York Times ran this piece on like all these 16 year old kids canvassing for some like. Uh, uh, for some Democratic candidate, which, like, you know, they that is lacking on the other side of the political spectrum. And it just comes off as, like, you know, if these people are more willing to, even on a local level, because local politics is where the magic happens. And we all, when, you know, I'll die on this hill, local politics is how we legalize gay weed in America. 
you know? Like it started as a ballot and an initiative and knocking on doors and then it works mm. its way from local to state legislature. And then before you but, know but it... Also, but also keep in mind, there were a lot of celebrities and a lot of conglomerates that were in favor of uh, that initiative. So oh, say excellent just, point. Yeah. Excellent but just point, is the way it is, though. Like, people who want to manage other people's lives are active. People who want to just be left alone and do their own thing are, you know, want to just be left alone and do their own thing. They want to, they don't want to go around telling other people what to do. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that Adam Carolla skit where he was talking about how do you decide which of the parents gets to take the kids to camp? Uh, Stane Haynes, do you know what I'm talking about? So in that oh right right i think he was gone so in that clip he was talking about how the parent that's the most enthusiastic about taking the kids to the camp will never take the kids to the camp you know you shouldn't let him take the kids to the camp because he's too eager to be with those kids but somebody like one of the dads who's like no i got a football game i gotta watch or whatever you know that is a dad you can trust with the kids because you know he's not <laughs> same thing with power about... huh yeah exactly oh. so that's uh, I think that's something to take a look at. But I want to go back to Catherine's uh, uh, comments because this is something like if the Prudentialist was here, uh, he'd probably have a thing or two to say about that because uh, I, I mean, I, as you know, Gio, in the stream, I did my best to be a devil's advocate against a lot of um, the uh, more uh, you know, reactionary-minded positions. But when it comes to the idea of, uh, which I agree with in principle, of people who are classically liberal saying that, uh, you know, like, what we're talking about makes sense, this is very logical, you guys, you know, th you don't have any common sense when it comes to your approaches, and you're going to cause these problems, and you're going to create this uh, censorship and a new kind of bigotry. In a way, they are like the virgin in comparison to the leftist Chad, which would go, yes, a creature just made up of emotion and wanting power and doing anything possible to achieve that power where it becomes more of a friend enemy distinction no, but, but that's what i wanted to on... get like that's sorry go ahead love because then i have well no i was, I was just gonna like people who are on that side i mean again my whole thing is i'm not going to be attracting those people i want to get at people who are more like on the fence and more around being classical liberals to have a pushback oh. against the crazies but all that i'm saying is that the crazies they don't want any dialogue they never have they never will uh just like uh, certain uh arabian countries don't well, i'm not gonna get into well, that right I, now I but we'll anyway we'll yeah. see something love to that because i i spoke with a friend of mine who's who's kind of um, un unlocked himself from uh, from a very sort of far left way of thinking. And I asked him how he did that. And he said um, there were a couple of books that he read. And, and the books really had more to do with how you think, how one thinks, um, and, and how it looks at, at things. And those were the things that completely changed how he looked at everything ever since. So people, you know, just because they are that way for a while, and some people may stay that way, but they may also um, change. And I think, you know, figuring out what tools we can offer for that change. And I keep saying this a lot, but I, I think in, in high schools, for example, I'd really like to see an introduction of um, uh, critical thinking, um, you know, Socrateric kind of... Um, Socratic, thinking. yeah. Socratic, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Socratic. Socrates. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. No, but that, I, that I is the ideal. I out of my mouth, I was like, oh no. Yeah. No, no, Catherine, I agree. That is the ideal, but I want to be a realist when it comes to what exactly, what kind of force we're up against here and make sure, no but mistakes about what it is. Vilify, if we just completely like that person is crazy i think it it takes away the redemption i think people tend to double down right when mm -hmm. when you 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 push them so it's not that you can't call out but i would rather call out the beliefs rather call out rather try to untangle as to why somebody holds that belief rather than just like vilify and in the same way that i try not to vilify people you know on the right automatically either oh no um, I'm, not, I'm not saying vilify at all i'm saying actually the opposite what i think some responsible elites may have been doing uh maybe not but i think it's the opposite where they have been 
ma they've been very complacent and they've been shaking the rattle towards the baby and making the baby think that the baby's really smart. And uh, that's another strategy. No, there, no, Lev, I disagree. There's some true believers. I mean, no, I'm sure. No, no, I'm sure there are. But I'm just mean that there are also people who see the way things are and may try to uh, minimize the damage by, mm -hmm. try, you know, hello fellow kidsifying or whatever you want to call it. The people well, who are on the far left, where they say, like, yes, you absolutely, you're, you're right. You know, like, it's of course, to understand you're so smart. Why these people hold the beliefs that they do, and there's so many different factors there. So I think addressing that, and then second, I actually have come to believe, and I hope my belief is true. My theory is that there's far more actually reasonable people, but they're just keeping silent because they're too afraid. And I'm hoping that that proves to be true, and because then. You know, it's it's the answer becomes more people pushing back and speaking out and, and correcting um, because I think the silence um, has been part of the worst. That's really the worst problem. And I understand where the silence comes from. I don't even judge people for it. But um, but the silence comes from people worried about losing their jobs canceled by their peer group and, and losing their social standing, losing their friends, which has absolutely happened. These are all true, true things. Um, it doesn't tend to happen so much, I think, on, on the right from what I understand, uh, because <laughs> cancellation isn't quite a thing in the same way. But well, we don't have the power to cancel people. That's the problem. Maybe maybe that's also part of it. But like the, this, this culture of fear, that's really, I think, causing the worst because, again, it's shutting down discourse and is shutting down like being able to even ask somebody like why do you hold those beliefs right because that might sound like you're questioning them but really you're trying to understand so i think we need more people to be a little bit more brave and and come forward and just you know when they are seeing something that doesn't make mm. sense just just slightly but but, but oh, that, that, that's the best that's the best we can do what i would yeah. say though is that it's about picking one's battles so a different strategy for different people when you see somebody who may already be such a true believer that maybe if you sit down with them like i always say lock the door and they just sit down with them for hours and hours they might think differently but as far as utilizing one's time wisely i think that cer certain people uh, maybe it does make sense to pander to them and tell them like, oh, yes, you're the greatest, whatever, and then move on from there, leave them alone, and then concentrate on other people who can actually make some changes in terms yeah. of local politics and the court system and all that kind of stuff. Totally, love. I, I completely agree with that. I, I, I think there are some people who may never change or may, you know, may require, like you said, a, a lot, a lot of time. And uh, and I and I definitely do think there are some people who never change. So, yeah, being strategic about it, I think, is, is also important. And, and figuring out how you can reach the most people as well, um, I think, is also, you know, and and but I wouldn't, and, you know, on an individual level, it's important, too, because you see one pe person speak out more openly and honestly somebody else starts to do that and it does have an effect so i think even on an individual level if you don't have access to a big platform or something like that i think people can still make a difference just by being honest themselves and 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 me and um you know showing that modeling that behavior i think that's going to be very impactful well, what has your experience with Clubhouse been so far? And uh, Sonia, supposedly, have you used Clubhouse? And Geo, I've been meaning to get you on Clubhouse, but you're uh, you're resistant. You're resistant. I've used mm. it a couple of times. Um, I'm just not all that interested in listening to people talk, honestly. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, what, what about you, Catherine? You are more uh, you're more interested in uh, the people that you encounter <laughs> in Clubhouse. I mean, is it based yeah. on? The, the kind of people like what were some of your experiences that you would say uh, make Clubhouse an app that Geo should definitely uh, yeah, uh, take advantage I, of? I do really like uh, Clubhouse. It's not perfect. There's definitely a lot of issues around how. Uh, <laughs> But I also, what I did find is it was a, an incredible kind of, I keep calling it a, a thought incubator. So if you bring the right people together. Unlike Instagram, which is a thought incubator. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yeah, yeah I, so, I see I'm rubbing off of terrible. you. That was terrible. I'm rubbing no, off on you, Gio. It's kind of like, because originally the people who joined, there was a lot of people who work in tech, a lot of people in politics, philosophy, like all over the place, right? Artists, everything. And so being able to, um, especially because I've, 
I have my own club, so I curate some experiences where I might pose a particular question or a thought experiment. So it brings people together and they attack it from different ways and points of view. So I found it really great. And I did find a bit of more of a community of, of open minded people. We don't necessarily agree on everything, but where we do agree is the open mindedness and not attacking each other in the common sense. So I really love that part of it. I've also had um, not such a positive experience with <laughs> <laughs> with I, uh, someone on there. Um, so that was unfortunate. Indian Bronson, someone on there? Indian Bronson? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not mean Bronson, but but sure, Bronson too. He better, he better watch his back. Um, what happened? <laughs> with, with Bronson? Or yeah, wait, are him? you just joking or did something actually go down with him? Well, no, Bronson played a little prank on me and I'm going to get him back. It's, it's basically oh, okay. Fun. So kind of all in good fun here. I, I was yeah, like, I haven't heard about this. Fun. Yeah, this one is in good fun. Well, oh, good. For Bronson because it will not end well he, for him. He's a rascal, but I think he's a sweetheart. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I get is... the feeling we definitely disagree on most things, but uh, but he means well, and and I do think he's uh, an intelligent. I'm, I'm gonna. Oh, deny. you're my type, Catherine. I I'm so sick of people who need to agree on everything. Yeah, me too. I I, I <laughs> rather listen to someone making an argument that's like a really good argument that I disagree with, as long as they're oh smart. God, like, I to... <laughs> oh, by the way, look, look, I found it. Thanks, I, did, I didn't save it, but I found it. So this, this is, is my cat, I do. my cat I, milking I wanted, device. I wanted oh, to no. ask. Um, do you see that? Here so, we go. I wanted so to ask Sonia. the milkers are on the cat's breasts. Oh, please, you know, uh, please don't go breasts. over the, No, no, stop. And you have a drone over here, and you have a secondary no. drone that picks up the milk and will carry the milk to the owner while the original drone looks at uh, the uh, the cat uh, going about its uh, its life in the outdoors. And the other thing that this thing does is that, let's say, a cat sees an enemy that wants to subdue. The cat can wrap itself around like a snake with those with those milkers that are attached to it and choke the enemy out. And also, this is a drawing that I did earlier on. Somebody was asking about this. So that, actually, nobody was asking about this except for my subconscious. But this is beating a dead oh. horse. See, oh. this is Mr. Hands. And his hands of Mr. Hands, <laughs> they are uh, held up by like the uh, Dali style, uh, Salvador Dali style crutches over here because they're too big and heavy. And this cat drone, uh, while looking at the audience with a really happy expression, is just bonking this dead horse uh, on the head, just beating this dead horse. And the dead horse also has a child over here, this like little horse, little horse man. And he is very concerned about the two breasts that seem to have self-consciousness uh, that are on the... Uh, you know, this is a marsupial horse, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, because it has a pouch. So I just wanted to share that that lovely image with everybody here. And they have a crazy-looking moon who's screaming out. And, uh, yeah, so back back to your... Here we go. Back, back to my... Is this what gets you off, Lev? This is what you're into? I, I am into life really? and... Uh, I am into uh, going into my subconscious and bringing things out of my subconscious and uh, letting it all rip. You know? Ah, the vitality of it. Yes, you reach into all... your core and you pull out great gobs of vital stuff. Like Exactly. You know, yeah, he'll my, go my core on is to, like uh, my pouch. On stream, he'll have ideas where he'll go on to a tangent <laughs> about either something he dreamt up or something he daydreamed. So this one is where he thinks that uh, in the future, Catmook will be like a health trend. So it's like you have a drone team that's like, you know, it follows the cat around and it's like it delivers it. I'm like, Lev, what are you talking about? Stop it. This isn't. You know... <laughs> Go ahead, you. Uh, no, what were you going to say, Catherine? I, um... I was going to say that when I first, when Lev first invited me onto this stream, he said it was an art stream. And I thought, oh, that's so sweet and pleasant. And I'm just going to watch artists work. I did not realize like all these topics, and I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> well, you know, for for what it's worth, the very first time I ended up on an art stream, Geo was doing a magnificent rendition of the Waco Siege, which was <laughs> pen on ink, I believe, and it yeah. came out like all things considered, you could have zero mm -hmm. reference as to what happened at Waco those days. It was just a gorgeous drawing. And, it, oh. and, and yet it ended up turning into this gauntlet of kind of like Mystery Sense Theater 3000, a beautiful blend of like highbrow and lowbrow and even down yeah. to like LOL doo-doo commentary on things uh, as art is being made. 
Um, I do I have, have a lot of one up, so I don't know. <laughs> I I will say I have a lot of admiration for people who can create art because it's just so. I don't know. I look at it. I'm like, wow, that comes out of your head. Not only can you imagine it, because I can imagine it, but to be able to translate it, I don't know. I mean, there is something really special about that. And especially if someone has their own unique voice. And I think also the skill, like I really admire the skill and the time that I mean, look, Lev has been working on this project for two years now. No, not two years. What are you talking about? Two years? <laughs> oh, oh, the drop. No. No, well, BTR, it's good. Well, listen, uh, yeah. that means I might have a shot with Catherine, whereas uh, my good friend, Default Friend, says she uh, hates artistic types and <laughs> looks down upon them. So I may, so I may She's taken. have to go. Yeah, that I know. That's another, yeah, another hurdle. But Catherine here is single, unfortunately. So I may have to take a trip to uh, uh, Vancouver. And, uh, yeah, you, don't you, know that you can go internally that. inside of Canada, right? You can go like east and west No, actually Canada. you can't yeah. right now. That's no. not, not even east Ontario. and west? What is no, going on no. with you people? No, they, What is wrong with you people? Yeah, you people? What do you mean by you people? <laughs> The uh, leaves. You mean that's what I mean. Yeah, the day of the rake. Listen, day listen of the, rake the day of the rake, rake cannot soon. come soon enough. Not yet. Yeah, I wanted enough. to talk to Sonia about um. Uh, oh my God! I just my, wanted to talk to Sonia. And, and yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> my brain is fried. Um, uh, I wanted to talk to you about um, about you. You were part of the um. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you part of the like wave of like rationalist uh, e girls that are going around and uh, or post rad or I don't know what would you describe yourself? Uh, were uh, you part of the uh, big yud contingent or? I mean, I I could I could deny it, but it would be based on like internecine like micro scene schisms that really don't <laughs> matter. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a rationalist e-girl. God, kill me now. Um, oh, God. I'm not really a rationalist anymore. It's funny. I, like, only, I don't know. It's the, it's really, it's a social scene, you know? It's a social yeah, scene even yeah. more than it is a philosophy. And I've always really been more into the social, like, I don't know. I, like, Slate Star's Codex was a really big influence on me. Yeah. I've read some of the sequences, definitely not all of them. Um... But mostly, I'm there for the people, uh, and like the ideas. The ideas were very useful to me um, when I first, you know, when I first kind of bumped into them and started, you know, devouring all the the backlog of content. Oh, yeah. But I've kind of, you know, like I've grown up a little bit, I guess. So <laughs> it's not it's not like my be all end all anymore. It's not um, your edgy but... phase anymore. <laughs> oh it, no, my similar? edgy phase. Don't don't say it. My edgy phase is never ending. I'm an edge lord for life, but yeah. um, <laughs> I've just moved on to you know. She's, I've she's... used on. I've moved on to better frontiers to, of edge lordism. Um, you know, I feel like less wrong is pretty normy tier edge lordism, right? You know, I got to get oh, yeah. a little more sophisticated than that. Um, Sonia will become <laughs> Sonia will become an ascended uh, edge mancer. And eventually yeah. start wielding, like, you know, uh, edginess, you know, like more fantastic than theoretical well, geometry. She, coming at you. Oh, picture, picture the gnome bunny, but with like a double headed mace. <laughs> that's that's the energy I'm trying to have. <laughs> well, then she would have jumped off to an NRX if she wanted to be a total like rationalist edge lord. But that, uh, I, am, I mean, philosophically, I am more NRX, but um, yeah. <laughs> I just, I mean, I don't. I, oh, I care about things that actually affect my life, um, and uh, most like internet philosophy, like internet meme political philosophy, is like entertaining. Uh, I guess I like I think probably my favorite is Nick Land, but even then I haven't read like Fang Nomina or Numina, mm. however you pronounce it. Um, I haven't read most of this. Like I I haven't read any Mold Bug because like I really like I like Curtis as a person, but mm. like. God damn, motherfucker, you need an editor. And that is true of almost every, like, I think Sleep Star Codex is the only one whose wordiness I'm willing to indulge. And even, not anymore, honestly. Like, it's, 
I, well, I'm, I'm I'm sure, I, I, out of curiosity, yeah. what do you think of Alexander's uh, critique of uh, like reactionary uh, thought and mold bug and all that? Because actually, I thought it, some of it made sense when he was talking no, about it, it how actually you can't. Uh, I right. think every every system contains its own contradictions, and some of them just uh, like shake apart faster than others. Um, like I think uh, like a communism, whether it's like real true communism or not, you know, attempts to implement communism seem to have like, they'll cycle through in a couple of decades. Uh, representative democracy or like whatever, you know, attempts to re-LARP Rome seem to last a few centuries. You know, the jury's still kind of out on that. Monarchies, very high variance. It can go either way. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think every political system has its pros and cons, has its own dynamics. Uh, I also think that my opinion about it, it just like really doesn't matter, you know, like it's just, I, it's, no, I, I, all I wouldn't, of this I is, say all that. Of this is I, just I, entertainment, I, I, you know, it's just entertainment. Okay. I think politics no, I, I could, become, I could say that. It's an, you know, um, Gio, I just yeah. wanted to say, I was watching, because somebody had asked me to, if I was a rationalist, uh, and I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, well, I guess I try to, I may not feel like I am, but I try to live my life as if I am. But then I was listening to a podcast recently with Stephen Fry, and he said he was like more of an imperial, um, imper uh, empiricist. 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 Imperialist. Imperialist. That's what he really yeah, he's a, he's a uh, liberal world order imperialist. That is. I, I really love Stephen Fry. Anyways, um, I thought he gave a very good argument. Where I don't know, like. I oh, by the way, your 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 sounds weird again, Catherine. Uh, I don't know. I can't do anything about it. But but basically, you know, you can be one way, or you, you don't have to be one way or the other. I can see where you you might try to stir to rationalism, but he also gave examples of if you see enough things in the world and that, that you know, for example, you take a particular, um, I don't know, plant medication and people have this particular experience with it consistently, um, you can also um, shape your world. I don't know, I, I, I was kind of sold by his argument. A bit of I, I think that's the problem. I think is like a lot of um, we talked about this with the credentialist actually, it came up a lot of like the post rationalist people they um realized the limitations of this, like, frankly, you know, autistic worldview. <laughs> um, but they want to like recapitulate a lot of the quote unquote useful things of like other um systems of belief and political arrangements. But doing it in such a like gamified secular sort of way to me is just like not feasible because you're not going to um, recapitulate those values that made those systems of the past viable uh, or whatever close to like Lindy or viable that is. So I don't know. I'm kind of crossed. Um, obviously, but isn't like, that the argument that they make? like romanticist in some ways, but at the same time, romanticism is another like brain worm mm. trap. That, no, but, from, but from what I got, Gio, the argument that uh, the uh, Star Slater Codex guy made had to do with uh, the fact that we can't, like whatever system we would want to implement right here, right now, we're still working under the modern paradigm of everybody being inter in interconnected. So unless a meteor strikes us and we start over again under this paradigm, we can try to artificially implement different systems, but eventually they're going to coalesce back into the system uh, pretty much close to what we have right now. I mean, would you disagree with that? that was kind of like his his overall view from what I got. Like, even if you wanted to implement, like, the uh, good old tra tra based and trad-pilled ways, you wouldn't be able to do it at all. It just wouldn't succeed. It, it would just go back to whatever we have right now. I don't know. That's That's a very, like, deterministic... Like, that's like a liberal, like, Whig historicism that I think, like, it's not, um, we can't envision any other system because of the various, like, predicates of which the system is propped up on. It's very difficult for, like, to go to people and say, can you imagine, like, a post-liberal future? Because it's very, like, tricky to, like, convince people of the assumption that history itself is not, like, something that has various, like, different 
harmonies and, and circular sort of No, but we are living at an unprecedented time in terms of the actual connection apparatuses, be they airplanes, in terms of, cars, yeah, in terms trains, of like pure internet. Tech-A, obviously, but then yeah, that's not... Yeah, but that, that's pretty much his point. I say that's the most important point. Everything else you can throw in the trash. That point, like, I still haven't heard a good counter-argument to that, because, like, whatever system you would want to have implemented, all these things having to do with travel, phone, internet, connection they are going to play way bigger of a role in determining the system, I think, than anybody's smart-ass idea of how things should be run. For better or worse. I think that's we're seeing that play out now, where, like, sort of neoliberal managerialism is has reached its limits um, in terms of uh, how much it can change people's, I don't know, behavioral paradigm or something. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think we're going to eat the bugs. Um, it is weird that they want to see the bugs, but I don't think it's well, going to work. Well, you're a rabbit. You're a rabbit. You know, that doesn't count. Um, I think do rabbits, rabbits do bugs? sometimes. I they think do they sometimes. do sometimes eat insects, but it's not like habitual, if I remember correctly. I don't know. I'll have to look that up, I guess. Flipping yeah. on my on my species knowledge. Ooh. Yeah. Got to got to get what? my calipers to, you know, measure the ears and everything. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> By the way, what's that picture behind you? That swirling-looking orange something. What, what is that? Oh, that's like a feminist poster that my step grandma gave me a while back. I just think it's pretty. Mm. Well, speaking of feminists, uh, you should come on the stream when we have Nina Paley back on. Do you know Nina Paley's work? Uh, why does that ring? Oh, is she she's the one who works with Justin Murphy. No, 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 no. Nina Paley. She may have... she, no, 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 never. No, no, she that's is Nina a... Power. That's Nina Power. Yeah, Nina Power. No, Nina Paley, she is an animator. She created Cita Sings the Blues. She created uh, her latest one is called Seder Masochism. And uh, she's just a genius animator, beautiful work. And I'd say she is kind of like a turf type uh, feminist. Would that be the right way of uh, saying Well, they called her a turf, but that was like yeah. the label placed upon yeah. her. Oh, is she not the type of turf who wants to be called a turf? She wants to be called, like, gender critical or whatever? Oh, good call. Good call. Uh, uh, Two two quick things I want to bring up uh, before I forget. One, I like how this was slowly turning into the Bronson stream and where, like, Bimbo Ubermensch's drawing had, uh, uh, it was referred to as uh, Charlie Bronson, the, uh, the British prisoner. It was referred mm. to similar to his drawings, and then Indian Bronson sort of pulling shenanigans on the internet, and then like, what's next? Actual Charlie Bronson's gonna show up? Like, this summer, on an art stream, Charles Bronson in Death Wish 9. Like, Death, w- Death Wish 19, yeah. That would be... <laughs> oh boy. So, um... so I, I'm, I'm glad that this, this is a pro-Bronson stream. Uh, but, uh, Absolutely. But, but, well, there, but... there's two Charles Bronsons. <laughs> there's the prisoner... So. No, there's the prisoner no, and there's the uh, the actor. Yeah, well, one one person is okay, not uh, pro uh, 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 Bronson. Uh, uh, not a fan. This is a not anti uh, uh, Bronson stream. How about that? Yeah. Um, but no. But what I about Bron daughter? <laughs> I think it's funny though. Cancel uh, Bronson. Cancel Bronson. <laughs> uh, he's already been canceled six six ways this summer. I mean, it, um, it would help if it wasn't his real like Indian Bronson, not his real name. Can't get canceled. I think, well, even, like, anonymity is something that's really strange. Like, I mean, that's, I I don't know, like, the future doesn't look, I I personally think that eventually everyone's going to get doxxed and there's going to be, maybe if they want their their will, they'll they'll impose some form of, like, internet registry uh, that'll go through um, some kind of global organization. But to Sonia's point, though, I think that people may... Unless this was not your point, I think people may start having enough of this crap at a certain point. I don't know, Sonia, I mean, what maybe. do you think? Uh, I, I think there are limits to the ability to engineer desired outcomes. I do not think that there are limits to the ability to try to engineer desired mm. outcomes. Yeah, um, yes. Well, so a, like, <laughs> that's, kind of, good, uh... that's kind of like the classic communist failure where they're like, oh, guys, why don't we just do Utopia? Duh. And then they, you know, try to do Utopia, and that shit doesn't work. Um, (laughs) But that doesn't stop them from continuing to try, you know, so. They did Utopia worse than Matt Forney did the Philippines. Oh, God. What? (laughs) 
That was way that, too. I yeah. have no idea what that was referencing. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about there, it. Oh there's my really God. two opinions. That was um, another thing I wanted to talk about. Speaking of that point, but go ahead, Catherine. Um, well, I was just going to say there's two opinions that either it's going to have to get so bad that eventually there's no no other option but to kind of fight back. Um, or, you know, maybe people have had enough and we are starting to really cri reach that critical yeah. time. And I'm really hoping it's not, it's the latter, not the former, but people definitely have two yeah. diverging views. Well, for, for New York, it may be the, uh, it, it may be the worst outcome temporarily, but like I said on the Prudentialist stream, New York's got to get a big old slap in the face and learn its lesson. All right, we've had enough of this. Oh, yeah. But, um, um, uh, you know, uh, really quickly, in regards to New York, like, uh, Lev and I can attest, I live in Queens. Lev's out in the city. Well, I mean, Queens is technically this. Well, the five boroughs are the city. No one's counting. The yeah. point is, well, um, yeah. like, uh, no matter what your politics are here in New York City, everyone can all agree that, like, the Blasio was the worst thing in the history of anything ever. And, uh, mm. and, and, what's, and what's bewildering is how, like, a uh, bunch of old people died in hospitals and no one said a word, all right? And then Mr. Double Nipple Ring, uh, uh, Governor Cuomo, uh, he, he's got, he, he, he pulls an Aziz Ansari and suddenly he's lawyering up. Everyone, like, just, it's, it's such a, it's that such a That was a, a weaponized canceling if I've it's ever such seen a, it. I mean, like, it was, I mean, it's not like he was a, okay, like, if he was some hero and that happened, it would be tragic, but he was scum. And then yeah. it happened, and it's like, all right, like some other enemy napalm you in your sleep. Okay, I just. I, I think okay. no, but I think that's the same thing where, um, the way that they get rid of quote unquote problems is that, to acknowledge the actual horror of killing all of those people, through government mismanagement is is terribly detrimental, but to actually like cancel um, to cancel um, what's his name Fredo um, Fredo. For being a pervert, I mean, like for being kind of like I don't know if he's like well, a no, sex no, Fredo, pest or Fredo whatever. was his brother. Fredo oh was yeah, his brother. yeah, but no, for being like kind of creepy and a sex pest or whatever. But it's like that is like the lesser degree of like um, we have to get rid of a problem, which is really funny how that works out. Um, but no, what I was gonna say, you mentioned Matt Forney. Um, More like Matt Horney. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I I think like. Uh, I wanted to get Sonia's take on this. Uh, I wanted, well, we talked a little bit about with Bimbo Ubermensch, but uh, last week I, I I got into some trouble. Um, a lot of people, uh, I don't know, a lot of people aren't ready to hear the truth. Um, <laughs> Were you naughty? <laughs> yeah, I was very naughty. Um, I, I think like, well, my point, okay, I, I had this thread where I said that, um, like we're in a situation in the online right where like all the trad thoughts are gone. Um, all of the like usual suspects, they've sort of, you know, took the sim bus and ran. Now we have um, a greater degree of uh, female posters who are actually producing content and who are actually gaining a following. Um, and it's really weird how the dynamic inherently changes for good or for worse. But I think that, inevitably that's going to happen uh there's almost like something within you know and i'm not immune from this obviously uh but there's something within like the reactionary mindset that's always going to be um there's always going to be like this unconscious return to a chthonic force a mother if you will and so maybe because i use the term matriarchy that probably pissed a lot of people off um but no, I, I feel like it's just a natural observation that as more women enter predominantly male spaces that the dynamic inevitably is going to change. But then people were like, no, Geo, like there's just certain, there's certain few people and it's like you follow all of them and that's why your fucking TL is being polluted with uh, the evil, terrible holes. My TL is being polluted with all of them. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um and that could be true. I do tend to follow uh, mm. a number of uh, very good uh, female posters. Um, but but you know what? Oh, you, you I I agree with you that um, the gender dynamic changes the entire social dynamic. Um, do you notice this as well, or or am I just making this up? Like I don't know. Maybe it's my. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I have a different perspective because I I don't have the when it was an all male space perspective for like mm. obvious reasons. Um, yeah being that I'm not male. Um, 
but I just as like a sort of general observation, I do. I think that men and women can be friends, but I don't think, you know, I'm not I'm not a like any. Uh, but but I, I, I think men and women can be friends, but I don't think that they can have the same kinds of friendships that women can have with women and that men can men have with men. Yeah, um, and I think that they're uh, I think men need each other. Men need all male like men need a sort of unadulterated male camaraderie. They need bonding. They need uh, like trials. Um, so, so yeah, you would be against the uh, Boy Scouts incorporating girls in. Uh, so like, yeah, I think I think men need men and boys also need their own spaces. Um, and uh, where am I going with this? Why why am I talking about this in the first well, place I again? Think, we... Yeah, well, no, because I think Le that, um... Lev is going to start making the argument. Well, how, how can you? before uh, girls join in the Boy Scouts, but then when boys join the Girl Scouts, everyone loses their damn mind. <laughs> That's the world we live in. <laughs> I, know, I, love I, think, I feel like I feel like all of this should be handled on a case by case basis and like yeah, the abstractions probably. the abstractions built up around these things are just used as like cudgels to bludgeon people into behaving the mm. ways that we want them to behave. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't like think it's going to change. I think it's <laughs> that that will continue happening. Um, but Although maybe it does... they'll get tired of it. Could they get tired of it potentially? Where once you give somebody the freedom to do something, at a certain point, since it doesn't become forbidden anymore, there's no forbidden fruit aspect. Then people will kind mm. of, you know, get tired of the office. Women would get tired of certain office jobs that have been kind of put on them by advertising and say, you know what, maybe I'd actually just prefer to stay home knowing that there's no nothing keeping them away. There's yeah, but, no force preventing well, them there, from taking the job. There are yeah. natural cycles of fashion and ebb and flow and fluctuation and opinion that just, you know, sort of, that just is naturally always happening. It's always in flux. You get the like, you know, because to signal, you need to differentiate yourself from other people. So there's this constant turnover. Um, but I don't think... I mean, nor normies are always going to be normies. So I guess it's like yeah, anything that's predicated yeah. on like normal people waking up that it that is never going to happen. Um, there, a small percentage of people will wake up accord and like according to any paradigm, right? It could be, mm. uh, you know, a, a small. It's just the nature of the fringe is that the fringe is the fringe, right? That's just how it is. Um, and and there's the sort of there's the comparative thing, the like. Uh, you know, say even if you um, if you increase every if you like double everybody's wealth, you still have the exact same poverty dynamics because it's relative, not uh, absolute. Um, but so I mean, all males. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I think, you know, start a men's group or whatever. Okay, so to, to join join a soccer team, I guess. But but what? But Freemasons. What? That's but in this context, I feel like. It's, it's different because we're talking about, um, like, if you follow the progression from, like, I don't know, what would you say, like, 2015 Frog Twitter till now, it's like, I get their fears, obviously, because when women do enter these spaces, it's like, there's been very, like, terrible experiences. Either they, um, like, degrade themselves by playing up to, like, some very, very niche male gaze so like the trad thought is like a perfect example um or like even like just generally um the discourse around like uh just like women in general and like sort of predominantly right-wing circles either they're feds or infiltrators or they're just grifting or whatnot right like now we have a dynamic where it's really interesting because i guess the left doesn't want them um we have like legitimate radical feminists engaging with like right-wing frog twitter shit posters which is like to me it signals a deeper sort of shift in the way things are heading and and there's always going to be growing pains um so not i'm not not like saying you know like i'm immune like i'm the base trad reactionary because i do my fair share of uh simping or whatnot especially on the stream um but i do <laughs> but I, my my point of the thread wasn't to simp i think like it's just true that you're going to have to like inevitably deal with the fact that women have been fucked over just as hard by modernity. And some of them that are aware of like what's going on 
uh, it's best to like abandon, not abandon totally, but like to taper off at least some of the suspicion people have by like immediately accusing them of being like feds or trad thoughts or like trying to subvert mm. the whatever right well, I don't women know. have been it's... women have been fucked over by modernity but also by the past and it's a matter i think of getting no but it's a, a different they're not fucked up by like, either one but it's a I've different thing a now i don't know i've got a question um because i'm uh perhaps a simp i don't know what a simp is but um so can you define the words um oh, fed God. and i guess simp for me how could you define sit <laughs> A uh, simp is like a very enthusiastic fan, but it has a sexual connotation yeah. and a okay, uh, financial works. support connotation. <laughs> so, like it's a not dude, a pig connotation. Yeah, th think think of it like an orbiter with money. Okay, so I'm not a, a money mark. What about Fed? Fed. Fed is just like federal agent, you know, paid by the government. Okay, so legit. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. So I thought I'd clarify. But why would it fit? Did you, did you think it was ridiculously self important to be insinuating? Because you're right, it is. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I say fun. this as someone who generally endorses self importance. Also, it's actually true. Um, there are plenty of feds. Yeah, there are. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but but I think like some why of the are feds, the feds? Wait, wait. Why are the feds? Some of them are obvious. obvious. Why do they want to join these? Like okay, like, okay. Uh, Catherine, once upon a time, the FBI because they have they've been keeping an eye on dissidents anything ever, and even if they catch a whiff of dissidents, uh, they 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 lose their fucking mind. So once upon a time in the early two thousands, the Rage Against the Machine message board was infiltrated by a fed and he was like hey let's go plan this he eventually nestled his way into the forums that were private and moderated and yada 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 so now they're going to plan some direct action and he's like yeah let's do this guys and then the forum shut down <laughs> so like they, they've been doing things on smaller yeah, scales but don't for the longest the time <laughs> they don't understand okay but I, 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 does anyone remember the name been, of the a chick who did the swastika cupcakes. Uh, I think I remember who you're referring to. Um, Wait, Emily Yukas? <laughs> was it Emily Yukas? Maybe I, it could have been. I don't know. I don't know. No. So that, it so was one of these trad LARP. It's like, I don't know. I yeah. tend to think like one of the, a lot of these um, like trad women accounts, like that Sophie Pelletay, like a lot of them probably are dudes. I don't know. It's weird. It's got a weird thing to it. It's fun, 100%. Fun fact. Fun fact. Uh, one time on Twitter, this was uh, earlier this year, someone had fed posted with their gun. And uh, uh, someone pointed out, like, in the reflection of the mirror, and it was like, that's your ATF badge, dude. Come on. This tweet was deleted. <laughs> this count no longer exists. Like, sometimes it's, like, really, like, you know, slick and long-term, like, you know, agent provocateur shit. And sometimes it's like, oh, dude, you're terrible at this. Go back to your desk. Everybody yeah, fucks up their OPSEC <laughs> at some point. Yeah, a lot of feds are pretty obvious. That's true. But I think, like, see, fed, okay. <laughs> hey, kids, just... you want to do some eco-terrorism? <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids, want to riot on camera? Hey, um, it's time, so it's time for one of my favorite hey, emojis. Hey, kids, want to buy some fertilizer and diesel fuel? No. <laughs> yeah, by, the, by the way, you, guys, guys, I put... What did you say, Catherine? Said... Oh, I was just trying to trap Geo. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I posted over here. This is one of my favorite emojis of all time on our Discord server. For those who are not in the Discord yet, go to the BTR Discord. I'm going to provide the link. But this cat, do you guys recognize where this cat is from? The sassy cat? No. No. Why do, it does look familiar, but I can't place I've seen so many cats on the internet. How am I supposed to know which one so, it is? Oh, okay, so isn't this, that from... Uh... Go ahead, love. Go ahead. Love. So there was a 4chan post where uh, I think they got into some kind of an um, CIA uh, like hidden database or whatever, where they had all these various uh, memes that they shared amongst themselves, and some of them were furries. And uh, this was one of the memes that was there. It was just like a sassy cat. I mean, I added the glowing paint job to the cat, but uh, for the for the emoji. But this was just like one of the images that they had there. And ever since then, when people were talking about Fed related things, they posted the image of the sassy cat, and people knew exactly the what they were talking about. The best one Aww. was um... <laughs> the it's best, cute, right? What was it last week where we were on the uh, 
Sorry to interrupt you, Gio. I'm, I'm, I need to jump off, but thanks oh, for okay. hanging out. Yeah. Catherine, we'll thank you, you so much for being here. I look what forward to having you on again. Thank you so much, Catherine, and I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk to you next week. Yeah, talk to you on this. Monday. <laughs> talk to you on Monday. <laughs> yes. All right, and guys, please subscribe for all the people who are watching this and have not subscribed yet. Geo, I promise I'm not going to do this to the other people's podcasts, just these ones. So subscribe, everybody, and sneed those oh. super chats. Yes, but, uh, I got. No, last week uh, I think love, it was Buff in the church. chat. Yes. Who said, um, like, uh, you're going off about something, uh, classic liberal, whatever. And then they, they were in uh, buff was like, Lev, turn off your lights in your room. I have to check something. <laughs> Get it? Yes. Meaning you're glow in the dark. Um, yeah. Yes. So, um, no, no is, I think like so Fed is just a general term now for like a suspicious infiltrator that's trying to, I don't know. That, oh that, yeah. It's definitely, yeah. it's become almost like a term of endearment even. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I do have a shirt that says not a fed, which is the most fed shirt ever to wear. So it's really fun. <laughs> that, that's amazing. <laughs> Hello fellow kids. Well, Charlie it's from, Tom. go on. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say it's my, my buddies who do, uh, trying to remember what their co podcast is currently called. Oh, the gaslight hour podcast um mm. one of the guys one of the hosts made that shirt so that's why i thought of it nice i'm gonna check that out the gaslight hour and our friend Charlie yeah. Tom, who was here earlier he is right now uh recording an episode of, of the uh, fed post so i'm excited to check that one out and we are going to have the fed post uh on well black pill we're going to have him uh on uh very very soon and also we are going to have Brittany venti on uh Whoa. this thursday so i'm very excited about that oh, that's going to be a very a very fun stream hopefully that'll give us a lot of super chats love i mean that's i mean i'm sure some of her is this like people. is this an only fans check or something no 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 Br uh Brittany venti is no, th one of the most popular uh streamer um well, she does other things, but she used to be like a Twitch streamer until she got banned from there. And, and but, she uh, also did the "He will not divide us" thing. She also did the "He he he will not divide us." Do you remember that whole? Uh, oh yeah, she oh. was the same yeah. height in that one. Yeah, that was great. Rest um, in peace, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> oh, what's he doing now? By the way, what happened with? Uh, Beats me, man. Yeah, I mean, is is uh, Luke Turner still trying to grift off of him? Maybe I don't know. That's. Um, why is that? I want to talk about meta modernism. Um, yeah. Well, guys, I think we I, may be uh, drawing to a close here. Before that, cause... I want to ask. Oh, yes. I want to ask Sonia about her collage art. What, what is? Oh your, yes. Uh, you do oh. these, like you do these handmade journals. If I yeah, uh, yeah. Um, can, can we see some of them? What do I have that would be good to show you? Well, here. this is all okay. I'll show you this. This is all, all works right. in progress. Um, oh. Wow. So, By the way, Gio, no talking or else the camera's going to switch to you instead of Sonia. So Sonia, say something so that the camera goes back uh, to you. So these are bookmarks that I'm working on. Right now I'm just doing the background still. Um, so just, ah, they're too, I can't hold all these bookmarks. Um, so oh, that reminds me, me of that me meme, I can't hold me all these one. limes. Do you remember yeah. that one? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Uh, so like here, I'm just picking a few of them to show you guys. Um, so these are, you know, just like scraps right now. Um, and I'm going to do a layer of paint over this. That's probably what I'm going to do next. Um, yeah, so these are just like bits and pieces of, you know, old. I, I have a ton of books and stuff that I've ripped apart um, or like stuff that I've printed out. Uh, yeah. Oh, these are glittery i like glitter um nice so yeah this is for i'm working on i do monthly happy mail it's kind of i mean it's similar to a patreon deal but i don't use patreon <laughs> specifically <clears throat> um but basically you some you can subscribe on my website i too am a grifter you know the the way that we all follow oh, um yeah. And uh, I, yeah, I send snail mail every month, which is, it's really fun. I, I really like making physical items. Um, I think especially those of us who are very online as, gosh, I wish we had come up with a better term for ourselves, but I don't have one. <laughs> um, or the like, I don't know, post NRX, post rationalist, well, post- Well, is your link, by the way, post is Sonia- Post left diaspora. 
Yeah, sorry. Is it where, Sonia what, what supposedly dot com? Is it Sonia supposedly dot com slash membership? Is that where the good people who are watching this right now? I'm talking to you. That means you. Is that where they are supposed to go? Yes. To, uh, and yeah? while you're at it, subscribe. You should subscribe to this YouTube channel and oh, like thank and you. Uh, leave a comment so the algorithm uh, thinks good things about love. You know, gotta gotta please the YouTube overlords so there that we can yes. continue and, and the bell. entertaining and the bell. you. Find people. Way, oh yeah, and the bell a, also. Does anyone actually do that? Owl. I feel yes, like I would kill myself owl. if YouTube <laughs> sent me notifications. That is a cool. Nice. Yeah, Are you gonna put that original, up? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that up later. But I just wanted to share. Wait, this you took that photo? No, not me. A friend of mine gave it to me, and uh, my the friend who gave it to me, she's launching a satellite. And she asked me, where do you want me to, like, look in the satellite? And I said, Antarctica. Area 51. Oh, Antarctica. Antarctica, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we're hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to see that hole. And we're you should fig- stream it. Yeah, we're well. Is that what you're going to do? You're going to show the footage? No, I don't think they have the technology yet to be able to stream. I'm sure they do, but they're not going to give it to them. Are we going to uh, find you know. the hole, uh, the, the entrance into Agartha in the Antarctica? That's what yes. we're going to do. Oh, um, exactly. Uh, just uh, w- one quick, very uh, one quick thing. Would you be opposed, Sonia, to why can't I hold all these bookmarks? Would you be opposed to a still frame of that? <laughs> no, go for it. Feel free. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> By the way, and Steve you, Haynes, I, your tweet games have have been, like your tweets have been phenomenal lately. I gotta. Yeah. Uh, like it has been. Oh my god. Oh, I appreciate. I'll just scroll. Th- I'll just scroll through your TL, and it's like. Wait. Dang. So your handle. Sorry, I'm not familiar with you. Stained, stained Haynes. Odd moniker to refer to someone with. Are you? Is Haynes better than stained? That feels like a more normal thing to call someone. You could call me Susan if you'd like. Nothing's stopping you. Uh, but my ass- sometimes, sometimes sweet Susan. I did not know that Susan was your preference, but uh, I'm happy. To accommodate, you know. Uh, I'm. I, well, I appreciate that. Uh, you can find my uncultured ass on Twitter on at seven one eight TV. And um, what's the what is seven one eight for? Is that like a zip code? Yeah, area, uh, it, yeah. It's an area code. Area code. Uh, oh yeah, uh, sorry, that's what I meant. It, 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 it's the area code for uh, for Brooklyn, Queens, uh, Staten Island, and the Bronx, which is uh, not what most people think of when they think of New York City. Uh, Damn, the most overrepresented ethnicity online is fucking New Yorker. Yeah, Can't get away from you people. <laughs> it's well, telling me no, something. No, 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 on no, no. BTR, it's Canadian, honestly. We all, have the people, well, all the people I've ever like talked to on the air, they've all like so, either come okay, from okay. or... No, I love New York. York. I also, I come from the Bay Area, so I am one to talk on that. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, 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 Sonia... Like I'm only I, like six you, hours away. That's like Niagara Falls from, to New York City. You, That's like, you, what, you, six hours? Mm-hmm. You have uh, six hours, maybe, maybe seven. Yeah, uh, you, damn. You, you've, well, you've not had... that I can go because of my. Well, I'm not going to Fed post, but you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> Rob Ford. Uh, 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 no, so, sorry, so... Doug Ford. How dare I say that? Because Rob <laughs> Ford would have never thought this over like this. The, Rob the... Ford would have been a king of the free state of Ontario, not yeah. as oh, stupid. Oh, do you remember... Do you remember when Mike brother. Tyson? Do you remember when Mike Tyson went to Canada for the interview, oh, talking yeah. about meeting with Rob Ford, and that yeah. dude who was interviewing him like called him a rapist on uh, on the air, and then Mike just got fucking oh, you know, oh that was fucking, amazing, uh, yeah. That just was great. just just real quickly, uh, so so Sonia, if you're from the Bay Area, you've had a you too have had a front row seat to the gentrification that hit breakneck hyperspeed that I've always felt was ugly by design. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. Now, now the thing that irks me uh, uh, is that uh, why can't people go heart some other city? They come here, they're here for less than two years, and then they say they're from here. This is one of the few. <laughs> like, and you know what? Those are okay. People, people you run into on the internet who are just fucking shitty. There's a chance they're a non yorker All right. I, they got nothing to do with me or any of the other uh, Queens trash that I could speak of or know of. All right. So they ain't like, from around here. <laughs> they no, they ain't. They ain't Geo. Like they're, they're, they're uh, Puerto Stunad. Go back to where you came from. <laughs> like, come on. So 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 so. Let it... Yeah, no, I, I feel you. There's definitely uh, the sorry to move. I mean, class is always the the like underrecognized element, right? It's the thing that right. kind of often is ignored because 
if you pay attention to class, you might have to do something that actually costs money, and nobody wants to do that. <laughs> right, yeah, right. No, but 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 what but but the strange part about gentrification here in New York City, at least, is how like all right, like when you think of uh, diversity in Brooklyn, it's like five white people and a mixed race person in a coffee house, and Queens diversity is like. I got off the seven train. I ended up in little Bangladesh. I got cursed and cat called in Spanish. None of the off the boat Asian people look me in yes. the eye. So like, and there's, and there's female beggars. Like right. when is the last time you saw female beggars? Oh my female God. Beggars so, so, in Jackson Heights. Right. So, so Lev, what is it about Queens that has allowed this borough to sort of, yes, gentrification happened, but it's still like every single corner of every country on the, that's represented here in Queens they held on to their thing, and it's still well, the same thing with the Jews and the Muslims. Well, same thing with the Jews and the Muslims in parts of like southern Brooklyn, uh, where my uh, where my family lives. Because there, like I said before, you can go around like these Jewish neighborhoods, and then right next door you have the Muslim neighborhoods. And it's always like every part of the world, it's like the Jews and the Muslims, like they don't like each other yet they live right next to each other. It's it's very. I feel very like every stream we have to talk about New York at some point. It's really grating <laughs> for people who are not from New York. Well, oh, they should come here. They should come here and culturally enrich New York. That's what I think. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, New York really is the greatest city in the world, though. So, like, there is... Oh, my. It does, it does deserve the attention it gets. I'll, I'll yeah, but again, that. I think it'd be pretty cool big... to go there. I mean, I'd, I always no, said I'd Gio, rather Gio, die people than are being... in Toronto. But that's, Gio, people you know... are being stabbed in Manhattan right now. Let's let's wait a little bit. or let's Dude, go there little... is nowhere cool in the world that people don't get stabbed. If people don't get stabbed, okay. that pairs uh, No, listen, listen, listen. Like, this is a very good uh... point. Because for the first time in years, I was uh, putting up flyers in Manhattan. And I remember the sun was going down. And uh, I, I remember, like, a, a part of me was like, uh, just... Is anyone behind you? And I looked over both shoulders, and I was like, "Oh, I haven't felt threatened walking around like when it's getting dark. Nature is healing, like because there has been this pricing exodus in cities all across America over the past few years. People have been trickling out of cities little by little because, like, you can't keep up with the costs. Part of it is gentrification. Even there's even high end urban blight in hyper gentrified places. You know." Like we're just they, we're kind of replaying the like seventies to eighties to nineties yeah. era, right? Brutal. So so, so yeah, now man. so hell, uh, Rick Moranis got fucking uh, jacked for his cell phone like uh, 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 like two three months ago. Mm -hmm. No one is safe. Like it, it, this is like in fact like the, the Greyhound bus station has now turned into like a open air PVP twenty four seven server of like just homeless <laughs> and junky people because like <laughs> it, it, you know and I hate oh. to be mean I hate to be mean but like listen the the Skid Row it's true we're, we're years away from the, the Skid Row Thunderdome. But if anywhere, if, if there's going to be anything like that, what was that movie? Going to be in the Greyhound. Escape Escape from New York. Escape from New York. No, Escape from Iconic New York. Iconic movie. Must watch. <laughs> no, yeah. Escape from New York. I, lo I love those one, chandeliers um, on the car. Do you remember the there, chandeliers? There was the on one the cyberpunk. Oh, yeah, in the limo. In the limo, yeah. No, but there was the one cyberpunk one with uh, where um, Ice T led the gang uh, with Keanu Reeves. What was it called? Johnny um, Mnemonic. John Mnemonic. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Where oh my gosh, that's like, a deep cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be like that. Where like there will be like dead zones in New York. Well, the of, police like, are also the... kind of disarmed right now in New York, like because of BLM and things like that. Like the police are just you know what, fuck it. I'm not. I'm not gonna do shit. You just uh, you do you. New York, you do you. And I, I think, think that'll that, be like yeah. that. Every like even Toronto is getting pretty bad. No, it's like, it's yeah. always like that. Like yeah. every ghetto, every ghetto is like that. Uh, yeah, you know, but then like, it stops I, being like that. But then it gets Julianified, and it stops being uh, like yeah. that although, when, although, they bring, when they bring the guns in. Although it should be noted that even in Queens, like even in, in where I live, there's been a growing homeless population that I haven't seen since the since the yeah. global economy first shit the bed. In well, we can we can thank Nixon like two, for this. And, uh, we can thank Nixon for getting rid of the uh, the madhouses. Oh, that was Reagan. That was Reagan. Oh, Reagan. Sorry. Yeah, Reagan. Yeah. Although, yeah. although, although you could you could blame you could blame Nixon for getting the dollar off the gold standard and turning it into sure. fiat yeah, speculative currency, to, uh, and 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 yeah. him being a, a secret cinephile, like you know. No, I there's can... plenty of blame to go around. And by the way, speaking of that, we are definitely. I got uh, confirmed, uh, not with uh, Mark Terrell, but uh, with uh, the other guest that we had. 
that we are definitely going to have a stream, a reverse debate on the Federal Reserve. And that is going to be a very Whoa. exciting stream. And that is going to be, hold on one second. I still have to find the second guest, but I have a couple of people here who I'm considering for it. I think it's going to be a we very, We need to get some very... Ron Paul people if they still exist. Is this going to be a oh, yeah, Bitcoin yeah, yeah. debate then? No, no. On the Federal we Reserve, it's going to be about... Debate. Yeah, I mean, how can you like... debate the Federal Reserve without bringing up Bitcoin, you know? No, we can bring it up, but my whole thing is just about <laughs> whether the Federal Reserve is evil or not. You know, like, I want to uh... at least... Get get that squared. Oh away. wait 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 wait. So but but if, if you don't mind me asking. Well, love, we're about right? ten years or so too late. I mean, uh, 2012 yeah. is kind I'm, of. I'm, well, no, we're gonna I'm have a Gar Garrett Jones. But here's the thing: we're gonna have Garrett Jones. He was with us in the governance stream, and he has agreed to do the reverse debate on the Federal Reserve. And he has a Wikipedia, by the way. So he is an American economist and author. His research pertains to the fields of macroeconomics, monetary policy. This is an interesting one. <laughs> IQ in relation to productivity. Long-term... Well, term... no. Yeah. Whoa. 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 Didn't know that. Uh, Short-term business cycles and economic development. He is an associate professor at George Mason University and the BB&T professor for the study of capitalism at the Mercedes Center. I have no idea uh, what that is. Okay. Huh. This, okay. Is the, this is the libertarian think tank sphere. Doesn't this guy is uh is doesn't he work at the Lincoln Project? Uh, no, I, think I don't so. think so. Really? No, hmm. I think he actually does. Well, he wrote the book uh ten. So he wrote the book uh, ten percent democracy. De democracy, yes. How less voting could mean better governance. But he, unlike, okay, please explain this to me. Like with libertarians. They are like Ron Paulite libertarians who I would want to get in here, kind of like to uh, contrast him, who are from the Ludwig von Mises school, and they are against the Fed. But then he is for the Fed, yet he's also libertarian. So what exactly what exactly is going on here? I know Sonia, can you can you libertarians uh, sometimes disagree with each other? Curious. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Like I, I don't know what's like what's the mystery here? They just disagree. Yeah, but I would have um, thought that something like that, uh, you know, something as big as the Federal Reserve, that so many years have gone by, there would have been like a point well, where see, you say... Let, let, well, let's see, let's... no, I mean, the, the default libertarian position is to hate the Fed, right? Like, that's yeah. just... Yeah, but that was a 2012 um, thing, that's not really... Yeah, but the thing is, everyone's just kind of given up, right? Because, like, there's nothing... I mean, you can hate the Fed all you want, the Fed's not going away, so... Yeah. Um, and problem. I think also... But so another factor here is is actually Bitcoin that like a huge amount of the uh, anti Fed energy got sucked into cryptocurrency because, you know, here's an asset that does meet those um, hard monetary base requirements that is much harder, you know, that d it doesn't it's not impossible to debase, but it would be very, very difficult. It's a much higher threshold than the government just feeling like it, which they do all the time. So um I think a lot of the like the people who had a huge amount of energy for that issue in particular just got sucked into the cryptocurrency world. Hmm. Well, I am curious, though. I know you said that this was a conversation that already occurred, but it would be interesting, at least for me, because I wasn't exposed to it. I was too young back then. It would be interesting for me to take a look at what would happen if we were to have like this professor of economics against somebody who is like just as powerful and just as knowledgeable even maybe more knowledgeable. Uh, i mean you could definitely fed. you could definitely find someone who, who would be I, interested i think there are still well, plenty I, I of wanna, people i'm gonna look at a uh, gene epstein uh gene epstein was recommended to me so i'm gonna take a look at him like if he's interested in coming on i know he does the debate series called uh what's it called soho soho forum and uh, Michael Malice is a part of that, as well oh, as cool. Dave Smith and other people. So Michael Malice, by the way, that is somebody I would love to have on BTR. Uh, I bet I, he'd I be just, great. I just got to simp. I just got to keep simping Michael Malice, and eventually he's going to come on. I did meet him one time at Skankfest. So uh, there, there's that. Skankfest? So, Skankfest, yeah. I went there for the four time in a row. Actually, one thing. I've never heard about, of that. What is it? It's a comedy festival with Louis J. Gomez, Dave Smith, and uh, Big J. Okerson, and it happens in Queens. And uh, Stane Haynes, you're familiar with Skankfest, right? He must be Stane. AFK. Yes. Well, anyway, it's a comedy festival that's a lot of fun, and after I went there, 
I kept having dreams about going to comedy festivals. I still do. I keep having dreams about going to comedy festivals with my oh. friends. That's like the most, this is the common, the most common trope of my dream world. It's going to festivals, comedy festivals in particular. And my second. That's interesting that yeah, it, you like latched on to that so hard. Yeah, exactly. It's very interesting. The and unconscious the sec- just, yeah, just latched on to it. Like that. Yes. And uh, also Tim Dillon was there. So I got to uh, see Tim Dillon. I saw Tim Dillon in other places too. But anyway, speaking of another great guest, uh, uh, but anyway, my second uh, most frequent dream involves me being like in in the city and going to like really nice restaurants. <laughs> Like good quality Japanese. Oh, even love with his bourgeois New York dreams. My dad. <laughs> oh. Your your uh, dreams sound nice though. Actually, like I want to go to a nice restaurant. Yeah, I haven't no, been no. to I haven't been to like a sit down restaurant in like three years, more than a year almost. and a half or something. Yeah, it's yeah. almost been like two three years for me because of like how intense. I mean, I don't know. It's probably just as bad in California, right? But. The, yeah. how intense the lockdowns are but no but, i think like just no everything is eased up california has actually been like this is weirdly the only issue on which california has ever been sane um wow uh but also i mean maybe part of this is my willing like there are people who are I, like honestly i don't know how else to say this there are people who care a lot about like what other people think of them and they live miserable lives but it's their own fault um, <laughs> yeah exactly i live in a whole so, country uh, with people like that <laughs> well so like the rules i mean there have been points at which the rules in california conflicted with like what i thought was sensible but i just did what i thought was sensible instead of following the rules and nobody ever called me out on it so i yeah, just like yeah. called but, cause but, no but issues there was a, uh, however there, was a- there are people people in san francisco like i have friends who actually live in san francisco i live in like a normal city that's um, I have a cousin who lives in san on the francisco, outskirts actually yeah yeah and people described uh have told me about being like you know being walking down the sidewalk without a mask and like having people yell at them which is ridiculous since it's outdoors wow. but oh, wow. yeah. you know I think, you know, there there unreasonable people exist. You know, you have to live your life with the expectation that there are going to be unreasonable people who make unreasonable demands on you. And you have Definitely. to be able to deal with that because otherwise you're just ceding your life to their demands, which is how I feel a lot of, about a lot of like progressive nonsense in general, actually. It's like, um, you know, you wanting something doesn't really, <laughs> that's fine. Want it all you want, you know? <laughs> I think that that is like sort of um, the 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 like, how would you say, like a very like secularized like Gnosticism that's driving like current political political discourse, the Herculean task of uh, changing reality around you instead of yourself. It's really like I I think it's such, I mean it's it's literally Satan is what I believe, yeah, exactly. but I'm like a crazy Christian person, so yeah. Well, there you go. Um, I actually you talked a little bit, but I was listening to um your pod i have to listen oh to with eigenrobot with eigenrobot yeah yeah it was pretty interesting i think like we we talk about this a lot in btr but um i think like it is it is quite crazy how when the age of like total disenchantment comes about that we have even more like even like worse like strictures of control and just like total mind like brainworm parasite parasitism now that like people have uh become detached from any sort of um not just like ancestral tie but also like their capacity of humility like sort of an existential humility itself because now that you have the idea that everyone is sort of like auto theistically driving through life as their own auto theistic perfect word i haven't heard Ooh. that one before but that's that's excellent. yeah auto theism yeah yeah um, Ge- it was Geo also a basis to be... album so <laughs> oh for i was about to say geo confirmed to be a level 99 derelict of dialect that's a great term <laughs> yeah no it's a pretty old term but it is true uh like i say plus it was a it was album by the faceless um uh <laughs> um who is who are also from the bay area um but uh, unfortunately a lot of uh, a lot of good things came out of the bay area in spite oh, yeah. of itself <laughs> yeah um so <laughs> yeah that's true uh i think like yeah that's as it's really crazy how when you are sort of um 
when when the capacity to be led by forces outside of the self is now like stripped from you the forces inside of the self are somewhat more terrifying and uh totalitarian and and just generally how what, what would be the word for it just generally imposing mm. upon a well, you said, um, possible. well you, you said gnosticism and i think that's spot on the like mm. subsuming of the self into the world instead yeah. of into um uh, you know, into the transcendent salvation. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think. Wait, but in this case, what would a uh, uh, bitches don't be believing in higher order dimensions, and they're wrong. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. wait. But your point about narcissism is obviously. no, but your point about narcissism is that narcissism does what? Well, this isn't oh. real. Like this isn't like actual Manichaean cult. So this is like a, a very. It's hard to explain. It's like a... So, like, philosophically, Gnosticism is the idea... So, like, okay, so Gnosticism is one of the original Christian heresies, right? And it's the yeah. idea that you can become one with the Godhead through knowledge. So, it's it's really the root of the Western esoteric tradition is Gnosticism. Yeah. Um, and there is... Uh, there's a lot of truth to it. You know, it is very powerful. You know, yes. knowledge, information... Um, and, and personal transcendent experience are all very powerful and I think very important, um, but they are not the be all end all. Uh, and treating them to be as the be all end all is, is it's tyrannical, um, which is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so there, I mean, there's a lot of, I really, this is like, it's, it's ontological disagreements, like disagreements about what the nature of reality is, uh, how the nature of reality ought to be treated based on what it is thought to be. Yeah, um, exactly. So you have these very, very deeply rooted um, differences in how people like process the world and what they think the world is. Um, like or even what uh, their really, role within the world is as well. Yeah, also, yeah. What like what is what is their yeah. proper place? Um, that's and I mean a lot of that's what sort of traditional religion is about: putting yourself in the right metaphysical context. Um, and uh, so I. I agree. Basically, the the I want to go back to that term autotheist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the that's kind of the. I guess it's what I would see as like the root problem of of modernity is the individual and um, but it's not it's not really the individual per se because like there's there's so much that's good about the individual. It's like the. The worship of the self. Yeah, the worship. This, self, but, see, not... but see, this part I And it's like understand. the inversion, the like folding inward. Um, it's like introspection, uh, introspection elevated to its own end instead of yeah. uh, introspection as means of transformation. Yeah, exactly. But, but, but what I don't understand it's about an here... Inversion. Well, it's an inversion because it's no longer like an inwardness in, in the sense of like the, the way um, a lot of... Uh, these mystical traditions view it and it's more of like this purely almost like materialistic version mm. of inwardness. But, but then it becomes it but then it becomes different from the goal of Gnosticism though, because if we're talking about transformation of the self, that in itself would imply that the state of being that you want to get to would be different than the state of being you currently have. So I know you guys is. are familiar with that uh, with that propaganda picture, which has like all the degeneracy in this like one uh, frothing area, and there's like this chick, like this hippie chick there with a tattoo or like a writing that says "I am God," and like I think that's kind of what people <laughs> may think when they're talking about uh, you know the problems with this narcissist uh, ideal of elevating a person to godhood. But if I maybe I misunderstood you, but my version here would be not that, but it would be that the person themselves would be a different person. They would change as a person. They would get to a higher level, and it would not be the same person as it was before, making whatever stupid decisions they made. But at the same time, it's all a journey where I could see the fear of the ego being so in control that... Uh, or imposing one's will upon the world that a person thinks they're already you know at a very high level of knowledge and they're going to try to impose whatever they think is right upon others and that's going to create a lot of uh, a lot of disturbances then that maybe some of the religious fathers uh wanted to you know make sure would not happen they would not want people to have that amount of power to impose upon other people but inversely though if people are just the flock of sheep 
that are waiting for a particular thing to happen, I'm not sure if there is as much personal growth there as could possibly be. Some people will, some people won't, but um, I don't know. I've always had a bit of a uh, of a problem with saying that all Gnosticism or all, all of that kind of process of elevating one spirit to a higher level, that that's necessarily somehow bad. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That doesn't seem inherently bad. I mean, my other whole thing, and I talked about this on the stream with the Progentialist, is, uh, and we're, we're sort of wrapping up right now, but I just want to, to let that... We're aren't we? We're too. sort of doing a preview of future themes, right? That's what I was yeah, sort of assuming this yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So, this, is, this is the equivalent of fleshing out new material on open mics, and then the things that make people scream and throw things at the stage mm. is what ends up becoming break the rules. Exactly. Half an hour. <laughs> the sketch before the page. Didn't realize we'd have five minutes. I thought we'd have half an hour. Holy Hello, myself. How are oh, you, my friend? Yeah, I was so, because okay. you guys were talking about basically some of the fucking Gnosticism, and I was just came in here to exist. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, are yes. you? Do you exist? Yeah. <laughs> I, please, please excuse me, but but, but it just you know, oi, what's this then? <laughs> you show that was up. exactly my oh, fucking reaction too. Every I was like, time. Is this, Hello, governor. <laughs> Hello, governor. Hello, suddenly, governor. Suddenly, suddenly from across the channel. Uh, well, this are, really are you to... are you all right? Are they are they holding you hostage now? Can can you leave <laughs> when you want to, or uh, you're stuck there on the <laughs> cursed <laughs> island? What do you mean someone's holding me hostage? What do you mean by that? What do you mean? Like, uh, like, I, I, mean I mean that I find performative <laughs> hatred of your mother country very amusing. Uh, well, I don't hate my country. I think a lot of people do. I think it's just a country. I think some people, there's a lot of people I see, what is it? They go, oh, they hate British food. But deep down, yes. it's like when uh, you get a couple people, I know in real life, and they're a little bit like catty towards me, and it's because they're secretly attracted to me. It's like that with the Americans oh. and the British. So. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, oh, that's totally true. The reason that Americans have a chip on our shoulder about the British is because of our inferiority complex with respect to the British. I don't think America's entirely, I don't think America's really even inferior, but I think there's definitely like a sense of uh, weird catty disputes. So yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's a parent-child kind of thing. Or, like, you know what? It's more an older sibling, younger sibling kind of thing, I think. Al where it's like seed. We need to differentiate ourselves, and then we're also, you know, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of jealousy and trauma I think in the past that we haven't unpacked. Although I do, think the average American probably doesn't care about Britain anymore. I don't know. Well, uh, I, don't, I think all people do. I think. But the average it, American, the average American is like a shell, like a receptacle for like <laughs> ideas for that other people. Trash. Like, I have a hundred percent say. Like, have you talked to like normal people? Shit is yeah. absolutely wild. Um, yeah. Uh, and, so, uh, and on top of that, <laughs> on, on, on top of that, if you, if any random I'm too British busy person, on Twitter.com to talk to normal. If people, any yeah, for whatever true. reason the British accent to hear the United States, like I mean, you you could look like a fucking character out of Oliver Twist, but if you spoke with a British accent, that's the one of the few accents here in America. That doesn't immediately trigger the like, you know, oh God, who are you? Where are you from? Are you keen on Jesus? <laughs> what are you trying to sell to me? I don't know. It looks suspicious to me. You know, like especially no, like, once you leave it, the city. It also tricks you know? Americans into thinking you're smarter. I think that's why like Sargon had probably a big audience because he oh, had British accent. Why Glasses, British I'm accent, cool. you're sold. There you go. Yeah. Well, speaking yeah. of intellectualness yeah. and Britishness, yeah. I'm I'm with the eight views on my Substack. I know not very many people have checked it out, but I'll have to post my first. So I'm actually doing Ooh. a little bit of a actually trying to do some essays now. I've got another one in the making about magic. What are you writing How about? How do we find it? Uh, well, I'll just post my Substack. Give me a sec. I should I should have it like immediately if I'm gonna like bitch about it. But, uh, I might like come out with my first Substack next week, but to, but tomorrow I have to do some editing. But tomorrow on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm finally releasing Style Talks 5, me and Matthew the oh, I can't we're gonna talk about, oh, sorry, I can't. We're going to talk about that statue in New York by oh, yeah. by uh, Sanford Biggers. Oh, Jason oh, Giorgiani is yeah. not happy. Jason Giorgiani is not happy about that statue one bit. Oh, really? What yeah. statue? Did he say something about oh, it? Oh, it's... Uh, yeah, I, you know what? It, 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 uh, Sonia, it defies description. 
Uh, there, yeah, and there's you'll, nothing you'll have to wait tomorrow. Us, it's going to be a fire episode. No, 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 there's yeah. nothing I would recommend you just open a tab and get disappointed in five seconds from now. Yeah, okay, uh, what do I Google? There's nothing. So Google um, <laughs> the Oracle by Sanford Biggers or type just um, Rockefeller Center statue and you'll find it. It's, okay, you can't I'm miss it. it you literally can't miss it. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they had the guys. Diego Rivera mural. They had the fucking Atlas. Now they got this. So Yes. Yeah. And guys, don't forget, subscribe to Geo's channel right now. YouTube.com slash PenCon. Mm. But the one thing that I want to get to... Is no, no, it's Jenner quick. Productions. Yeah, Jenner Productions. Why is yeah, the but... head so big? You know what? Uh, well, well, you can reserve... <laughs> You're going to break yes. it all down, I'm sure. You're going to yes, break down yes. every factor. Yes. <laughs> yep. We are. Me and Matthew, yeah, we do. Yeah, it's... Yeah. We, if you listen to our other um, Style Talks podcast, then it's... Oh boy, it's you're so, in for a wild uh, ride. You're in for a wild yes. ride, yeah. So two two quick things. First off, my whole thing, and I'm not gonna get into it that much, but uh, it's basically that you know, planet Earth, you know, beyond the Earth, all these solar systems and planets and galaxies, and I just bet that there is a lot more things that are going on that happen on other planets, unless all these planets and galaxies are just something for God to trick us with. You know, if it's not that then there's other stuff that's going on beyond our understanding wherein other people would have had similar religious experiences in other planets, uh, much like we have had, wherein I wouldn't necessarily say that our experience here would be the only one. So that's the only thing that I kind of wanted to add to at least uh, the view that I currently have right now. It doesn't mean I'm always going to have that view, but that's the one that I currently hold when it comes to just like the question of religion, what's the true religion and all that. Like certain things I think people end up stumbling upon. You know, if you spend time in the desert uh, long enough, uh, you are going to probably have, and it's not... It's not hallucinations. I don't call them hallucinations. I mean, Gio, you know me. I'm not going to get into the visions mm. and vision techniques and all that yeah. right now it's with the third space. eye. But yeah. Yes. People go into a state of transcendence where I think, I really think our brains are more receivers, where we are able to pick up on things that are in the realm of ideas as opposed to in a much more solidified realm than we are in right now. So that's my own personal view of looking at these things. But speaking of that... I wanted to get to my uh, dreams real quickly. And then oh, here we go. This. Yes. So, uh, you know me. Oh, with the just, dreams, a, just, writing the dreams just down. real quickly. Yes. I, I'd like to, I'd like to, so, so this is an element, uh, not this similar to the, the McLaughlin group. Now, how's that for a callback? So Sonia, check this out. <laughs> so at the end of the McLaughlin group, uh, one of its, uh, um, one of its selling points was predictions, where yeah, basically that, everyone yeah, got to go. Yeah, I have a story like, about that. Go yeah, ahead. Steve. Yes, yeah. please, please. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I revoke the floor to Geo. This is what, go what, Gio. I, okay. Right. So, um, back when okay, John McLaughlin unfortunately has passed away. Not the guitarist, but the host, the journalist. Um, back in when was the Color Revolutions? What year was 2011, that? Twenty eleven, I think. Yes. Back in 2011. Wait, 2011? That that oh, late? Okay. Oh, that uh, late, yeah. Oh, that that, that, uh, yeah. that early. Well, yeah. I mean, aren't there multiple? Re- anyway, the, the go Egyptian, on, Gio. The Egyptian. It, it yeah, doesn't really the matter. Arab Spring. The Arab Spring. The Arab Spring. Yeah, that was tw- that was 2010 actually. Holy crap! Um, before in 2010, I think or 2011, I was watching the Glocken Group. I used to watch it every Sunday, and it had like. Uh, I think like some of the more popular guests were like Pat Buchanan, Christopher Hitchens. Uh, they had like a bunch of like blue check marks on, I guess now, but <laughs> they, they um, at the end they went around and they'd have predictions and John McLaughlin himself predicted um, that Hosni Mubarak would step down and it's this seared into my brain. Hosni Mubarak would step down and give it to his son, uh, Gamel Mubarak. And literally two months after the, the Egyptian color, the Arab Spring happened, and all bets are off. So, I'm like, oh man, John McLaughlin really fucking ate it there. So, <laughs> this is why I don't make predictions. The future yeah, is I mean, way too non linear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, but, but you're at the opposite end of like economists where, like, if you're, listen, like, predict things oh, hard, God, predict, yeah. predict often. So, all you have to do is be right once and like coast it out yeah. for as long as you can, like Paul Krugman. You know, aka, uh, pa- aka in 2006, God. aka in 2006, Paul, 
Uh, Paul, the internet is going to have the impact on business, much like the fax machine. Krugman, all right? <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never forget this guy. Yeah. There was who is the other one? Um, well, the, well, there was a podcast a called Contra Krugman. That, yeah, you know that podcast, the one with Tom Woods and. Uh, oh that, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. No, they tried to debate Paul it. Krugman, and then they like they wanted to give the money to charity, but then Paul Krugman he like chickened out. Um, who's the elections guy? Like, Nate Silver. Oh, Nate Silver. Silver. Like that, yeah. Like, and there was know, a Bob, so... Bob Murphy there too. I want to get Bob Murphy on as a guest. I hope he'll come on. Yeah, Bob Please Murphy got into trouble when he was doing cream. Sorry, what was that myself? It's just when people talk about predictions in the future, I always think that really like people trying to say that the Simpsons predicted the future. I always find that so fucking irritating. It just came sprung to mind. It's like it's a bit different than like what you're talking about people intentionally predicting the future right? not just like stuff happening oh yeah. in okay a okay the, way. okay well 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 all right the only thing i have to say to that because it is an incredibly grating frustrating thing after a while like yeah uh, when this first started it was supposed to be like for example the good morning burger which was like a fucking like donut fried egg actual burger bacon uh canadian bacon and something else all right and then like 18 years later that actually happened so like yeah on, the, on, on, yeah on, on, on the like good small, morning from the simpsons yeah, yeah the good like, morning on, on like small cultural touchstones like that you know like it, it, it's endearing but it's like you know the simpsons predicting that this would happen at 8 23 p.m on this day and it's like well dude, the like, simpsons log predict log predicted off. stuff <laughs> the reason the simpsons predicted stuff is because um What's the guy's name? Mac Groening was on the flight logs. That's why. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking thing that there's so much Simpsons, and it's just like you could probably do the same thing with South Park, but Simpsons has this like weird cultural spec to it. Oh, not like, anymore. Though, not anymore. Oh, no, oh, oh, no, but okay, that's what I'm God. saying. It did. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, it, it, isn't what, it? Isn't it great that every Gen Xer has died and <laughs> is, is dead? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my goodness! They, you know, people, people, we're they talk finally about free and millennials, but no, fucking Gen X, they probably did just as, if not more, cultural damage in the long run. No one and a lot of their you, stuff. Listen, say what you will about millennials, but like Gen X, like oh, us millennials, and, us older millennials, we're terminally but, fucked. Like, too. Don't but worry like, about but it. like Gen X, <laughs> lives, nah, no one's fucked with you. No Gen, Gen X lives are just awful in ways that like because like out of fear of like being uh obsolete uncool they, 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 they cling on dude but, no out of like, reality of being obsolete like the right. gen x only ever gets brought up to made fa to make fun of it like <laughs> ever or okay you know like what they do you know like that's that not one. totally true they do get some credit for good tv shows that's like the one thing that Gen X produced of any like lasting value. Oh, music also. Brunch. Okay. Yeah. Brunch? And, and death metal. That's probably yeah. Kind of sorta. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, As like, legacies go though, brunch and death metal is a pretty fire legacy. So I'll give true. them that. Yeah. Oh, and, and you know, you got to give them some credit like the the, the 90s were the beginning of like the underpinnings of like I'm listening web, to like, Siamese like, 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 Dream right now. So like, that's like web 1.0 like remember hey, yeah. hey kids remember web comics remember like web rings and and things you read on angel fire that got updated once a week hey, yeah yeah <laughs> you hey, go kids. back to your personal blog so so um no remember I, the bookmarks oh oh my goodness. rss feeds holy crap hey hey Dude. hey People oh my god, it's like people. once a month someone shows up on hacker news like guys remember rss still exists Let's make RSS happen, and everyone people in the comments is like, "Bro, what, yeah." yeah. Well, hey, hey, hey! Don't it. don't badmouth the RSS feeds and sneeds because oh, I used to love BTR. It, man. Well, BTR, we have a custom RSS feed for the audio version of oh, our I didn't show. Know that. Oh, yeah, podcast, yeah, the podcasting yeah, you ecosystem is like the, the only TV, thing that still uses RSS. RSS. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, guys, we are going to be ending it soon. I wanted to quickly okay. just uh, say some well, of my Well, I wanted dreams. to go down memory yes. lane a bit. Like a okay, on go for it. Or whatever. I had I this... Post my sub <laughs> and, so oh, yeah, yeah. My Wait, did you post your sub I in the chat? I DM'd no? it to you because I don't know how to, like, fucking... I'm not a citizen, so I, like, left What? Why are you not a citizen? You should be a citizen. I left the Discord on the whim, like, one time, and then I rejoined. Okay, well, you should be a citizen. I don't know why you're not a citizen. Because I said because I left, and it doesn't, like, keep your stuff if you, like, rejoined. 
Okay, so you sent, it in, but, um, you sent you sent it in Zoom, right? Yeah, D- no, I DM'd you on Discord. Fucking how all oh, the way okay. you can send a simple link. I know, just... literally every time, right? Like, oh, fucking yeah. this happens to be a work meeting so much. Uh, you want to fax um, me? You want to send me a text? But my <laughs> first uh, sub stack, I think I'm going to release it next week later on. Uh, it's going to be a controversial thing about uh, the... There was a meme about it. Um, I tried writing a thread about um, the, like, um, even just saying it sounds so stupid and autistic. Um, oh, um, no, no, have confidence in yourself, Joe. I'm not again. Well, no, I wrote a thread about how, um, like, like how uh, a lot of women don't realize that um, when it comes to a lot of lonely dudes, such as myself, um, and myself um that um men we have this natural thing to uh like if like you have an acquaintance who is a woman in your life you'll have like sort of these romantic fantasies like these daydreams and how and, and like uh not that you act upon them for whatever reason either because it's like becoming like you know like default friend said like it's almost seen as creepy now to like just go up and talk to her bro but i i i, I like talk about that i talk about this uh, william blake poem uh but i the reason i wrote a sub stack about it um is because i did a, a mini thread on this topic and then a week later there was a meme about it with like a doomer uh wojak uh incel and literally i got like fucking uh like hammer and sickle like and comms with OnlyFans in their bio. And I'm like, damn, I have to delete. I have to, like, lock my Holy account shit. for a little bit. Yeah. Wow. No, it's about I'm a fucking loser. Incel, trad larper. Um, <laughs> no, but I feel like it's... Uh, but I talk about, like, this attack on how, like, even just the, the desire for intimacy is itself perceived as, like, some form of, like, creepiness or entitlement. Uh, so, so it sounds like the the broad theme that you're talking about here is that it's not really about sex it's about romance exactly and that's like yeah. so under acknowledged yeah exactly and i th- even just like and, and here's the thing i think like even people who just have meaningless encounters i think that is also the other like spectrum the side of the spectrum i mean the, the default now is almost like a weird like passive incel them but even for people that do like quote unquote fuck, uh, it's like there's still like a void there. I don't know. It's really weird. But it, my, my point being, uh, well, no, it really depends on whether yeah. afterwards you guys go out for breakfast and uh, you know. Well, well Lev, you know, you and your you and your ex Japanese girlfriend. You gonna tell another story about Four. your ex Japanese girlfriend? No, Sony. He does this every fucking time. He had a. He's like, well, well, well me and my ex Japanese girlfriend. We went to this cool japanese restaurant in soho and uh, <laughs> only, he hasn't fully processed it yet, or, 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 or you know <laughs> or, no no it wasn't soho it was cha on tea house or <laughs> it was, it was for christmas you or, you or you just have to tell the story on the or you could have or like a champion you could have made them breakfast in your kitchen come on like, no, you gotta hear this from my well, dumbass. Bre- breakfast used to be a metaphor for, like, want to hook up. That was, like, the thing, let's have breakfast sometime, right? Or am I, me- or is that, like, a Gen X, like, movie thing? I don't know. I don't know anything about movie. this. That, that sounds like a college thing to me. Like, I could believe that college kids said that. Yeah, but maybe I can only believe that because I didn't go to college, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. do you, do you, why are you uh, so down on yourself, man? What, like, I know you, nothing you about are. this. I'm a total, um... <laughs> I know nothing of the the uh, the experiences of man. Um, Dude, uh, down for, for now, like Geo, this is the, well. This just just wait till you, you read will. the Substack, then you'll really see how I'm. Fuck. <laughs> Geo, Come Geo, on, Geo, man. you're gonna you're gonna go to New York City and you're gonna go to Cha. I'm gonna go House and I'm gonna have you... it. I'm gonna go on a date with uh, Porco Rosso, our good friend, and uh, it's gonna. Yes, be, yes, exactly. Be well, you're gonna be lifting um, weights first, and you're gonna get. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah, gonna tasteful banter with GF in wine bar. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. no! No! <laughs> By the way, look how look how cute oh, okay, this uh, okay. Chaunty uh, House uh, place uh, looks. Uh, Geo, on. Geo, Geo, hear me out, all right? Yeah. <laughs> in spite of the doom and gloom, and and mind you. I could only speak from personal experience because, well, I know, all right? But uh, it should be noted that uh, a lot of people would not be quick to say openly that, all right, so let's say you have not seen what you've described as the experiences of men. Do you have any idea how many fucking headaches you've avoided? 
and how many fucking yeah. pointless yeah, that's, arguments that's yeah. said, and yeah. how People many fucking meaningless having yeah. to you, suddenly you're playing the what I said what I meant game and you're just trying to take someone out I, for like I lunch and then like... and you know what Geo you're gonna take a girl out to lunch and everything is gonna be perfectly fine six well, months I, see, in you're minding artist... your business and then she's gonna fucking <laughs> you're gonna reenact the guy she had an argument with earlier that day, and your son, and she's like, you, you, you. And you're like, I'm just here to take you out for nachos. And, and, and it's like, you're wondering. And <laughs> this you're, is and, oddly and, specific. Like, I, like this, this I can neither confirm nor deny these <laughs> allegations. All I'm saying is, it's going to be bewildering. And all those That's things. That's a great picture of nachos, love. Are you going to have nachos? No, Gio, Gio. You, you have nachos? Gio. No, no, are Gio. They, no, what are they? No, what is this that? is smoked salmon toast. Oh, this is a piece of toast. Did that Ooh. replace avocado toast? Is that the, uh, new no, so this is from a Cha An Tea House, and it's closed right now. It's going to be reopening on uh, January first, um, twenty twenty-two. But, 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 but Gio, you, you have you have picture. avoided you have avoided so much unessary, pointless uh, bullshit. Like, and, 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 no, no, I just well, I, I you see. Want, you want to take no, this to the He's boy? just going to get all of that in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> a couple years is hopeful. Um, no, um, it's don't say that, Gio. Oh, it's Gio, I'm sorry. Gio, we need. I need no, to have a like fucking it's intense really... session with Gio because I'm no, I'm not. I'm interrupting you because I'm. I'm want to. No, have a I was point. gonna say You've it's really You've got to funny. really stop. I know every stream it is. Shit, man. I, I, Look no, at this I see. Thing. I want to cut it off at like the boogie twenty nine eighty eight level of like self groveling. That's not my. Because I feel like you can easily you've you've got um, all this knowledge and self awareness that boogie doesn't have. And it's yeah. Just like, uh, yeah. Well, here's don't, yeah, don't compare think, yourself to boogie. I think that like um, I think it's really weird how people. Like an like a r actual point would be it's really weird how people like sort of reify these like experiences for lack of like because especially with young men because we no longer have a lot of like and I know this is like a basic bitch Jordan Peterson point that we don't have like a lot of ritualism around like what it is to uh, properly integrate the self when we like go through puberty then we experience for the first time this like what it means to like be someone who participates in a particular form of masculinity or so forth or whatever. I think it's really crazy how in, in the absence of like codified ritual around becoming a quote unquote man, we have these like cultural, like that largely comes from Hollywood, which is to me 10 times more terrifying than anything else because of, I truly believe that Hollywood is run by, you know, who demons uh, you thought I was going to say one person. no, Demons. Um, <laughs> so, hey, oh, listen, boy. listen. People no, but I think... offer up ritual no, let sacrifice let tomorrow. No, let it's not what you thought was. Yeah, finish. no, it's true. Um, no, no, but what I was going to say is that it's like the one thing... I remember there used to be these threads on 4chan. Um, usually R9K, obviously. Where they were like, um, that feel when you'll never experience teen romance. That feel when you'll never fall in love for the first time when you're young. But I'm thinking, and then I remember there was this long ass thread like that. At the very end, this one like Anon commented saying, I had it. It was bullshit. So it was like, boom, that was it. But it is true how this like worship of youth and worship of a very like Hollywoodized romantic ideal of the youth falling in love it's sort of like a really weird cope that like in the absence of actual um rituals of instantiating like what it is to be a man or what it is to be a woman or whatnot uh, it's like now we have these like impersonal things we don't even have that anywhere i don't even think zoomers have that same thing like i mean do zoomers hook up i don't know it's like i don't want to think about that all in online fact. now huh. it's all online exactly yeah well, like tiktok like... duets Oh my god! It's like, oh! it's like some creepy fucking 40-year-old man with like a 16-year-old mm. girl. It's like, damn. Um... You're using some like Chinese beauty filter. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god, no. See, uh, man, this is why, huh? listen, we get a lot of flack on BTR for inviting the femoids on. But I think it's really, it's really Wait, good. well, was it wasn't Mark the... saying that we're that you know that we're a sausage fest? Yeah, well, no, but it's funny because the other side Dude, says that nothing, have... nothing interesting is not a sausage fest. Like that's just <laughs> it is the sad, it is the sad reality of the world it's that true, like man. interesting it's things true. more men are interested in than women. Like that just yeah, I don't know. There, yeah. I, well, I, I have interests that are like I'm also I'm a huge crafter. Like I have female dominated interests, but 
my feminine interests are not intellectual at all, you know? Yeah. There, you, Nothing you, into like, yeah, actually like feminine intellectualism is like academia. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's the, no, it's the pub publishing world. Oh yeah, that's oh, what he called yeah. it. Thank you, thank you, Jay Ross. So Jay Ross um, reminded me what he, what uh, Mark called it. He called it a mantle. A mantle, like a panel, yes, a man, man panel. That's um, the first time I've ever heard like, that. Well, th I think like I mean it's it's simplistic to say that um, the reason like fiction publishing is destroyed is because it's all run by women. But it's there's there's truth like in the sense of I mean though oh that's not women's fault. That's no. because women are the people who fucking buy books. Yeah, that so again it's like this yeah, this hyper commodification of it. But but also like even like the fact that like sixty percent of all PhD students that actually go on to complete their PhD, not get enrolled but complete to completion are women. I think like a lot of like for example like political theory has been totally destroyed by um, lack of new ideas. You know, I, I mean, I, I achieved the master's level and, and thank God that was like the only, I shouldn't say that by the, t I, I know like the university I went to is changing now for the worst. Her I've heard stories, worst. but when I went there, it was amazing and it was special. And uh, maybe it's just because they tolerated me, so that's why I'm saying this. Uh, but um, now, Gio, you're a very sweet guy. And well, I no, think I mean, people see that. The the thing is, yeah. like, I, I think like when it comes to um, this goes back to what we were talking about, like when when women enter a certain space and the dynamic changes. I think that it will take a sort of like, um, I think, and again, this is why people were pissed off at my thread because the typical like a woman coming into these like ultra like trad larp or right wing space whatever you want to call it i think like that is um we all know what that was that was you know that's no different than some twitch, twitch streamer tit streamer sorry twitch streamer uh going in a bathtub uh only now it's like baking uh sun or rad uh pies and uh pretending like i'm ultra based uh uh, blonde hair, based on fashion what? woman, based huge on what? cannon milkers. Yeah, based on <laughs> what? I, I think, like, to me, that is um, a lot of these women, and I think Sonia is one of them, they don't really need to play on this, like, male fantasy shit. Uh, I'm married. They, so, like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> that's why. Uh, uh, I think the it's, day, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so it's like there's, there's definitely. There's an irreducible element of performance in oh, being obviously. a woman relating to men and vice versa. I think like gender just is like gender is a thing, I guess. Like I'm not, uh, and that for me, that was a, a big breaking point with the left. The left is such a shitty way to say it. The like it's called global progressive, the progressive <laughs> meme plex, whatever you want to call yeah. it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, was the idea that men and women were cognitively the same. I just found that absolutely ludicrous. Um, and uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I um, I didn't know you were married. <clears throat> yeah, I, well, so my husband likes to stay, he likes his privacy, you know, so mm. he doesn't want to. Um, yeah. 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 There's definitely that, like, there is there is a reality though that like men gravitate towards women, you know, like it's a, and, and it's vice versa, true. like you were saying, women, <laughs> Women and men both treat uh, groups of each other like resource pools or like hunting grounds. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, just, I don't know. I guess I just think it is that way and it will keep I, being I that way. At the same time, I mean, I'm kind of like, as much as there is a lot of good insight, I am kind of like distrustful of breaking everything down into like Evo Psych the way that like a lot of these rationalist circles do. But at the same time, like I remember the other day I went in one of these... Um, one of these, like, you know, Manosphere channels I used to watch. Uh, and they're, like, talking. I'm not going to say who it is, but you can guess, like, if I say the word MGTOW, you probably know the litany of YouTubers that are still around. But it's just, like, they're talking about the same shit in the same terms. It's, like, yeah, I agree. There's a lot of insight. And as a man in the modern world, you have to be careful, obviously. But I, I guess, like, I, what I'm seeing, like, I said this the other day on Twitter. I'm, like, I don't want to see a repeat of like the fucking 2016 like edgelord manosphere versus rad femmes like Tim tumblr rad feminism it's just like <laughs> dude, that's just bullshit like that's i think we should mature past like these petty squabbles but at the same time i do realize that 
just purely for OPSEC reasons, I may be more amicable to the femoids than like most, you know, people on Twitter. So I, I understand the point of like wanting to maintain a purity because when women do enter these dynamics, like shit changes relatively fast. And, mm -hmm. and it's and they do sort of have now that there there there's a smarter crop of them that are sort of creating ideas rather than just like aping them. I think like that's scary to a lot of people, and so I I'm kind of on the fence with it. I mean I guess I'm more amicable than the average like again like I say the average like poster anonymous poster. Mm -hmm. But at the same time it's like I don't know. I mean. Uh... I think men are they, men are yeah. just sad. Well, so I mean, it happens. I feel like I've seen versions of this dynamic play out so many times in geek spaces, like in yeah. open source communities, and like sci-fi has gone through a zillion renditions oh, of this. Oh yeah. Um, um, and I guess I, don't, I just like I just I just think it. You know, it's like the cycle will continue cycling. You know. Um, yeah. I think of. I it's it's just you know you can't you have to out compete right like that's 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 the tough thing is like you have to you have to offer better alternatives if you want people to do different things so like the yeah, guy yeah. who uh, and there's just no way for all male spaces to out compete because men like women what are you gonna yeah. do um, but also the world at large like there is there is yeah you do like, you need some kind of yeah. A, a lot of the sort of there's there's been I, I would I guess you could call it like an attack on male you know male, men having their own spaces to to be men to be with each other um, unless it's you know unless it's a sexual thing in which case that's fine but yeah. Um, yeah. but but like like I said earlier what about the Freemasons nobody's really canceled the Freemasons oh I wonder why <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Um, I would actually, I think it would be fucking hysterical if every, like, trad guy, quote-unquote trad guy on Twitter joined the Freemasons. That would no, be incredible. No. Or, like, the Shriners or something. Oh, Can you no, imagine? That would be better. so funny. Oh, so, so, so yeah, riding that, those little cars. Well, as a Catholic, I can't join. Well, I think they can change that rule, but... Uh... Yeah. So, 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 will a bunch of disenfranchised dudes today joining the Freemasons be like the the um, uh, like that when back in early in the two thousands when all those something awful goons like applied to the CIA as the joke quote unquote and, so, and as joke yeah right so, yeah so, do the do the march through the institution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean. We well, watch, laugh, watch, like, watch. So, uh, check this out. Someone is gonna, uh, listen. In a year and a half, someone will be the fastest thirty-third degree Freemason, like in history, and his and all because it was just one big shit post for him. He's gonna do it. <laughs> Mark yeah. my as words. long as man, as long as nobody I kn like know actually shoots someone up, I'm gonna be happy. That dude. Do you remember uh, a while back there was a guy who like stole? It wasn't an actual tank. It looked like a tank, but it was like yeah, some other yeah. kind of vehicle. Like, a, I forget what it was called. Um, that dude was like mutuals with a bunch of people I know he was on Twitter. So I'm just, me. He followed, oh, me? He followed yeah. me. Yeah. I'm just waiting for one of the fucking insult terrorists to come from our circles and ruin everything. I could have, I have a few ideas. I'm, I'm wondering, like, hmm. I wonder who, 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 well, I, who could be a good fit um well i, I consider joining the freemasons uh uh like about 10 years ago i was thinking about it um, but my whole thing would be like if i were to go there, there I'd be like, there's a like, few guys, candidates on the insult terrorist list that i have there's yeah. a short list but um, oh, well no. i i, I would be kind of like if i were to go to into the freemason thing i'll be like okay fellas you do realize there's this thing called kundalini in our backs that like totally matches up with your whole, uh, you know, uh, schematics there of the tree of life and all that. Like, let's talk about, and I don't know. I don't know if the, see, they're all about all these symbols and things like that, but let's just like go right to the meat of the thing. You know, what exactly all this stuff you is with go uh, Kundalini left. and, uh, yeah. Come to the Bay Area and we can go to the Rosicrucian Museum together. Ooh, they have like yeah. anthro anthroposophy, anth anth is that right? The That's a lot theosophy, of fun. Theosophy, you know, those, those, yeah, those the like, um, you know that that stuff that kind of got left behind last century. They're still, you know, they're still fucking with it. 
uh, and they also have a lot of. But cool... they're like, but the, but they seem kind of weak. That's the thing. Like they're just like these old. Oh men come on, love. Like... Yeah, they're they're, well, they they're, still, they're a dying they breed. Still, they have like endowments or something because they're paying for that beautiful building. So yeah. I don't know. No, I would definitely Maybe. love to check it out. But my whole thing is I really think all the real action is going on, like, underground in the Gartha and, like, with the Nazis that fled into Antarctica. I think that's where all the real shit oh, is. God. And we're just all we're uh, just all here for the ride of whatever happens next on the Next time surface. on Break the Rules, the gang <laughs> visits Antarctica to find <laughs> Santa's secret CIA lair. Yeah. Well, that's like all the uh, UFOs. How do you think you all know, the toys about... get made? Exactly. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, S Santa. They had to enslave the Dravidians to make the toys. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so are, are we in the Santa Hollow Claus. Earth? Santa Claus! Santa Claus! Yeah, we're German. in the Hollow Earth Don't territory, you get it? Right hey, hey, those reindeer are brown and he's exploiting animals of color, well, all right? Yeah, and according to Terrence anywhere. McKenna, um, Santa Claus is a machine elf, what? apparently, so... Yeah, what? because the... You didn't hear about this, the psychedelic Santa Claus connection? No, Whatever. go on. Okay, so basically Terrence McKenna, he formulated that, um... Because certain, you know, the word shaman came from Russia, came from Siberia, the people, the particular tribe people there, I forget the name, but they would uh, take the, what was it called? Anna something muscaria. I'm going to eat a muscaria. Anna eat a muscaria, which if you eat, it's the, the cartoonish, um, it's the cartoonish like cup hat, um, like yeah. Hanna-Barbera mushroom. In, in, Rus right? in Russian, we call it muhamor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Muhammad, yeah. So it's like the cartoonish Hanna Barbera uh, mushroom cap um, with the dots. And but if you just eat it alone, you'll just get a buzz and nothing else. But if you process it through the re native reindeer that they domesticated, then you drink their urine if you feed them a bunch of it over uh. a period of time. You drink the reindeer urine, and it's one of the most powerful um, entheogen psychedelics there is. Uh, that is right, a, I would that try come, that. Yeah, that is not like native to the Amazon basin. It's like one of the very few ones. So that's so second. So um, Terrence McKenna said that potentially the Santi, the Sinker Klaus myth probably came from a drug trip in Santa Claus and his elves. They're all machine elves. So that's his. That was his. Belief oh, uh, uh, well, man, well, I, mean, I I love Terrence McKenna, but. That, Some of the things that he, said he just was made that shit up. Like but, that is just made up. But, but, he, just, yeah. he just made that up. But, but the second, like the second half of that statement. Listen, the second half of that of what Gio had said is basically like, okay, and this segues into the the basketball jeweled elves that are bouncing in the astral plane, which is like, <laughs> we're gonna take you to the other machine elves for just a moment. Like, like yeah. some of his stuff is spot on, especially like you know. He had this one quote about, like, you know, go and make your own road show. And, uh, you know, don't watch NPR. Don't listen to uh, Oprah. Uh, um, just because don't consume the culture manufactured from the bones of a dying world. And, like, I'm on board with some of the things he said. And then other things are like, oh, yes, dude. He like, a lot of, like, crazy, yeah. I mean, if no, crazy no one... No one who hasn't said a bunch of batshit things ever says anything worthwhile. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> I do want to take a look at this. I wanted to quickly show you guys here are some of the holiday cards that I did oh. way back in the day. Speaking of reindeer, see, this is my holiday <laughs> card over here. And you have the... Uh, see, it supports my thesis. That's a machine elf. The, yeah, the snowman holding up the reindeer puppets. And see, the child elf here, he knows that this is bad. He wants the uh, elder elf to get away, but the elder elf is just stunned looking at this. And here's another card that I did, the Thanksgiving one. Here, let me bring it up here so you can see. So it's just like this monstrosity here of a turkey man and uh, with his tail. And see the Thanksgiving? It's like made out of people over here. You know, the Thanksgiving thing. So, oh, anyway, God. I just wanted to share Dark. this over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been yes. going for quite a while. I, can't, I know. Every time well, we okay, said, we're like, going to end it. We're going to end it like five yeah. times. It's dream time. Well, so, it's dream Lev, time. Lev, I yes. owe you another one of these for showing up late. So, hit me up when you want another. Absolutely. Maybe we'll need a have BTR you panel if we yeah. have Yeah. Right. Hell yeah. Um, Absolutely. We got to get I mean, you on the McLaughlin group. If there are, well, if there are certain things that you would be interested in arguing for the opposite of that you believe, let me know because mm. that would be for, we need more of the reverse uh, debate streams. Uh, yeah, you know, I weeks. 
I could probably I could probably devil's advocate some uh, socially liberal positions for you so that you can have somebody to like push back on the trad larpers. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I would, yeah. I would actually, love that. you know, what would be fucking funny would be me, a married woman, uh, arguing for social liberalism against some like eighteen-year-old dude, which is uh, <laughs> yeah, well, kind yeah, of we have a number of the default. Dudes that we can. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do. I think it's funny, like being. Uh, I'm not. I'm not even like anti. I wouldn't say that I'm anti-feminist. Like it depends on the facet of feminism, like the the particular issue. Um, But it's funny that uh, being in, like, anti-woke spaces has really made me a lot more feminist. (laughs) So I'm so so fed up with men now. But actually, I still still think men vastly outperform women on nearly every metric that I care about. But um, I... uh, Being around men so much has made me appreciate women more, for sure. (laughs) Why, are they giving you grief? I know I've, I've seen you get griefed sometimes. I mean, uh, it's, it's like, it's just, okay. So, you know, the like man quote unquote mansplaining thing, which mm-hmm. is not, I mean, that's just something men do in general, you know, men do it to each we other to way each more other, than they yeah. do it to women. Yeah. yeah. Men just love splaining, you know, it's, it's a mm-hmm. real thing. Um, and mm. it really is extremely fucking annoying. Um, it's just not sexist, you know, it's just like, uh, it's just a tendency of men that gets on my nerves when I'm exposed to it constantly you know yeah. so that's <laughs> yeah. like yeah. Uh, what, what would be kind of like the uh, million dollar extreme skit advice man do you remember that one with the male prostitutes oh i never actually watched mde so i wouldn't oh, be familiar man. i know i know it's a classic but i don't know i'm not see it's the, like mde is something that's very clearly made for men and like, like, there's a lot you. of stuff there's a lot of <laughs> stuff that's made for men that i do really like obviously but um there's also stuff made for men where I, I experience the media and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is as you said, yeah. this is not for me. <laughs> like, uh, would, you prefer, would you prefer them strong enough for a man but made for a woman? <laughs> you know where that's what? from. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that commercial from, love? It's a reference. I don't know. I don't, was I, it a, wait, was it a shaving commercial? Stay oh, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah, I, shit, I, shit, I, yeah. I think it was a, a, a razor blade uh, that was unisex. <laughs> shit, yeah, yeah, chic for women or whatever. <laughs> oh, that's so. God. Afri- By the way, I never, understood, <laughs> I never understood the pink tax thing. Can't women just buy the men's razor blades? I I, I don't know. No, yes. it doesn't. Yes, have- oh. that's that's oh. why. It's no, no, so- no, no, no. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, according to Google, what's strong enough for a man but made for a woman? In 1965, Secret launched in Canada, and in 1969, Secret antiperspirant spray was added ah. to the already growing product oh, line. Oh, that's in great. 1972. The now famous tagline strong enough for a man but made for a woman was introduced the tagline still remains one of the most famous advertising lines of all time evidently true thank you Lev Poliakro. i just feel like with the whole razor argument it's just i feel like men like men and women so it's like both wouldn't want to be seen buying the other one's razor so i definitely do think it definitely impacts like the pricing of it and like if no, but who cares? Like, why wouldn't women? Why wouldn't women buy yeah, but we're like not a talking gray like us here. We're razor? Talking the average person. Like, it's not like they're walking around with the with with the razor like no, some fashion accessory. Literally, it's just about having it in your shopping I mean, yeah, so I imagine that's where a lot of the anxiety. Just the answer to the question is like they do care because they're fucking cowards. Like that. That's all there is to it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I mean, who is going to be judging them? The dog? Well, it's like, themselves. The, 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 themselves. No, but it's like if you have a yes, wife or themselves. girlfriend and you, and you have to, like, buy your wife or girlfriend no, no, okay. I mean, maxi like, pads like, or I mean, whatever. Listen, it's like that listen, same... listen, listen. For, for what it's worth, there is a certain amount of, like, shame or grief because some people, I mean, like, like, if you had... Okay, let's say you take 10 dudes... And you send them to like a pharmacy and you're like, all right, like you're 60 bucks. 10 mad dudes. Okay. 10 <laughs> mad dudes. 10 mad dudes. All right. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Are you a bad enough dude to take these $60 and get plan B and not crack your voice and maintain eye contact with the oh, pharmacist the whole time? <laughs> like, oh, oh, like, like, and then like and, because some men would be willing to do that easy peasy and some men would get terrified. Even like a super huge tough lord that could like squat a house. He would probably be like, um, can I, can I, do you have, do you, do, you have, do you have plan B? Do you have, do you have plan B? Do you have, uh, do you have, yeah. thank you. Like, it, yeah, it's, it's just, 
So, so I mean, I, I think some women, I think women might be more prone to like social pressure of like, you know, hi, can I get that man's razor? And then like, you know, I mean, does that Apple social pro- orange, does that but... social pressure exist for women if they buy men's products? I don't know. No, I mean, look, like, Plan B, Plan B implies you fucked up. That's what Plan B implies. But if we're talking about the razors, what does that imply? That like I'm just gonna choose a razor. All right. well, first of all, like, I would right. never buy Plan B for any reason because I'm a trad cat. So it's, <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, well, like, listen, I think <laughs> every sperm is sacred. I think. Every I think. Sperm no, I think. Great. You know, Mommy Milkers had a great oh. tweet the other day. She's like, I've never used protection because every guy I've ever had sex with. I uh wouldn't I would be cool with having children with them. I think that should probably be the attitude. Like I don't know. That's just me though. I oh. no, but it, it really crazy. depends on the time though. I mean, you know, uh, there are I don't know. not everybody. Hey, you don't I, even I have love, kids at a certain time. I, that's I actually know. incredible though. I love that there's this account named Mommy Milkers because of course that is so slutty that it circles back around to being trad. That's impressive. No, don't say that about her. Background. She's a good friend of mine. No, I don't know, but that doesn't oh. circle background to being not slutty. It just, it's just slutty. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not not slutty. It's still slutty. It's just trad slutty. Oh, wow. <laughs> is that kind of like... Is that kind of I mean, like uh, how so, JoJo... So we know trad so... slutty is prostitution, so... But oh, I see because fuck. all trans are actually secretly just slutty. I get you know, oh, that. Profesh- well, no, tr- I mean, that's always the debate whether it means like just existed for a long time as opposed to. I'm not going to get into this. You know what I mean. But it's <laughs> yes. Fun. All right, guys, we are, we are ending this soon. Okay, dream time, and then we're then we're done. Yeah, please. So, recent dream. In my apartment, I was playing a virtual reality device, and I saw a game which was kind of like Kirby's Dreamland, where <laughs> I had to go through mul- I had to go through multiple stomachs inside of a creature with my oh, fairy man. guide and not collide into obstacles. And uh, I wanted to go out for some food. See, there's the restaurants again. Especially desserts like in Cha An Tea House. Oh my god, with the salmon bread stuff. Holy shit, what a coincidence. Like, I, this is the dream that I, I was yes, talking about. Yes, what the a coincidence. Something today. that Lev definitely didn't engineer bringing up. <laughs> now, <laughs> and uh, there it's was. It's funny because this... last week on the art stream, Lev got totally called up by Meta Nomad. It was hilarious. So <laughs> I feel like we ruined. Like, <laughs> I love when Lev gets mogged. He's just like. No, I think. It's his job. No, no, I think. I think Meta Nomad's. I think Meta Nomad's, Nomads just jealous because he does all these. Uh, elaborate magic rituals and he probably never even saw the third eye but anyway i'm no, not gonna get no, into that no, because, no! because because he, he, because he is lev the unmoggable all right be careful exactly all right so next, you next went dream. to your tea house you had a vor dream and then right after you got <laughs> bored you you said okay. to yourself i have to i have to go eat something after i got bored and then myself. and then afterwards i had a dream of these two girls who are uh, who are related uh, but in the dream, they kind of didn't like each other. But then the uh, older girl, or was it the young girl? I remember. But one started to mock the other girl by kissing her on the top of the head. So oh, I don't kind know. of like the kiss <laughs> of death. Can I ask you a question? Does Vore yeah. come up a lot in your dreams? Because I imagine you think no. about that a lot in the no, day. No, no, I, I, I don't think it comes up. No, it doesn't dream. work like that myself. I mean, what do you mean? That's how dreams work, though. It's about, like, All right, here, here's another day, dream. Here's another dream. No, Vore dreams are actually they're indicative of, um, if I recall, um, being consumed by the un- by a lot of unconscious energy, if I recall. There's like a lot of either those ones you're drowning in an ocean it's sort of like the well, same I mean literally bored but i mean that kind of like imagery that like lev finds interesting well, well going through that stomachs sort of that come up. that's sort of yeah. like a, another thing in the ancient world for instance like uh what was the one torture method where they put you in a bronze bowl and they'd like in the stomach the brazen bowl yeah it's like there's a lot of metaphors like even in the bible right who was the one that got eaten by the whale uh, Jonah. No. Jonah. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. bad. Well, your uh, <laughs> no. Ezekiel. Your emotions are in your stomach, so yeah, that makes the sense. Humos. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, by the way, I really like this comment from Mr. Fibble. I like Sonia. She's smart. There we go. How about that? Wonderful. And okay. I <laughs> Thank had you, sir. Dream. I had another dream. You know what's recently. crazy is that yeah. one person. We're we're in a. I was in a group chat, and one person. 
I'm like, I'm going to have Sony on the, we're going to have Sony on the live stream. And, uh, one person's like, what are you fucking kidding me? I go, what do you mean? Sonia? Like the groomer, you mean the Indian? I go, no, not the Polyak <laughs> Sonia. Oh my the God. I knew Sony you were going to, I was just, I was just about <laughs> to talk about the other Sonia. My got mixed up with the Polyak The groomer? Sonia. You don't know about the deep lore of Sonia? Oh wait, that no. other account? The account that was like the, the like obscure racism account yeah <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes i remember that, was that. Groomer, okay yeah, yeah that people was... asked wait so was this person was like dming teenagers or something the, yeah d basically dming a pro anna anorexic teenagers grooming them uh Probably. yeah it's shocking shit um it just I, dude this happens like every two years or something like yeah. do you guys remember lucas yes oh yeah! my god yes I mean, I have Lucas. The, Lucas the ninth room. circle of the internet. The room. I have Lucas's room as one of uh, Do my you Zoom background. Oh, I still see fucking random memes that will just have his room as the background. <laughs> yeah. just... you and Margo God, the Radic? nipple shot. There was that like a knows. one week period where I saw that awful photo so many times. Every time, yeah. Do you remember Margo and Radic? That was another deep lore. I don't uh, think I must have missed that one. That was okay. Radic was um. He had this account, Right Wing Takes, um, and he, like, hooked up with this... I think she was 16 or something at the time. And there was, like, these messages that they released back and forth. Um, I actually read quite a bit of the Lucas messages where he had this, like, weird, like, impregnation fetish that I think is, like, kind of what's going on in Wait, a lot himself of Wait, these... getting impregnated? No, 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 no. Because he... he already looks like he's he impregnated. Had, like, ah, he had these, like, with the nipples, nipples. Oh, like, the oh, brown nipples getting oh, all swollen oh, ready. Oh, love, love. He had I, these profound, I like... he has his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he had these, like, vivid, like, descriptions of, like, impregnating this underage girl and, like, quote-unquote taking her innocence. And he's like, uh, oh, it was so disgusting. Like, like literal, oh, God. Okay, that's that. That's like the laziest fetish where it's like, all right, all right. And then I had sex and then I busted in them. That's like but the laziest fetish ever. Dude, it's incredibly common, though. Buff Road, <laughs> Buff Road uh, 14. Yeah. Buff I actually 14. wanted to write something on this for either American Center or somewhere else, like, about, like, why... Um, like why the mommy GF? Why the impregnation fetish? Why the the fucking like all of this like porn por um the pornification of like these these um familial relationships? Why that's becoming like so common? But I I oh, decided that it would be so controversial. But then uh, my one editor is like, you should just do it for the hell of it because other people have talked about this. Like meme analysis has had videos on the mommy GF thing. But I, I really don't think it's like my my hot my quick take would be that I don't think it's like a truly Oedipal thing of like, you know, the Sigmund Freud, like you have a relationship to your mother. It's not a lust Yeah, after nobody it. wants to fuck their actual mom. No, no. It's it's more of like in, in an age where um finding yourself as a man is becoming more difficult there's almost like this weird regression going on of like, now that the woman is in the lead, um, you want this sort of care and nurturing. It's like this weird infantilization going on. Even like the language of like the mommy GF is like, I don't know. It's really weird. And and the fact that no it's keys, so tied tendies. to fertility as well. No, but yeah, but the fact that it's so tied to fertility as well is another sort of aspect that I wanted to explore in terms of like, okay, now that fertility has sort of dropped in general, and, and a lot of men have a very like stultified relationship towards women, of course, like that's a natural impulse that has to be like, um, what did Freud use the term? It had to be like sublimated, sublimated. maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah, like sublimated. And it's really weird how, um, you notice like a lot of these, um, you know, like these e girls, they'll like LARP this role of like, uh, you know, the e girl. Uh, like the, the mommy GF type of stuff. I don't know. It's really either really either crazy. it's mommy GF or it's like baby girl. You know the kind yeah. of sexy baby yeah, that's, thing. Uh, but that's the other side of the coin. That, mm -hmm. That's what Lucas was like fetishizing as oh, well. By the way, speaking of fertility, very and weird. Speaking Sorry, of fertility, Stain, Hansley, cut you off. Um, you see uh, over here, Fer fertility, fertility. Don't. Oh no. What's happening? So, um, are you seeing no. this? What am oh, I supposed to be again. seeing? It's a fertile. 
Fur tiles. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's messy tail. It Lev made this. It's messy oh. tails. You know, it's a surprisingly just, clean room for a just like, a surprisingly messy clean tiles. room for just, messy tails. Just, just, just real quickly, Gio, before I forget, one underlying variable in this thing. I've always wondered, like, if this played a role or not, is consider the number of men who have been raised by, like, single parents, yeah. usually single mothers. Yeah, that's true. And, like, I'm sure that has an effect on them that, like, like, okay, uh, so, like, uh, in the 70s, uh, people were like, oh, this television is going to be good for the brain. And then 30 years later, they're like, according to these studies, yes. So, like, 30 years from <laughs> yeah. now... 30 years from now, they're going to be like, oh, wow, then according to these studies, a single parent household is mm. good. Like, like, well, what about what about also shit like uh, estrogen in the water supply? Oh, that and, could uh, probably be, yeah. I mean, oh, oh and like xenoestrogens and uh, uh, hormones in plastic. Atrazine. And, uh, yeah, well, why yeah. not? Why not? Why not? You know what? I am I am anti xenoestrogens and pro xeno gears. <laughs> For anybody who has not played Zeno Gears, Geo, uh, this is your next uh, job after you after you after I finish Berserk, Berserk. Yeah, yeah, play yeah. Zeno Gears. I'm getting to the part where he's uh, wh what's his love interest name? Uh, Kaska. Siska? Kaska, Kaska. Yeah. And by the way, Kaska... the part where you could see like you know when like I know it's a fucking cliche stuff, especially in anime, where like they hate each other at first, but then if it's not a cliche, it's not good. Yeah, exactly. You, but you know this one where they like hate each other first, and then they like they have like the one moment where they realize they actually love each other because opposites attract. I know it's like a cliche, but um. Well, look at MC this is Scat why Cat I th and uh. See, this is why I think it's not a bad and idea. Paula Abdul. Paula Abdul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody made any Rule Thirty Four out of those two? I, by the I, way, I, maybe. I, I, I bet you. I bet you it, it links to it existed Probably. on Usenet. Early nineties, I bet. <laughs> I bet you. No, but see, this it is was like I... ASCII art. <laughs> <laughs> it was on Geo City's back. Uh, in the uh. day. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, this is why I'm not opposed to having the rad femmes enter these uh, online reactionary spaces. Because one day I will truly, I will meme my uh, la based uh, rad femme GF into existence. So uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hang out, right, uh, hang out on locale.farm. It's full of rad things. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we almost we are almost done. One I should final reply three. being like I'm the guy who did the fucking wind Wonder Woman. Oh no, don't, don't. <laughs> no, no. no, that's just inviting it's, trouble. It's not a good idea to actually no, interact no, no, there. No, 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 I'm no. kidding. <laughs> so, I, uh, I know, man. All right, one, one last dream. This one is from April 17th. Oh. I'm not sure April 17th of what I think this year. So I was prepping new streams and got word that Metaphor Man and... Uh, I love uh, how, like, you have dreams about <laughs> I do. I, I have dreams about internet personalities that I don't even know yeah. the real face. Well, this one... I, it, yeah. it's it's what dreams are, they're just, like, abstractions of what you have, like... What you have in real life, and then you kind of like process well, uh, it in yeah. a really yeah, almost, weird way. Almost that. There's some new stuff in there as well. But anyway, I well, was prepping new streams and got word that Metaphor Man and uh, uh, Apple Dog Lives have been reinstated on Twitter. Oh man, that's so sad. Now that I'm reading <laughs> so this back. <laughs> okay, Jeez. there was a strip. There a was dream. a strip. I need yes, to there was a straight a road. Dream the, oh, like, no, the dream's not over yet. The, the dream's not over yet. There okay. was a straight road in Northern Ireland, which I then got on after looking at a map of it as a place England wants to conquer because of its oil fields, though the <laughs> Ireland is my dr in my dream was much bigger. There was a black stocky bell-like device, like a cylindrical bell in the area, which separated the two Irelands. Uh, and there was a straight road starting from there. I was riding in the back of an Uber with my underwear off and saw pretty <laughs> girls <laughs> and saw pretty oh. girls in the street. Uh, let's see. I dreamt of a class oh I took at SVA and was selling my apartment and clearing it out. The apartment was in the East Village or Gramercy and was very big for a New York City apartment as it had two bedrooms. <laughs> were, you just, sorry, were you just fully nude in the back of an Uber going down Ireland? <laughs> no, in my underwear. So I had an SVA. No, you said your underwear, underwear was off. Yeah. Oh, it was? Okay, I guess it was. I, ha I, w I had oh an SVA reunion party 
and one of the people in the reunion party was this uh, female artist of some renown that I associated with light blue squares with dots inside of them. Was it arranged Rebecca in Sugar Flash. Love? No, it wasn't Rebecca Sugar. She doesn't do that abstract stuff. For some reason, the default animation was them going in, in the spiral. The clerk confirmed I was not a danger as a loitering youth. I had ordered coffee. I was prepared to go to another meetup or reunion event. There was a tan bag I brought with me that I lost sight of and thought somebody stole it, but thankfully they had cameras, and it turns out, oh, someone working in the store put it in the bag. I had a box of old candy, which I accidentally caused to fall and scatter some of it to the ground. Luckily, some of the candy was inside other uh, plastic containers. One candy was like a big orange ball. So, okay, one more, and then I'm done. Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. I want to find the one with the pig. Hold on, I want to find one oh, pig, God. and then we're going to be done. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. A pig was by my front door, and this led to a ride in the car with two police who were searching for someone who was the owner of the pig. We were going through an escape from New York crowd and eventually went out of our cars. Now, keep in mind, this is October 5th, 2020. This is when I had this dream. So, which makes sense, because that was, like, right after the riots and everything was happening. So, anyway, uh, we were going through an escape from New York-style crowd and eventually went out of our cars. There was disorder and young people with trash everywhere. I expressed my desire for law and order to be restored to one of the officers who seemed to agree with me. The only way I said was to make an example of some of the troublemakers. There was a teenage girl who was with us who appeared to be a Muslim, but with more of a broader interpretation like in the Kabbalah, and was making secret codes with her fingers to the group of teens outside, and they communicated was back to her Sufi this way. Love? Uh, I don't know, maybe. She wouldn't reveal what her codes were when I asked her. There was an older woman who I think abandoned the pig. I was going to the top of uh, uh, this house, and there was like some weird piano contraption there, yada, yada, yada. Uh, there was an older man who was going into this rich house and eating the plants outside and got into a Frank Hassel-style conversation with the owner of the house. Oh, there were God. There were... There were secret nights in the Dreams games where this game is revealed to be the opening of initiation and had a portal-like icon or icons of a 3D object that was a square with a transparent purple flower donut blob attached to it through which you could pass. The main character was named Kenji, and he was being picked on. There was a view of Stick Canyon. For those who don't know, Stick Canyon is one of the levels from Nights in the Dreams, the video game for Sega Saturn. It's like a canyon level. Anyway, there was a view of Stick Canyon where there were trains on rail like in Frozen Bell, which is another level uh, which actually had trains in it in real life. But anyway, like in Frozen Bell, and they were big trains that felt like animals, and each train had its own dragon spirit, which was flying ahead of it, though the designs of the dra trains were very dragon-like. Some of the dragons looked like Daijinryu, that's like from Power Rangers, while others were a bit smaller and lankier. I got a call from a martial arts instructor named Ryu, who may have been recommended to me by the aforementioned family uh, 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 blah 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 while speaking to him I was flying above the crowd on the street and I told him I have the ability to fly he told me this was anti-enlightenment so very interesting by the way is that I constantly one other thing that I constantly dream about is flying and being weirded out that like oh my god I'm flying and like how come like nobody's aware of this and this is like you know what I mean but I am aware that I'm flying in the dream or like floating around. Anyway, guys, this is the end of the show. I am hungry as heaven. I gotta get something to eat. I really appreciate everybody being this. Let's do the final plugs before we go away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sonia, supposedly, this is the first time yeah. we've had you here. I would love to have you back on uh, It was BTR. a pleasure, gentlemen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That Thanks was a weird coming dream, on too. This was awesome. And I love your, I love your avatar, and I also love the oh, two thanks. bunnies. I love the two bunnies in uh Oh, in your, my uh, header, background. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah really, shout really out to, to bunnies, you know? Rabbits, they are really doing a great job. Shout out to bunny, shout out to cows, right? Yeah, cows also bookmarks. doing a great job. Shout yeah, out to bookmarks. 
Great job, Cal. Yeah, bookmarks. Seven yeah. Lane TV. Guys, subscribe to Sony supposedly. Subscribe to Seven... Not subscribe. Follow. <laughs> follow Seven Lane <laughs> well, TV. Subscribe to her uh, mail service. Yes, oh, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I mean, mail. absolutely. Like, uh, uh, subscribe to... Subscribe to 718 TV. Go on YouTube. It's the best public access television you're not watching in the 21st century. And don't forget twitch.tv slash, slash Monoxus. That, that's, that's right. Thank you, Lev. And you're welcome. And speaking of Twitch, this is also simultaneously playing on Twitch and DLive. I did not, uh, I did not uh, put the links in for those. So here they are. Twitch and DLive, everybody subscribe. I only have seven followers on DLive. What the fuck? Guys, subscribe to my DLive what, right what now. What is DLive? I've never even heard of that. that. It's, it's the racist not... Twitch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yes, it's the racist Twitch. DLive gained prominence because after being uh, deplatformed from YouTube, that's where uh, Nick Fuentes does his And Ethan Ralph from. went. Yeah. And well, Ethan no, Ralph. before that, it was oh, okay. PewDiePie. PewDiePie gave, oh, yeah, it some, he wanted uh, yeah. gave it some life. Oh, and by the way, Super Chats, I forgot to uh, talk about the Super Chats that I got today. So the Prudentialist donated $5, says, be sure to give Lev some love. He's a trooper for doing two streams back to back. And so is Gio. Aww. And you guys are just wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prudentialist. And Cat Girl Milk five dollars says, "Don't sleep on love, death, and robots." I'm not oh, sure that's a that Netflix is. show. That's not that good. Oh wow. Uh, no. Um, oh. No. No. I, I don't really get that much out of it. Love. Oh, being oh, oh, all right, then, then, then you and Cat Girl's Milk better hash it out on one of these. Yeah, where's your yeah. fucking five dollars? Come on. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't need to get five dollars to get my opinion. I'm here, man. Yeah, she, she has to get five dollars. <laughs> All right, so. Cat Girl's Milk, get on the damn stream and argue with this gentleman. Argue your yeah. position for the death. Oh, well, I don't want to argue, argue, but sure. Who wants to bet Cat sure. Girl Milk is either a dude or a woman? I don't I want <laughs> well, Watch Cat Girl Milk be this, like, 6'4", 260 pound, like, fucking, like, mammoth. Like, who fucking said Sugar Chad, yeah. Threatening me over yeah. the internet. That's like oh, by the way, one, one final thing before we go. We have on Break the Rules, and guys, subscribe to this stream as well, but we have on Break the Rules 3,994 subscribers. Almost a 4K. Guys, Ooh, we have six almost. left. What are you doing? We have six left. I'm going to post the link. Just send it to your friends. Okay, just do something to get us to 4,000 today. We are. What are you going to do? Number. How are you going to celebrate when you hit 4,000? Well, we're gonna have Brittany Venti on. I think that's uh, gonna get us a celebration. Is any, I, I don't know. That's definitely gonna be chaos. No, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I can sense it'll be chaos. Brittany, that's on a person. Wait, what'd you say myself? You could sense it's gonna be hell? What? Chaos, not chaos. Hell, chaos. Oh, yeah, it'll be total chaos. I don't think it'll be hell. I think, like, Brit I don't think Brittany's a horrible person. She's just a no, chaos Brittany's person. Nice. She attracts hor Well, she has a lot I of people that go after her who are horrible people. But well, she's also a chaos merchant as well. Like, I'm yeah. a bad person with chaos merchant. Right? And so, okay, and final things here. YouTube, okay, Patreon. Patreon.com slash Break the Rules Geo. You remember the stream that we did uh, on Friday? That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. We mm. got you to uh, finally read Berserk out loud, and I'm going to post some clips of you reacting to that, uh, the fairy boy. I think oh, that was good. Be... Yeah, Puck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Funatari, as he called him. Or... <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, Yes. I so. Udanari? <laughs> oh my is god. That... Well, that, that was Cause Geo's... Cause, uh... Well, because Puck is like kind of like gendered ambiguous. I don't know. Like the way that the way that it's like Puck is drawn is like, I don't know. I guess it's the Paglia like beautiful boy ideal. I don't know. It's got some weird connotation to it. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Oh, it's anime. Right. I guess you can That's anime that. for you. Yeah. What are you going to do? And by the way, guys, I don't know if you guys buy NFTs or not, but hashtag invest in love. Invest, invest in, in love. love. Go invest to my NFT pages right now. Superair.com, Peer Reminder, uh, Known Origin. I have these sites over here. Just go to these sites. Uh, I don't know, favorite them, bookmark them, and whatever you want. And tomorrow on my YouTube channel, I drop Style Talk number five Woo! on on Sanford Biggers and Ooh, the new well, Idea well, statue. And while we're shilling, while we're doing that, while we're spreading ourselves thin, giving everyone loads of options, I might as well. I need to catch up because Les been doing all the great comment, subscribe, all this stuff. I've like not even shared my shit belly at all. So I've got the sub stack. Fucking read it. It's 
the intro to all my bullshit that I'm doing in the future. It's very self indulgent, but that's kind of my shtick. So I Here, think it's very, can I, can, read it's it. really can sick read that it. you got myself dot substack. That's a very, that's a very, <laughs> fresh, uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, can, can I read yeah. the beginning of it? I just love this. Yeah, sure. I'm, okay. <laughs> no, this is I'm, like the most embarrassing thing. Go ahead. Nah, okay, I'm constipated. Large stools leave my bowels, and I'm still constipated. I would say I have been like this ever since I released an ebook to a small series of friends, and then again to literally strangers on the corner of the internet. My blockage is creative, but it is not in the infamous writer's block. It's not the infamous writer's block. I'm pushing as hard as I can to get a piece of paper, as I've tried many times with no luck, and it's still stuck all the way up there. Guys, you got to read the Substack. Subscribe oh, to myself, the wonderful, great myself. Listen, guys, this has been a great pleasure, as always. Myself? Wh where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, let me just post <laughs> It's myself at some... Uh, some no, I did it. I did it. I, I posted oh, so you it. Did it. it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Wait, wait. Why is it not visible, though? Is it because I... You did on. it in Zoom. I did it in... Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I got to scroll down. Wait. Oh, here. Yeah. Here we well, go. we gotta go because I'm getting kind of yeah, yeah, no worries. It's kind of like going after hours upon hours of streaming. Yeah, <laughs> so like, like I am tired of you guys. <laughs> I don't know how Twitch streamers do it, man. God, no, I could go on, but it's just and I've been and I've been yeah. standing up this whole time, by the way. Standing oh desk, God. standing desk, standing desk. Okay, guys, we are ending the stream <laughs> right now. Oh, by the way, hold on. No, this is not the end. Listen. One last thing. Sorry to keep you folks. One last thing. Here are the links to what's crack a uh this week on BTR, okay? Make sure you set a reminder. I cannot I cannot stress this enough. All the people who are watching, set a reminder right now. We are having defend defining progress. What uh what are we progressing? Are we progressing and towards what ends? as well as defining it, and we have Ham and Cheese. That is a great Twitter name, by the way, Ham and Cheese, who was the D Samuel Hammond Director of Poverty and Welfare Policy at the Nixon and Center. At the oh, Nixon and Center. Oh, smart. Yeah, there we go. So we I really like have... Sam. Oh, Good wow. Wait, you, you know him? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm, do you want Do you want to come? Do you want to be there as well? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm busy next week. I would In the future, I would like to come again. This is fun. Excellent. Excellent. So that is so that is happening. We on got a Tuesday. different reaction from when we floated the idea to the Prudentialist, but that's uh, wow. Well, <laughs> no, this is this is what we do. This is what we do at BTR. We bring different people together and we see what happens. And by the way, Sonia, I would love for mm -hmm. you to check out the uh, program that we did with Mark Terrell. Uh, you haven't had a chance to watch uh, that one, right? Uh, no. Also, Mark Terrell. I don't think I know him. Name's not ringing a bell. So Mark Terrell, he was uh, he was on that show along with Garrett Jones, who wrote Ten Percent Less Democracy. Oh, okay. Yes, and Mark Terrell, he's the founder of Vundevos, author of Scaling, Educator, and Strategist, IPO 2006. He is a World Economic Forum tech pioneer in uh, 2008, and now a World Economic Forum YGL alumni. So we had a very, as you know, Geo, as we talked about before in the beginning of this stream and the last one, a very interesting conversation with Mark. And I would be very interested in getting Sonia's views on the whole thing and uh, uh, <laughs> what, what you think of it. So here's the well, link. I'm I'll have to uh, keep an eye out for all these future conversations. You've got a lot on deck, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. oh, we got a lot on deck. We got a lot on Francis E. Deck. That's how much we got on deck. <laughs> and one last thing we have coming what? up here. Oh, and by the way, the progress stream, we're also going to have Hotep Sophia, and we're going to have Conscious Karakal joining us for that one. So he's from South Africa, and he's going to give us some, uh, uh, he was he's going to give us the skinny on what's going on there in relation to progress. Because that was supposed to be like the Rainbow Nation, right? Wasn't that one of the, uh, so anyway, we are also going to have Brittany Venti, Brittany Venti, Brittany Venti. We are going to have Brittany coming on Thursday, this Thursday. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. I'm going to be posting the link to that as well. My father drew the logo for this, the thumbnail. See, she's got moths around her because she is the moth queen. And it turns out that she also really likes moths. And I appreciate the fact that she likes moths. It all ends up working out. And here's the... Um, Here's the uh, bigger picture for you guys to uh, take a gander at. See, this is uh, this is the logo here with Brittany Venti, and here nice. are the moths. 
See, she's got the moss everywhere. Anyway, guys, this is the end of the stream. Be sure to set a reminder for all of those and watch the one we did on governance. That one's real spicy. Oh, one last thing. Be sure to, and I'm sorry I'm keeping everybody here, but this is important because I got to give my mad props to the Prudentialists for having us on Oof. today. So here is the link to that Sunday stream with the Prudentialists that was going on. Here is how you can see it. It's right in the chat. Here we go. Anyway, guys, this is really it for real. I'm telling you, no more shilling. This is the end.